again. I, I find this kind of funny. We finished the first game literally yesterday and I'm here like, yes, the start of the second one. Let's fucking go. <laughs> I have no chill. I have no self-control. That's what it is. I have no self-control. So yeah, I'm wearing a hat today, hoping that anything can literally just like relieve like the stress from like my scalp and from my ears because for some reason i don't know why but like this just hurts i mean my scalp probably hurts because i bleach my hair so often and so there probably is some damage there <laughs> for my ears it's literally just that I, the fact that i can't hear myself if i have like both of the earmuffs or whatever like over my ears so i have to like have one like kind of like off so i can actually like hear myself directly i mean i can hear myself with them on it's just kind of muffled and it just it, it feels weird you know especially when i have to do like um uh, what is it called i have to voice act and stuff it's just better to hear myself, you know. I tried getting this like software, like mixer, so that I could actually hear myself, but I couldn't get it to work. And it was just like way too much of a hassle, and uh, I don't always. Oh, no worry, Bengi. What was I talking about? Yeah, I don't always use these headphones. Because I also sometimes use these when I play with my sister because these have like the, uh, this kind of plug. But these don't, so I can't use them for that. I mean, I guess I can get like an thing that like, what's it called? My brain just does not work, I'm sorry. But like, when does it ever, you know? They are both very pretty. They're pretty cute. Also, I'm, I'm still really impressed with the quality of those purple ones, despite the, them being pretty, pretty cheap. They're like cheaper than like some actual like brand name ones I have, and they're like pretty like decent quality. I mean, the base is kind of like it's there, but if you like turn it all the way up, it's just really like it's it's just noise, really. And it's like not that much base. These have base though. Anyways, I'm waiting for Fleur. I'm not starting this until Fleur is here. I have some. Where is it? No, they're Sony, I believe. I was about to have the Bose. No, they're not Bose. They're they're Sony. So anyways, how was your day? <laughs> Hi, you're here. And that means that we can literally just get right into it. Where the hell is it? Here it is. You can see the scan lines a bit better. I noticed it was like they were kind of gone and I wanted the scan lines to be there. I hope they're not like too annoying or anything. Because if they are, I can totally turn them off. I'm, I just like, I don't know. I, I feel like that would like make it like go together a bit better. I don't know. I'm kind of rambling already. We're not even, we're not even six minutes in. <laughs> Anyways, let's just uh, start a new game. <laughs> oh, that means I can actually skip through dialogue now. Hmm. That's not what I want to do, though. Sure, whatever. Turn about target. <laughs> Sorry, the picture. <laughs> though he looked extra thick on my screen. Wait, I gotta fucking show you. Angie, what happened to you, Elizabeth? I can see what it looks like on my screen. <laughs> he looks like so thick. <laughs> Anyways, let's just 
get into it, I guess. Turnabout target. Let's go. There it is! We can see it! It's the emissary of peace from the east! The president's private plane is arriving at Gord Lake. Oh no. Why Gord Lake, of all places? Can you hear it? The cheer of the crowd. Welcome, Zhengfa Republic. Welcome, Mr. President. Mr. President, this way, please. Your audience awaits. My dear friends, there is a reason. I can't, I can't fucking read this smuggling ring lung play by nation. This was possible thanks to your country's prosecutor's office. From the bottom of my heart, I convey unto them my utmost gratitude. However, the battle is still not over. I declare here and now, the hammer of justice shall be brought down upon all evil. We're just getting right into it, really. No, it's not Will Powers. Hurry! Contact the prosecutor's office. We need that man. Miles Edgeworth. If there's anyone who can solve this case, it's him. Eeyore! Fuck it up! Fuck it up! <laughs> Anyways, um... This literally takes place 10 days after the last game. So we're literally just picking up where we left off. Literally. Jacket throw. Hell yeah. More of this must have reached every corner of the world by now. An assassination attempt on the president of the Republic of Zhengfa. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I am a prosecutor. I was asked to investigate this grave incident, but upon my arrival... Mr. Edgeworth! We've been waiting for you, sir. This man is Dick Gumshoe. He's a detective with a local precinct who assists, assists me on all cases under my jurisdiction. What is the president's current condition? I'm still not sure, sir. The paramedics just entered this plane a few moments ago. I see. I hope it's nothing too serious. Very well. <laughs> well, to be fair, it's a new game, so it's like, if you haven't played the other game, then of course you won't know who these characters are. Very well, detective. Please show me around the crime scene. Roger that, sir. Hey, mister! Just a minute, I'm begging ya! Hmm? Huh? What's this? Mister! You're the prosecutor in charge around these parts, right? Can I ask you a little something real quick? I'm afraid I must refrain from commenting, from commenting for now. Let's go, detective. What do we have in this organizer? It's the prosecutor's badge, as usual, and gumshoe. Cool, that's it. Hey, wait! Mr. Prosecutor! Hold on, Mr. Edgeworth. Wait for me, sir. Now then, detective. Care to fill me in on the details? Basically, the whole thing happened here in Gord Lake Park. It was a big welping, welcoming event for the President of the Republic of Zhengfa. The President of Zhengfa, Di Junhuang. As I recall, newspapers and news programs were making quite a deal over, over his visit. If you thought the audio was fucked up in the other game, by the way, it's way worse than this! <laughs> but it's okay. Also, yeah, this is fan translated. This is not official. Rained a bit, but it stopped just before his plane landed. He came out, and all of a sudden, in the middle of a speech. Bang! A gunshot! At least I think it was. You think. 
Truth is, I just got here as well, so I don't know all the details, sir. So you were also called here on short notice? Yup. And today was supposed to be my day off! And I was supposed to be at the High Prosecutor's Office, preparing a case for trial. The Chief Prosecutor asked for you personally, sir. The Chief Prosecutor? The Chief Prosecutor was taking part in the welcoming events. Apparently, the Chief called out right after the incident occurred. Call Prosecutor Edgeworth. He's the only one who can solve this case, he said. I see. So that's what happened. After the incident, we sealed off the park right away. Which means the assassin is still in the park. An assassin in this crowd. This could get dangerous, sir. If there is another incident, these civilians could get in harm's way. This is a race against time. Let's begin the investigation. First. We investigate the crime scene and gather some information. Precisely. There's no mistaking it. The president was targeted with a gun. Hmm. This is something I'll have to keep in mind. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe. Where was security at... Where was security at the time of the gunfire? The police were only in charge of guarding the park's per perimeter. The president was being protected by his own personal bodyguards. It's those guys over there. Why don't you try talking to them, sir? To talk to someone. Okay, I know. Press the A button. It's cool. What do you want? You are the president's bodyguards, correct? What was the president's security detail like during the speech? The president had his two best men by his side. The rest were stationed near the stage area. We are professionals. We constantly kept our eyes on the crowd, scanning for any signs of suspicious activity. I see. In other words, security was flawless during the president's speech. Let's keep going, and we should talk to other people and examine anything suspicious. In order to collect the remaining pieces of information from the scene of the crime. Hmm? I see, so that's how you round up your info. So what do you do with all that info after it's squared away? Someone in the crowd is making quite a ruckus. But I don't have time for that now. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor! Tell me how, please! After gathering some piece of I pieces of information, you try to find the connections between them. Detective! Hey now, don't be such a stick in the mud. What's this, what's this about finding connections? You connect the two pieces of information that share a link. That's Mr. Edgeworth's specialty. It's called logic, pal. Yes, I know how to use logic. I should start by pressing the L button. Cool. Yes, let me use logic, I guess. Shooting of the president's security during the speech. Cool. Connect those bitches. I connected the dots. <laughs> Don't do this again. Oh my god. Someone was able to fire a gun under flawless security. And they were able to avoid being spotted by professional bodyguards. This is no easy task. There had to be a certain amount of preparation beforehand. It's very likely that the president's assassination was premeditated. Was a premeditated crime. I expected nothing less from Miss Regworth. A brilliant logic, sir. Yes, well, when you follow the facts and find a connection, you will begin to see the truth. However, if the information doesn't line up properly, I may stray farther from the truth. But if I think carefully before pie pie piecing the leads together, the logic should flow. Okay, let's start by examining everything we can. Yeah, I know how to ex examine things, and if I want to consult with Gumshoe, yeah, 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 I don't care. Whee! <laughs> okay, we're here, actually. This is... Yeah, it was a price, too, no matter how you look at it. It's definitely... The Steel Samurai. The Steel Samurai, warrior of New Old Tokyo, a hero from popular TV program. Popular with both children and adults, it has broad appeal. 
And would they use a steel samurai balloon at the welcoming event, sir? <laughs> Perhaps he was chosen as a hero to represent our country. I won't rest, okay? Yes, let me... It's the flag of the Republic of Zhengfa. Its symbol appears to be a phoenix motif. Hmm, this is... What is it, sir? Haven't you noticed? There is an unusual spot on this flag. Compared to the flag on the opposite side of the stage. Hmm, there isn't a speck of dirt on it. The flag is spotless, sir. Yes, and that is what the flag is supposed to look like. However, there is one spot on this flag that is out of place. W where is it, sir? Please explain it so I can understand. What a helpless man. I suppose I should point it out to him. Yeah, I know how to do this. We this. There is an unusual hole in this flag. Ah! You're right! <laughs> Venus motif. This is the only- listen. They don't fucking mention, mention his name once. Literally, in the last fucking game, Larry referred to him as like the man in the blue suit. <laughs> that was like the most specific- no, no, the blue jacket guy motif. <laughs> Judging from the bird marks around the hole, it appears to be a bullet hole. A bullet hole? And the bullet from the gun must have gone through the flag. Poor steel samurai balloon. It looks so miserable. Indeed. What did it do to deserve such a fate? According to witnesses, a gunshot was heard when the balloon popped. But a bullet, bullet from the gun hit the steel samurai balloon. Maybe it was an assassination attempt of on the steel. Oh, maybe it was an assassin as as <laughs> assassination attempt on the steel samurai. To desecrate the steel samurai like this. This is a serious crime. Ah! <laughs> uh... Listen, you reading bullet hole as butthole. That's on you, pal. <laughs> Detective, we must not let this reprehensible assassin get away with this. Of course, sir. Hmm, I seem to have gathered a few pieces of pertinent information. Enough to calmly use some logic and figure out if any of them are connected to each other. I mean, the rupture balloon and the flag with the bullet hole... Yes, okay, cool. As a result of the gunshots, there is a bullet hole in the flag and a ruptured balloon. I must mean two shots were fired, sir. If we include the shot that hit the president, it's possible that three shots were fired in total. Now, it's also possible that the flag and the balloon were punctured by the same bullets. If only we could be certain about the number of gunshots. Now then, let's continue the investigation. Hmm? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor! If you find anything new, could you please let me know? I've been wondering for a while now, but who exactly is that woman? I thought she was just a nosy onlooker, but it looks like she's investigating too. Hey, please, I'm begging ya! In order to figure out how many shots were fired, we'll need to talk to a witness. It can't be helped. Let's try talking to her. Ah, Mr. Prosecutor. The name's Nicole Swift. Just between you and me. This case is gonna be my exclusive scoop. Exclusive? Miss Swift, is it? Could you tell me what you witnessed during- So how's your investigation coming along? Y'all got a suspect yet? Where'd you get that frilly doohickey around your neck? Could you please stop talking for a moment? I will be the one asking the questions. And what is this, an interrogation? I reckon I was gonna get myself in an interview. I'd like to know how many gunshots were fired. Can you please? It's not Lada. Can you please tell me what you saw? Well, I guess. I ain't telling you nothing. 
What? My life depends on info. I ain't giving it up that easily. Don't be selfish, pal. Won't you please cooperate with us? Selfish? If you ain't gonna share no info with me, then I'ma go get it from elsewhere. Wait a minute, pal. If I wait, are you gonna give me what I want? If not, adios amigos. She won't budge. We're at a stalemate here. A stalemate? I wonder about that. W what do you mean, sir? As you know, chess is one of my hobbies. How does one go on the offensive against a defensive opponent? There are many tactics available on the chessboard. R really? I don't know much about chess. I prefer checkers. Even if it appears to be a flawless defense. There is always an opening. Listen, you're thinking about real life. This isn't in real life. This is in the, the glorious country of Japanifornia. I don't fucking know. Observe, as I break down her defense with my words. In order to get her to talk, I need to use the right strategy. Using the image of a chess, ga chess game, I need to stay one step ahead of my opponent. Ah, sweet. Now then, let's analyze the situation. Until you give me some info, my trap seal is shut. She has her guard up. So this is her defensive strategy. If I waste too much time, she may grow impatient. <laughs> you black really calls for money before you give your statement. I mean, that would probably happen in this universe, not gonna lie. I need to pay attention to the time limit. Oh no. <laughs> I must not be careless with my words. When my opponent becomes agitated or aggressive. I told you I ain't talking! You're stubborn as a mule! For example, during times like this, I should calmly wait and see how things play out. The moment my opponent shows an opening, I'll be able to strike. First, I should ask about her identity. Now, let us begin. Your occupation. There we go. First, could you tell me your occupation? No way! If I told you, then you might get the wrong idea. The wrong idea? In other words, it's a job that you cannot tell others about. I, I never said that! I ain't some kind of suspicious person. Wait and see. I'm just your run-of-the-mill model citizen. Please excuse my rudeness. I did not mean to offend you. I may not know the details of your job, but I'm sure that it is a reputable one. Eh? <laughs> well, you might be giving me too much credit there. I ain't even done any major articles yet. An article writing job? Heh. <laughs> I heard you mentioned articles just now. Does your job involve writing articles by any chance? Dang it! That's right, I'm an investigative reporter. A bona fide up and coming news journalist. I see, a reporter. She may already have some information about the case. This will be my next line of questioning. The trap comes and don't give me. This is where the real battle begins. I'll need to draw out even more information from her. Okay, uh... Content of your coverage. You said that you are a reporter. Did you come here to gather news material? Material. If you want to know that bad, give me some info first. No, you first. Show me what you've gathered. Honest to Betsy, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have enough. Yeah, I don't have enough clues. Cool. Maybe I should try another line of attack. Cool. Did you witness the incident then? Were you present at the time the incident occurred? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor? How about some of that info you promised me? No, ladies first, I insist. I told you my trap sealed shut. You ain't getting my info that easily. Talk or I'll arrest you. <laughs> this is my livelihood here. Please, I'm begging you. You stick your head in too deep. You may be putting yourself in danger. I'm a pro after all. A few gunshots. Don't scare me. You heard gunshots? Heh. <laughs> I'll admit you're dedicated to your job. However, you still have much to learn. The fact that you heard the gunshots clearly means that you were present during the incident. You must have seen something. 
busted again. I just happened to be here covering the speech, and that's when it all went south. That's all, I swear, I ain't saying another word. So she was here to write an article about the speech. She should still have the material she gathered for her article. Hmm, huh. this could be a useful clue. Okay, then content of your coverage. You said that you're a reporter, I already did this. Wanna know the bag, give us info, know you first, should have gathered. That's Betsy, I don't know what you're talking about. Let me try using that clue. Are you telling me that you came here to gather material and you left empty handed? You should still have the materials you collected with you. That's. Darn tootin', I'm a pro! I collect info with my own two feet! That's why I ain't giving up. Giving it all up. Giving it up with other fights! As the prosecutor in charge of this case, I am making a serious plea for your cooperation. Don't you mess with me! I ain't heading it over, and that's final! Why the hell is that thing coming up so, so like, fast? I'm pretty sure I put it on like a, uh, oh, I thought I put it to 30, apparently not, just a bit to 30, there we go. <laughs> she was being acquaintance a lot, <laughs> of Lana. I ain't handing it over, and that's final. Please understand where I'm coming from, Mr. Prosecutor. Being a reporter is a tough job, isn't it? Ah, so you're finally getting it. The fuck was that? Did you hear that? Okay, that was... Okay. How was your job... How has your job performance been? Um, well, I'm always trying to be the best reporter I can be. This here tape recorder. I always carry it by my side. I'm listening to the tape. I see. Okay, no worries. See you soon then, I guess. If you're trying to be the best reporter that you can be, then it would be unnatural for you to not have collected any news, news materials. You recorded it on your tape recorder, didn't you? The information regarding this case. Ugh, doggone it! There goes my exclusive scoop. That's right, I have it on my tape recorder. All the information I recorded for my article is right here. Hm, <laughs> checkmates. Sweet. That's amazing, Mr. Prosecutor. Before I knew it, he had done and had me chat chattering like a chipmunk. Let me hear what you have on the tape recorder. If I listen to the tape, I should be able to determine the exact number of gunshots. Fine, but I won't let you have it for free. Other than my mentor, you're the only person to push me this far. In other words, you're gonna be my second mentor. Yup, that's how it's gonna be. I see. It's kind of like a second home, sir. And I got one more request. A 24 hour exclusive interview. Please, Mr. Prosecutor. This is my first and final request as your apprentice. This is difficult to accept, but unless I agree to it, I won't be able to listen to the tape. 24 hours is out of the question, but I will grant you an interview after we solve this case. Wh what about being my second mentor? Also out of the question. Aww. Don't be so ornery. Well, I guess you take what you get. It's all for the sake of my new scoop. Time to get the ball rolling. Let's begin our exclusive coverage. 24 hour interview, is she insane? <laughs> One day I'll do a fucking 24 hour stream. <laughs> and I'm gonna fucking lose it. Well then, Miss Swift. Swift, Swift, Swift. <laughs> Please begin the playback of the tape recorder for me. Dear friends, there is a reason for my visit. A few days ago, a smuggling ring that has long plagued my nation was exposed and crushed. Literally ten days ago. I see. And this was the president's speech. The president passionately addresses the crowd. Oh, he's deflating the rumors flying around about, about, about a recent decline in his approval ratings. 
This was my own commentary. I tried to create the feeling of actually being there. Hmm? According to the schedule, there is a meeting of meeting after this. You seem quite pleased that the Yatagarasu incident has been resolved. Would this? Well, of course. It's a great honor for us as well. Whose voice is this? Those are from the folks standing in front of me. I reckon it was two older men. They kept on whispering to each other. Where have I heard this voice before? I don't know, I just hear... Oh, the gunshot's coming up. The president raises his fist in the air. The atmosphere is boiling to a fever pitch. However, the battle is still not over. I declare here and now, the hammer of justice shall be brought down upon all evil. What in tarnation? Whoa, 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 whoa. It seems that two shots were fired. And what do you reckon? It's quite simple, really, using the bullet's trajectory. We can deduce its flight path. Two shots were fired, one bullet hit the president. That means the other shot left a hole in the flag and punctured the balloon. Uh, don't, don't question her, okay? You understand now, the location of the perpetrator who fired the gun. The bullet that struck both the flag and the balloon was fired from here. Do I really have to get a fucking ruler out and be like, okay, let's, let me fucking measure this. This is the only straight thing I have. <laughs> like this. And like this. I mean, yeah, the crowd, but... Okay, yeah, I'm on the right track. Here. By connecting the bullet marks from the flag and the balloon, we learned the bullet's trajectory. It's likely that the bullet was fired from the left side of the audience area. Oh, but what about the other one? That's what I'd expect from Miss Regworth. Detective Gumshoe, I would like to investigate the left side of the audience area. Yes, sir. Wait, you mean we have to move all these people? Yes, there's no time. We could be losing vital evidence for every second we let slip by. We must hurry. Y yes, sir. Mentor number two. Hey, mentor number two. Miss Swift, I assume you're addressing me. Of course, mentor number two. This is my time to shine. I'm an expert at crowd dispersal. Light the torches, release the hounds, and run them down! I appreciate your help, but please do not use those methods. Also, please stop addressing me as your mentor. I never agreed to that position. I hear ya. I'll try to keep that in mind, mentor. I mean, Mr. Prosecutor. Edgeworth is like, I did not consent to this. <laughs> Same. Spreadworth, we're ready to begin the investigation, sir. My swift here was all over the crowd. Helping us round them up, sir. Not another child. Heh, <laughs> this ain't nothing compared to my first mentor's mob wrangling skills. She seems to be used to this sort of thing. However, Miss Swift, all that running around seems to have caused your clothes. To be covered with mud. I'll take care of the cleaning bill if you like. Heh! <laughs> Oh, you're talking about my parka? Don't you worry your fancy little head about it. It's reversible, so I can just flip it around later and it's good as new. That won't do much for mud stains, though. Well, Mr. Ridgeworth, let's restart the investigation, sir. The crowd has made a mess of the crime scene. I hope some traces of the criminal are still left behind. This is a terrible incident indeed, Mr. Edgeworth. Who is this man again? I, Winston Payne, am willing to assist as a prosecutor. He's a prosecutor? 
How did you come here today? <laughs> we accompany the chief prosecutor. Hmm? His voice sounds like the one that I heard on the tape earlier. I see one of the men standing in front of me. Of Miss Swift, I mean. And where is the chief now? The chief is a busy man. He had special permission to leave the premises. The chief called me here and then left by himself. I'm not completely satisfied with this. Interesting. Check the trash. I wanted to check the trash, not fucking talk to Payne again. You all need to go through the garbage. Your prosecutor's got a tough job. Detective Gumshoe. Right away, sir. So it's the detective's job to go through the trash. Prosecutors don't want to dirty their hands. Hmm, let's see. I hope I find something good. The detective seems to be a little too eager about searching through the through the trash. This is a winning popsicle stick. Detective! Sorry, sir. Let's see. Something related to the case. Hmm. Look what I found, sir. Yes, good work. Let's have a closer look. From various angles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, just give me the word and I'll spin the evidence round and round. <laughs> Gumption just holding it and just being... Oh my god, if you want to zoom in, yeah, I know. Press, I know how to, I know how to, yes. If you find something suspicious, please let us know immediately, sir. Move the cursor, yeah, okay, alright, let's give it a try. He is just too precious, indeed. It's a document of some sort. Let's see! President's security d detail. So are the plans for the president's security, sir. It depicts as the security layout. Bodyguards' names are written on here too. Rook and Knightley. Hmm. The bodyguards are not from the Republic of Zhengfa. It seems that the president hired a local security firm. Why didn't he use the police force of Zhengfa? You want to know the reason? That's another big scoop. You know something about it. I was just at the Zhengfa embassy the other day. Fix them to get me some news material. That's when I heard. It sounds like the president's got plenty of enemies. He also don't get along too well with the top brass of the Zhengfa police. I see. He doesn't even trust the people of his own country. This could be related to the assassination attempt. Why would this document be in the bag? Hold on, wait. Let me actually just check out the security plans properly. Pay extra attention to the lake area. Rook takes Knightley's place. In the case of an emergency, Knightley will lead the president inside the plane. A terrorist in the audience. We can't be certain there isn't one. Interesting. Why would this document be in the bag? That is strange indeed. It concerns the safety of the president. Normally, it will be under tight security. Hmm? This bag. There's something else in it, sir. <laughs> this is... It's a g gun, sir. Mr. Edgeworth. For this bag had belonged to the... Indeed, it is possible that the assassin may have thrown it away. It's a revolver. For something like this to appear in a place like this... Is this the work of a professional assassin? You must have used that document to carry out the crime, sir. This revolver. I will need to take a closer look at it. Bullets. This would be the grip. No, I, I meant the bullets! I've held the grip of several guns in the past, but... It's never been a very pleasant feeling. Edgeworth with the gun. <laughs> This gun fired two bullets. That matches the number of gunshots heard. This must be the murder weapon, sir. This is 
laser pointer. It's an implement you'd attach to a gun to help game with the laser, pa sir. Just press here and... It's firing a red... It's firing a red laser, sir. The, assa the assassin used this laser pointer to target the president. This bag has provided us with lots of useful evidence. Dumpster diving really paid off, sir. Good work, detective. I have one more request. Please tell the forensics team to check the gun and the bag for fingerprints. Yes, sir. If we can obtain fingerprints, it would be a huge breakthrough in our investigation. We got the results back, sir. Th that was fast. Of course, I made them double time it. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any fingerprints, sir. Are you certain you did a thorough, thorough search? Of course, we combed every inch. We even took out the bullets and examined them, sir. As expected, this won't be easy. Oh my god, where am I? TV cameraman, apparently. This is even worse than the first one. <laughs> Because there's literally just a wall of text. And there is also some Japanese in between, so it's, it's, it's wonderful. You are with the television crew, are you not? Oh, um, that's right, but... Then you must have recorded the speech. I'd like to see the footage. Y yeah, um, about that. That would be difficult. What's that, pal? It's your duty as a citizen to cooperate with the investigation. After the incident, the guest knocked over the TV camera in a panic. All the footage was lost. If there was any footage left, it could have been vital evidence. Yeah, it's too bad, sir. <laughs> oh, what was that? Looks like you're in a jam, Mr. Edgeworth. A voice. Kay! Yes! We love a daughter. I... We stand. Long time no see, Mr. Edgeworth. The hero of justice. It's been ten days. <laughs> Kay Faraday is here to save the day. Hero. I guess she wouldn't refer to herself as a heroine. So, have you given up on this great thief business yet? Nope. I haven't stopped. I'm just on vacation. I'm still in training to become the second Yatagarasu. About two weeks ago, this girl became involved in one of my cases. The mysterious phantom thief, the Yatagarasu. The case of a gentleman thief who steals the truth for the sake of justice. This girl is the successor to that great thief. If you need to pick a lock or untie a rope, leave it to me. But since I'm still in training, I haven't actually stolen anything yet. Okay, what are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I wanted to join in the fest join in on the festivities. She does seem to have a fondness for these kind of events. Afterwards, I thought I'd come meet up with you guys. Well, we're glad to see you. You look like you've been doing well, pal. I mean, that depends on the rope. It's been a while, Gummy. I'm glad you're well too. Okay, you said earlier that you could help me out. <laughs> Please don't be surprised, Mr. Edgeworth. I took a photo that captures the exact moment of the crime. I see. Could you show it to us at once? The same as usual, I see. Can't you act even a little surprised? Yeah, that prosecutor is always in a sour mood. He even got annoyed when I called him my second mentor. Oh, by the way, I'm Nicole Swift, up-and-coming investigative re reporter. Nice to meet you, Nicole. Yeah, Mr. Edgeworth's really... Enough idle chatter. Can you please just show us the photo? Fine. Here. This is a photo I took at the moment of the gunshot. It was awful. Everyone in the audience was running in panic. This photo depicts the president and his two bodyguards. Judging from the names written on the security plan, these two must be Rook and Knightley. Hmm. What is this? 
Thank you, Kay. And this will be a very important clue. Oh, you got that sharp look in your eyes. Did you find something, Mr. Prosecutor? In this photo, there is a contradiction. In this photo? I don't see nothing. If you don't understand, then I'll show you. The scene captured the photo and the evidence I have on hand. By comparing the two, I'll find the contradiction. It's time for my deductive skills to come into play. First, I have to find the spot that holds the contradiction. Ah, oh, okay. I see. Once I found the contradiction, I press the X button with conviction. <laughs> then I present the evidence that contradicts the spot. Miss Swift, this newspaper contains a photograph of the president. I'd like you to compare it with the photo Kay took at the scene. Hmm? What do you mean? Oh, that's right. There's something on the president's forehead that wasn't there before. Is that mole? Uh-huh. It clearly looks like a red mole. That's foolish. It's hard to believe that a mole would pop out of thin air like that. It'd be a bug bit him, sir. That's all? I thought you were on to something. Turns out it's just a time it's just an itty bitty bug bite. You were talking with such a serious look on, on your face. I was getting all excited. <laughs> MVP phone. Indeed. Hmm. The way to the truth. Always begins with the small contradictions. Ooh, that's a great way of putting it. I'll be using that for my article. Dig it, dig it, doom, dig it, dig it, doom, dig it, dig it. I need to go to logic, I guess. Red mole and laser pointer. Sweet! I've solved the mystery of the red mole. Huh? You mean it's not a bug bite, sir? It's nothing like a bug bite or an itchy rash. rash. This is the light from a laser pointer. You mean a gun was aimed at the president's forehead? Right after that, the second gunshot was heard. Certainly more than just an itch, sir. Indeed, I am concerned for the president's well-being. It's become more and more likely that this gun was the weapon used in the, in the attack. Why did the criminal use a laser pointer, sir? That's right. They, could, they would have had a beam of light shining from their hands. Pew, 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 pew! Way too conspicuous. And if you follow the path of the laser, you will find out who fired the shot. That's not good at all. Oh, yeah, I also took some other photos. Maybe the light from the laser pointer was captured in those. It's a long shot, but there may be a chance. Okay, could you show us those photos? Coming right up. Firstly, the photo from before the incident. Your face is taking up most of the frame. <laughs> I wanted to get a two shot of me and the president. This was taken a little before the gunshots. And here's the one I showed you before. This was right after the, after the first gunshot. And immediately, immediately after that, a second gunshot ran, rang out. And then... What is this? You can't really see much in this photo. After that last photo, one of the running guests knocked me down. It looks like the shutter clicked just then. This doesn't look too helpful, Pel. Well, those were all the photos I took. I'd like to examine these in a bit more detail. Let me investigate which photo. Uh... Before the incident, apparently. 
Where can the light from the later laser pointer be seen? Oh! 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 I found it. What? Look just in front of this person in the red hood. Ah, there! Yes, that's probably the light from the laser pointer. But then, that red hooded person would be the assassin. We did it! It's all thanks to me, right? Right. As expected, the great thief has stolen the truth. <laughs> Perhaps the criminal can also be seen in the other photos. Let me examine those, these photos one more time. This is after the incident, anyways. How can the red hooded assassin be seen? Hoop. Ah! There! The red hooded assassin. Looks like they're escaping in the panic, sir. We can see the direction they ran in. Have the samurai dog banner! Right. The assassin escaped towards the right side of the audience area. Take to gumshoe. <clears throat> Got it, sir. We'll investigate the right side of the audience area. I'm counting on you. The red hooded assassin. Since the park was sealed off, there's nowhere they could have run to. If we follow their trail, we'll definitely catch them. Now then, let's continue with the investigation. We'll definitely find some traces of the assassin. What, what this? No, not talk. What's up? Or do I talk? Uh... No. And there are toy rifles lined up neatly on top of the counter. Oh, it's a shooting booth, sir. I hate to brag, but I'm ac actually pretty good at these. I thought you said that you weren't good with guns. It's not that I'm not good with them. I just don't like guns, sir. Normally, that's what you would call not being good with guns. Interesting. Something shoved underneath here. There's something red down there. Detective Gumshoe, please check underneath the food stall. Something stuck down here. Let's see. It's a red raincoat. Could this be? The assassins! It appears that he got rid of his raincoat before he ran away. This is... It's a red button, sir. Could this be... This could be related to the person in the red hood. I can't do anything here. Okay. And this sleeve. It's inside out. It's also missing a button. There we go. Red button. Main code sleeve. Connect. Connect them, bitches. It looks like the fallen button came from the raincoat. It probably fell off when the assassin took off took off the raincoat. If you look closely, you can see that the right sleeve is inside out, sir. It appears they took it off in a hurry. The button was probably torn off. After shooting the president, the assassin disposed of the gun and the bag in the garbage bin. Then... During the panic, they moved from the left to the right side of the audience area. The bullet's trajectory led us to suspect someone who was on the left side of the audience area. The assassin then took off the raincoat and hid it under the, under the stand. The assassin was in a hurry to remove the raincoat. 
He is, uh... I believe he's still alive. The assassin was in a hurry to remove the raincoat. That's why there are signs that the right sleeve was hastily removed. It also explains why the button was torn off. If that's the case, why is the left sleeve not in the same state? Ha! Oh, that sleeve isn't inside out. On the contrary, but the button is still tightly fixed. What do you mean, sir? To find the answer, we must examine this raincoat in detail. The right sleeve is turned inside out. You can see where the button's been torn off. Indeed, this, this raincoat must have been removed in a hurry. Let me just wee. I just see a lot of mud. This raincoat is a brilliant bright red. Just looking at it makes me want to charge at it. I'm like a bullfight. Yeah, my heart is always fired up like a bull. I'd say you're just simple-minded. I'd like to investigate the inside of this raincoat. Detective Gumshoe! Got it! This is... a blood stain. Judging by the location, this is most likely the assassin's own blood. We're looking for someone who's injured, sir. Not just any injury, detective. An injury on their left arm. What do you mean, sir? The criminal was in a hurry to take off their coat. That's why the right sleeve is inside out. On the other hand, the left sleeve remained unchanged. How did this different arise? difference arise? Quite simply, the assassin couldn't get his arm through the left sleeve. You could think of it like that. It all starts to add up. Furthermore, a bloodstain was found on the left side of the raincoat. I see. He couldn't get his injured arm to fit through the sleeve. Yes, indeed. I'd say the possibility is quite high. It's all coming together. Okay, Kronk. Detective Gumshoe, I want you to pull our assassin out of the crowd. Roger that, sir. Someone with an injured left arm, right? You must have a good head on your shoulders if you did see through me, Mr. Prosecutor. Finding the assassin with only that much evidence shouldn't be a problem at all. That's our Edgeworth! With everyone in the park sealed in, the assassin could should still be within the crowd. I'm counting on you, Detective Gumshoe. Mr. Edgeworth, we found a suspicious person in that condition, sir. It's gotta be the assassin. Okay, we haven't proven that this person is the assassin yet. For now, this is just a person of interest. Don't jump to conclusions. Got it, I'll control myself. There's no doubt that this is the guy who targeted the president, sir. It takes a daring person to target someone's life in front of an audience. Detective, bring him here. Courteously. Yes, sir. Hey, you guys, bring him here! Oh? Oh? Really, what brings you to this side of town? He's not carrying an umbrella, and his left arm is bandaged. You there, state your name. My name is John Doe. John Doe. That's an unusual name. That is correct. This man. Have I seen him somewhere before? Prosecutor Edgeworth. You know my name. Yes, I have been observing your investigation. May I ask why you have called me here? We are searching for the assassin who attempted to murder the president. Do you recognize this red raincoat? I am terribly sorry, but I am afraid I do not. I believe that this raincoat belongs to the assassin. Oh my, that is terrible indeed. This person should also have a severe injury on the left side of their body. Precisely like yours. 
And I have no relation to this. Stare down! Mano a mano! It's like they're firing laser beams out of their eyes! Yes, that is- that is the joke. <laughs> So yeah, that's why when you watch like crime shows and they have like, uh, they find a body that they can't like identify, they call them Jane or John Doe. So what happens next? Obviously a confrontation, pal. A battle of wits between two gentlemen. Should I hear his explanation? Uh, hear his explanation, I guess. A witness might lie or misunderstand. If you find a contradiction in their statements, you present evidence, pal. Yes, I know how to press the R button. I know how to do this. And if you don't find a contradiction, what do you do then? At those times, you press the witness for more details. To press. Yes, I know how to press. All right, sir. Could you give us a demonstration, please? Go, Mr. Prosecutor. You are America's best. Yes, America. <laughs> she just won't quit. I understand that the person in the raincoat is suspicious. However, that doesn't mean that he was injured. I don't suppose you have proof. Clearly, my left arm is injured, but I can still use my right arm. When it was raining, I used an umbrella. I have no need for a raincoat. You didn't wear a raincoat. That's your claim. Yes, not everyone uses a raincoat for protection against the rain. I am an umbrella person after all. I'm definitely a raincoat person. Umbrellas will hinder your movements. Well, I don't use raincoats or umbrellas. Come rain or snow, all I need is my trusty parka. This wasn't what I wanted to talk about. I hope you understand. I am not the assassin. Unfortunately, leaving a testimony un unexamined goes against my principles. How troublesome. I am but a simple ice cream salesman. Oops. Please excuse me. In the panic earlier, my wounds seem to have reopened. There's no mistaking that the owner of this raincoat is the assassin. Furthermore, the owner has an injured left arm. Mr. Doe, I shall reveal your true colors for all to see. Oh my god, I could just get straight to- Oh my god, yes. No, I'm not supposed to press it. What if I have evidence to prove that he was injured? I haven't- I haven't done this before, apparently. You certainly seem confident. I expected no less of you. L no less of you, Mr. Prosecutor. Hmm? You know of me. It's because you're famous, sir. Maybe he read about you in the newspaper. I have been observing your investigation. Oh, you, you haven't played this one? Oh, man. This one f fucked me up. Yeah, I am replaying. I'm also following a guide or I'm gonna be stuck on this chapter for three hours and I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> so I hope you can understand that I will be cheating. <laughs> this man is clearly suspicious. Well, it is rather easy. <laughs> if I expose his lies, I should be able to uncover the assassin's true identity. Yes, we need to go back to the... However, yeah. Here we go, and then... Okay, cool. Mr. Doe, you seem to be a very cautious person. However, today seems to be different. Because you left this behind. You must be mistaken. That does not belong to me. Or perhaps, you have evidence that proves otherwise. Mr. Doe, is your injury alright? The wound seems to have opened. Indeed it is. Quite troublesome. Yes, I'm sure it is. You have my deepest sympathies. After all, you would have escaped had your wounds not opened up. 
What do you mean? There was no mistaking that the one who wore this raincoat was injured. And I can prove that the person was you. With this. <laughs> Not the ice cream. <laughs> Sweating. <laughs> On the inside of this raincoat, there is a small blood stain. It's the blood of the assassin. Attacking the president is a serious crime, pal. It will cause an international incident. No matter how long you keep silent, your true nature will soon come to light. A blood test will settle this. The blood from the raincoat and the blood from your bandaged arm. Oh my god, it comes back down. <laughs> sure does. I have all the evidence I need. Why don't you just admit it? You're the assassin who attacked the president. I am not the assassin. You don't know when to give up. If this was a game of chess, you would have been checkmated a long time ago. <laughs> uh, that's great. Admit your defeat gracefully. He seems completely unfaced. I suppose I have no choice. I'll admit it. Indeed, the raincoat is mine. You confess, sir. Arrest him! Arrest him! However, that does not mean I shot the president. Was that pal? Prosecutor Edgeworth. All you have proven is that I wore the raincoat. What sort of crime is that? I am no assassin. I am just a simple ice cream salesman. All I did was put on that red raincoat and listen to the pro president's speech. It surprised me to see the bodyguards take action just before the gunshot rang out. Everyone in the audience immediately tried to escape, creating a state of panic. Are you satisfied this time? The story's getting fishier by the minute. He's really suspicious. G glaring at me won't help. We've got evidence. Here, look at this guy in the red raincoat. That's gotta be the assassin. I see. That is certainly not me. What? Prosecutor Edgeworth, please consider this carefully. Was I really the only one who wore a red raincoat? Whether he was or not, the person in the photo can only be Mr. Doe. Why? This man's self-confidence and intensity. It's because it's not on the card, okay? <laughs> okay, third statement. Press. So the bodyguards reacted before the gunshot went off. Yes, the bodyguards moved first. The one on the left side of the stage, in particular. You saw it all quite clearly. I have good eyesight. The names are written on the upper left of the security plan. The bodyguard on the left side would be Mr. Rook. That is correct. A Mr. Ethan Rook, I believe. Perhaps he noticed the light from the laser pointer. That man is no ordinary individual. From their actions, I don't believe that the bodyguards were am amateurs. This man isn't an ordinary individual either. Please add that statement to your testimony. As you wish. The man on the left side of the stage was exceptionally quick. A Mr. Ethan Rook, as I recall. Objection. Seems you aren't just a simple ice cream salesman after all. You think too highly of me, Prosecutor Edgeworth. I would a simple ice cream salesman know the name of the president's bodyguard? The name of the bodyguard? Surely you jest. Didn't you say their names just a moment ago? Mr. Knightley and Mr. Rook. Correct? This is a diagram of the security plans. We learned their names from this. However, please look. Only their surnames are written here. You distinctly said Ethan Rook. How did you know his full name when we did not? 
That's pretty weird, sir. Why do you know his name? Explain yourself. That was merely a slip of the tongue. It's true. The sky is the assassin. Young lady, you're being a little hasty. The reason I knew his name is quite simple. What? I am an acquaintance of Mr. Rooks. What? He and I have a bit of a connection. His is a name that I will never forget. It's Redworth. He's just telling a big fat lie. This is not a lie. I am just a simple ice cream salesman. And an acquaintance of Ethan Rooks. In that case, let's just ask Rook himself about this. Whether or not he is acquainted with this dubious ice cream salesman. As you wish. However, that may prove difficult now. He is currently busy with the president's security, after all. Besides, even if I am not an acquaintance of Mr. Rook's, does that prove that I fired the gun? <laughs> if you aren't the assassin, then why did you remove your raincoat? It was a little hot, and the rain had stopped. I mean, usually you would just tie it around your waist, no? Why would you just, just like... Man, I guess it's not raining anymore. Well, don't need this raincoat anymore. <laughs> Better just fucking put it under a fucking... Well, it's like a food stall. That's what it's called. It was a little hot and the rain had stopped. I wanted to air out the wound. Is there a problem with that? Ugh. I just can't seem to corner him. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you doing? Hurry up and arrest him! <laughs> I get memories together. That man's so suspicious. I'd even arrest him myself. Arrest him without evidence. What could I do such a thing? Come on, Miss Ratchworth. Can't you do something? Breaking news. The criminal is on the verge of escaping the prosecutor. No, oh dear. They're already treating me like a criminal. I understand. Since I've been suspected this far, I seem I will have to tell the truth. The truth? What is he up to? I saw... another person wearing a red hood. What? What? Surely, that was the person who was in the photo. I first noticed him right before the speech, when it was still raining. He caught my eye because his raincoat was the same color as mine. In his hand, I saw a laser pointer with the light aimed directly at the president. It can't be. There was another person wearing a red hood. I knew that if I wore the red raincoat, I'd be mistaken for the assassin. And that is why I took off the raincoat. You saw an assassin wearing the same color hood as yours. Hmm. Huh. Wouldn't that be a nice coincidence? That's what I expected you would say, which is why I did not testify as such. Prosecutors and the police are a suspicious law. I knew that nobody would believe me. At the moment of the incident, the assassin was very close to the prosecutor. Prosecutor, I only arrived after the incident. Not you, Prosecutor Edgeworth. That prosecutor over there. Huh? Me? Yes, you should be visible in that photo. Here, right in front of the person in the red hood. Mm. That's me, all right. What's your point? What's this man driving at? I have been observing your investigation this entire time, Prosecutor Edgeworth. And I have noticed something strange. Something strange. Hmm, it seems you still haven't noticed this contradiction yet. A contradiction? In this photo of the people who can be seen are the chief, Mr. Payne, and the assassin. I don't see anything strange. Please think back carefully about the circumstances during the president's speech. I believe you are holding the evidence that contradicts this photo. Do I have evidence that contradicts this photo? <laughs> Payne is the assassin. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
Also, technically, this game was never released outside of Japan, so you have to, like, get this, like, fan-translated version. But it's really good. I can recognize pain with voice act. Wow, that's, that's great. <laughs> I'm flattered. Okay, uh... What contradicts this? Good question. Hold on, wait, let me just... I mean, it's not this one for sure. No. Steel Samurai Balloon. No. Cold tape recorder. My dear friends, there is a reason for my visit. The president impression of the artist's crowd. He is to Flayton. The rumors flying around about a, de a recent decline in his approval ratings. According to the schedule, there's a meeting after this. You seem quite pleased. The Atagarasu incident has been resolved. Raises his fist in the air. The atmosphere here is boiling to a fever pitch. The hammer of justice shall be brought down upon all evil. Bang bang. <laughs> huh. What was like the... This is before, during, and after the incident. <laughs> oh, wait. It was Payne who was spoke, wasn't it? Here. Shrill old man, yeah. Let's do the schedule. There is a meeting after this. I don't get the contradiction, but sure, I'll present this. <laughs> it can't be. There's a contradiction between the photo and the tape. It seems you've noticed. Miss Wedgworth, what's going on? There is a person missing from this photograph. Oh! Duh! Miss Swift, of course. I was about to call her Taylor Swift. <laughs> her name isn't Taylor, it's Nicole. Huh? Who is it? Yes, it's rather strange. Someone who should be there, but it's not. The person who should be in this- the, the person who should be in this photo is... Nicole. Huh? Miss Swift. Why would you say that? Mr. Payne's voice was recorded on Miss Swift's tape. He was whispering quietly with the chief prosecutor. I was around the folks standing in front of me. I reckon it was two older men. They kept on whispering to each other. It seems Miss Swift was near Mr. Payne when she recorded the speech. Huh? But she isn't anywhere in this photo. That is correct. Now, Mr. Prosecutor, who is the one you should be pursuing? <laughs> Nicole Swift, would you mind giving us your testimony? Come on, it feels weird when you talk all formal like that. It's fine, I ain't got nothing to hide. It ain't like I stayed in one spot while I was recording. I was moving around the audience area, shuffling here and there. I reckon this picture must have been snapped at a different time to my tape recording. So quit making that scary face. It ain't what you think. Is it not? Miss Swift's tape recorder. Tape. Uh, Miss Swift's tape recorded uh, a conversation between my colleagues, Mr. Payne and the chief prosecutor. Why would Nicole be lying? That would mean. It'd mean Nicole Swift is the assassin, pal. Y'all gotta be kidding me. I ain't done nothing like that. Be that as it may, however, there is a contradiction in your testimony. Huh? I don't reckon so. No, sir. It appears I must reveal this contradiction with evidence. Here and the pres present tape recorder.
Miss Swift, a reporter shouldn't lie. I ain't lying. I'm an honest journalist. Perhaps, but there's no denying that the photo and the recording were taken at, taken at the same time. That's so. And what makes you say that? The truth lies in these photos. This photo could only have been taken at the same time as your recording. Which spot shows that this was taken at the same time as the recording? I mean, his fists, right? We. Can you see the president with his fist raised in the air? What about it? Miss Swift, might we hear your tape one more, one more time? Nuh uh, you ain't gonna hear a word while you've been treating me. Would you rather we charge you with obstruction of justice and seize it from you? Uh, fine, you win. I'm no match for you, Mr. Prosecutor. The question is during which part of his speech did the pro president raise his fist? No matter what sort of heinous criminal organization there is, I will not allow them to exist. The president raises his, raises his fist in the air. The atmosphere is boiling to a fever pitch. Aha! Uh -huh. Raises his fists! Straight from the horse's mouth, sir! This tape was recorded at the moment the president raised his fist overhead. Then that means... Nicole not being in this photo is really strange. Oh, but she is in the photo. Right here. The person in the red hood. It was you, Nicole Swift. You're the real assassin, aren't you, pal? Th that that ain't so. I I I never worn that red raincoat. Hmm. This red raincoat in question belongs to. Oh, you're okay. That is it's talking about the one I'm holding. I was like not sure. The raincoat's owner is Mr. Doe. That much has been proved. You were wearing something else. A different red hood. Y you mean there were two red hoodies, sir? Mr. Doe's last testimony was true. But we didn't find any other red raincoats. What Mr. Doe saw was a red hood, not a raincoat. Miss Swift, what was it you told us earlier about your parka? Huh? Oh, you mean when I said it, I ain't worried about it getting all dirty. It's reversible, so all I gotta do is turn it inside out and- <laughs> As I thought. Mr. Edgeworth, the inside of her parka is red. Indeed, and during the incident, she was using that side. What? Hey, pal, what's the big idea? Y you're wrong. I've been wearing it like this the whole day. Well then, will you allow me to examine your parka? What do you expect to find? We know it was raining prior to the president's speech. I believe you said earlier. Well, I don't use raincoats or umbrellas. Come rain or snow, all I need is my trusty parka. And you really didn't turn your parka inside out. Then the inside should be, should be dry. H hang on a minute. I ain't taking off this heavy backpack and putting it back on again. S -s Sorry, but can't we do this another time? I mean, can't you just, like, reach into the hood? Like, surely, like, that would be sufficient enough. You think you can fool Miss Regworth with that, pal? Uh, uh. Alright then, pal. We're really wrong. Prove it. Show us the inside of the parka. Or just the front. Okay, that's, that's true. That's fair, too, I guess. It, it wasn't me. I ain't no assassin. Miss Swift, if you want me to believe that, then you need to cooperate with us. Will you please tell us why you wore the red side of the, of the parka? I, I'm sorry, Mr. Prosecutor. I, I have my reasons, honest. I'll tell you all everything. Just quit bull bullying me. Who that? Whose voice was that? Hold on a sec. It's a little too early for the endgame. Who this? I don't know. Ah, okay, I see. Hey, you in the fancy suit. Haven't you been jumping the gun ever since your opening move? This man was in case photo. Whoa, I guess I should introduce myself first. 
My name is... Horace Knightley, the President's bodyguard. Second in command of his personal security unit. <laughs> Watch it, pal. That's not a toy. Oh, my bad. She just wants to come out and play. I can't seem to help it. Why do you have a gun if you're not a police officer? She's a lady of Zheng Fa. Only the President's bodyguards are authorized to use it. Anyway, back to business. I've got some news for you. There's good news and bad news. Which do you want to hear first? It makes no difference to me. Do as you wish. You sure? I'm giving you the first move. Alright, I got you. I'll start with my pawn. It seems you enjoy chess. You play too, Mr. Fancy Suit? It's Edgeworth, and I do have a fondness for chess. Is that so? Well then, Chess Master Edgeworth, I'll start with the good news. The president's safe, not even a scratch on him. Really? That's great, pal. It seems that the young lady was not a murderer after all. Good for you, Nicole. Uh, but, but I... Mo well, there, don't forget, there's still the bad news. The president is safe because his bodyguards protected him. Actually, I had nothing to do with it. He was the leader who protected him. At the cost of his own life. That will be the other bodyguard. Rook, was it? Yeah, that's right. Rook died to protect the president. What? Is that so? Rook is dead. What a shame. It means... Nicole! It means that the little lady killed him. My brother in arms. Th th that ain't true! I ain't a murderer! Whoa there, pipe down, little Miss Murderer. Jeez, even if I had to make a sacrifice to protect the king, it was a pretty bad move. Castling. Sacrifices in castles. What's he talking about, sir? They're all chess terms. He's saying Brooke's life was exchanged for the precedence. This guy sure talks funny, sir. Horace Knightley, was it? Hmm? What do you want? I'd like to examine the victim's body as soon as possible. And if it's possible, I'd like to question the president. Sorry, but I can't let you do that. What? I got another piece of news for you, and this one's a doozy. There's another piece of news? From here on out, this investigation will be handled by the Zheng by the Zhengfa police. What? What's going on, pal? This case is under our jurisdiction. You have no right to interfere. You're Prosecutor Edgeworth, right? The president knows about you solving the Athagarasu case. I'm honored. That's why the chief prosecutor designated you to be in charge of the case. It seems the chief prosecutor made a little appeal to the president. But it looks like you're the wrong guy for the job. I didn't know you'd have this kind of reaction. It's the president's orders. If you, if you oppose, he'll cause an international incident. Capiche? <laughs> hey, little lady, get over here. We'll continue your questioning inside the president's plane. No! Ah, I, I didn't do nothing. Hey, now, don't be a baby. You're scared of a little Shengfa justice. Mr. Prosecutor, please, please help me. Miss Swift. It's clear that Miss Swift was the person in the red hood. However, that doesn't mean that the whole truth has been revealed. I really didn't do it. Please believe me. Is it really alright for it to end this way? All I see is a girl with eyes full of fear, pleading for help. For help. Certainly not someone who's committed a heinous crime. If I stand aside now and do nothing, the truth will be lost to the darkness. Who screams? Huh? Eh? What? What? What the? You! Silence. What the? Is an impolite way to greet someone. Your neck injury has yet to heal, and you've already forgotten. No, not you. Not now. 
It seems you've remembered. Hey, what are you doing? Cut it out, pal. You got some nerve to do that right in front of a detective and a prosecutor. Stop! Stay out of this! He's out of your league! Mr. Doe, who on earth are you? Cut it out. <laughs> I'm not merely a simple ice cream salesman. Really? Shit! We've been bamboozled, guys. He wasn't an ice cream salesman after all. Holy, holy, holy crap. I can't believe he tricked us like that. He really trolled us. <laughs> He's a professional assassin. His name is... Shelly the Killer. Shelly the Killer? I wanted to buy ice cream from him. There's no one in law enforcement who doesn't know the name the killer. An assassin who will carry out any request without fail. He was once involved in a case I handled. It's been a while, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Although, I do believe this is our first face-to-face -face meeting. The real assassin was you all along. And that is correct. I received a request from a key individual. To take the president's life. I should have seen his face before in the case files. Curses. I was careless. I'm glad I hid a knife inside my bandage before I entered the park, even though my calculations were a little off. A knife, not a gun. Now, Mr. Knightley, shall we play that game you love so much? Of course, the stakes will be your life. What are your demands? I want you to relinquish an investigative authority back to Prosecutor Edgeworth. Sir? <laughs> Investigative authority. What are you playing at? I simply want you to allow Edgeworth to continue investi his investigation. Huh? Why do you want that? Rook is an opponent who is connected to me by fate. I would like to discover the truth about his death. When that man died, and the investigative authority was transferred to you. I am simply asking you to give it back to this prosecutor. With your life at stake, this really isn't the time to be stubborn. Why, you... You were just using the investigation to get close to the president. And what if I am, indeed, in order to continue the investigation? It is necessary that we enter the president's plane. The leader of the president's bodyguards, they won't allow it. Oh, I thought you were only second in command. Now that Rook's gone, I'm in charge. I'm not sure if you're as capable as Rook was. What are you saying? I'm totally the leader now. Very well. In that case, please exercise judgment befitting of a leader. You can lose your life here needlessly, or will you allow the investigation to continue? Huh. <laughs> using the investigation as an excuse. Why would he go to that all, go to all that trouble? What is this man thinking? Prosecutor Edgeworth, I trust you have no objections. Let us continue the investigation. Mr. Edgeworth, what should we do, sir? Look at pain in the background. <laughs> For now, we have no choice but to accept this proposal. At least we'll be able to investigate. But, listen well, detective. I'll use the investigation to buy us time. Meanwhile, gather up all your men. Surround the president's plane so that he can't escape. Right. Roger that, sir. And that's the first chapter. Yeehaw, let's go. The death of the bodyguard, Ethan Rook, and the arrival of Shelley the Killer. A new development in this case has come to light. Under Knightley's direction, the door of the president's plane was opened. After the paramedics attending Mr. Rook left, we set foot inside the plane, one by one. Oh my, where would the president be? Who knows? It seems he is just behind that door. S still a coward, I see. Think he'd just show himself in front of a hitman? <laughs> Not a chance. 
didn't I tell you already? My purpose here is simply to investigate the case. Well then, Mr. Prosecutor, we await your examination of the body. Right. For now, I have no choice but to obey and continue the investigation. The rest is up to Detective Gumshoe. I'm counting on you. The attempted assassination of the president became the murder of a bodyguard. <laughs> it looks like you could use some help, Mr. Edgeworth. Well, I don't deny it, but... See? Exactly. If that's the case, then it can't be helped. Just leave it to the great thief K for a day. Right. So are you saying you can solve this case? Nope. Said it with such certainty. Instead, I'll stick to being your support. Right. Let's get straight to the investigation. We need to buy time for the police to prepare. I'll need to draw out this investigation for as long as I can. Okay, uh, Rook's body. Bullet pierced his body just below his armpits. Unfortunately, he was hit in an area his bulletproof vest didn't cover. It really seems like a well-aimed shot. The cause of death was most likely blood loss. The bleeding has stopped. The paramedics were called to treat Mr. Rook, right? I'm afraid they didn't make it in time. This is a bulletproof... At Attach? Attachy? <laughs> Case. It's a tool bodyguards use to protect themselves from bullets. It can be seen in Kay's photo. It seems Rook and Knightley both had one. Huh! That's the scene I stole on film! Who didn't do anything illegal in taking this? Anywhere, anytime, I'm always in the mood to steal. You just wanted to use the word steal, didn't you? <laughs> Have I been caught? Hmm... Gun. It seems the victim also carried a gun. Did he try to shoot something? He may have drawn it out instinctively to return fire. We need to check to see if the gun has fired any bullets. Hmm, it's still fully loaded. There's no evidence of any shots being fired. This gun is also from Sheng Fa, right? Ah, yeah. You were always issued the same model revolver. Hmm. Oh my god, there's so much. I'm like, where am I going? Words. Use your logic to connect. Why is my mom calling me now? No, I'm busy. <laughs> Hold on. God, there is so much text. <laughs> okay. Rook's gone to six shot re revolver. Huh, interesting. They do look similar. These two guns. They're the exact same model. These guns came from Zheng Fa. Looks like all the bodyguards were provided with guns from Zheng Fa. Indeed. Are those guns rare? No, not particularly. They're not easy to obtain domestically, but it isn't impossible either. What? I thought they might be a treasure. Yes, it's unfortunate. Eh? Mr. Edgeworth, are you talking about treasure? Not quite. If it was a rare model, it would have been easier to identify. Even evidence can become treasure. See, even during your investigations, you search for treasure. Well, I didn't quite say that. Okay, let's investigate. Where's the treasure? And suddenly she is motivated. The briefcase, I got that one. Rook's gone. And then desk. It's a heavy-looking vest. 
The president's clothes must be made from some special fabric. Indeed, it's to protect against bullets. Wow, it even does that? Naturally, this is a bulletproof vest after all. Ah, so that's what it is. This is the first time I've seen one. You could have said something earlier. It really surprised me. Or at least some kind of official documents. I know it's a bit rude, but let's take a peek inside. Hmm, this seems to be a security plan. Ah, this looks like the one we found earlier in the trash can. Yes, it does. But, what's this? Something seems out of place. Is it... Must be able to repel any attack from the lake. Undercover agents keep an eye on the on the audience. Okay, I thought this was evidence, <laughs> and I got really confused for a second there. Um, no, I don't think it's them. It's the fact that uh, Rook and Knightley switched places. You see here, Rook is to the left, Knightley is to the right, but here they're the opposite. Hold on, examine the folder. Okay, yeah. That is right. What's this? The details of the security plans were changed. Eh? Oh, you're right! Yeah, that's right. It was changed yesterday. President's orders. Why the sudden change? Also, I don't know what voice to give to Knightley, I'm sorry. Because, two days ago, the killer attacked the president. He disguised himself as a bodyguard. Rook was the first to notice. He had already gotten close to the president. Rook managed to stop him, but in the nick of but just, just in the nick of time. Rook grabbed his, grabbed his left arm and twisted it. And then he fired one bullet, square into his left arm. What were you doing at the time, Mr. Knightley? I... I was... If I remember correctly, the first person I took out that day was you. Oops, was that a touchy subject? Shut up. So back then... Your neck injury has yet to heal, and you've already forgotten. No, not you. Not now. Since that day, I haven't been able to turn my head right. It sucks. To think that I would suffer an injury. Such a subject. Ethan Rook. You should. S you could say he was a most capable individual. Unlike this man here. What's so different about me and Rook? I believe you're about as different as a pawn and a queen. What? So you remembered Rook's name because he was highly capable. Correct. While disguised as a bodyguard, I happened to hear his name. There was no way I could forget that name. Rook is clearly superior. Rook is clearly dead. <laughs> Only a select few have been able to injure me. So this was the connection the killer was talking about. Security arrangements were changed. So that the killer would not be able to sneak in as a bodyguard again. Only the president's two most trusted subordinates would accompany him on the stage. In short, me and Rook. Interesting. It appears your positions were also changed. Th that's true! He's now on the right side. Because I can't turn my head to the right. My positions got changed to the president's left side. In other words, I was relocated to the right side of the stage. But in the picture, that's not... That's not what it was. Right? Like, in the picture... As you can see here... He's on, like, the original side of the stage, right? <laughs>
Okay, I guess that's all we have to get from here. And then the security monitors. Okay, there we, there we go. The internal and external views of the plane are being monitored by these monitors. What's this? Thing. Oh, that's the president's precious stuffed animal. I don't really get it, but it's some kind of keepsake. Don't touch it. Precious. That's unexpected. It kind of looks like there's been a break-in. Indeed. The area it stands on does look a bit unnatural. Hmm. Are those glass shards underneath the stuffed... Are those glass shards underneath the stuffed animal? It's a natural empty space. Perhaps. Is there another monitor here? Okay. Bulletproof vest and bullet that peach through. There we go. Two bullets were fired. We know that from the number of gunshots. One hit the steel samurai balloon. The other took Rook's life. But didn't a bullet also hit the president's bulletproof vest? Right. It doesn't match up with the number of shots. However, there is one way to solve this. One way? The bullet that stole Rook's life pierced through his body and then hit the vest. In other words, Rook and the president were hit by the same bullet. I see. That's right. It'd be dangerous if you hadn't worn that bulletproof vest. Mr. President, all right. Even while wearing a bulletproof vest, you can still get injured. Yeah, the bullet's impact can still fracture your bones. But don't worry, he's fine. The president's trained himself like no other. Maybe the, pre maybe the president didn't even need a bulletproof vest. I think that might be pushing it. I'd like to examine the bullet. There's a chance there may still be ballistic markings. Ballistic markings? What's that? Ballistic markings are always left on a bullet. Each gun leaves a different marking. So if we examine the ballistic markings, we'll know which gun the bullet was fired from. You could say they're like a gun's fingerprints. <laughs> the president was beefy enough to stop bullets. Change my mind. <laughs> I get it now. Let's investigate right away. I think that'd be difficult. The bullet was completely flattened when it hit the bulletproof vest. There's no way you could investigate the ballistic markings. What? I wanted to investigate them. Now then, I've grown weary of this investigation. Mm -hmm. Still no sign of detecti Detective Gumshoe. Mr. Prosecutor, have you uncovered the truth yet? No, not yet. I see. In that case, would you like to speak with someone who is involved in the incident? Someone involved in the incident? Y you mean... Is there not one more witness? Just behind those doors? Of course, the president himself. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, please do the honors and summon the witness here. There's no chance in hell I'm letting that happen. You think you can just summon the wit president like a witness in court? Huh. <laughs> Mr. President, I'm sure you are watching all this through your security cameras. Would you kindly grace us with your presence? That is, if you value your bodyguard's life. <laughs> I see. Mr. President, what sort of a man leaves another to die on his behalf? Mr. President! Stop it! Take it easy! Hey! Still nothing. Come on, Detective Gumshoe. Ah! What? The lights! My apologies, Mr. Prosecutor. But I wouldn't try anything if I were you. It seems I, una uh, am, I am unable to reach the president. Even with Mr. Knightley's life. Stop! Ugh. Ah! Kay! The killer! You! However, I have already seen the truth. Where? Where is he? Oh! I 
leave the rest in your hands, Mr. Prosecutor. Edge. Mr. Edgeworth. Detective Gumshoe. Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Look, he's not just laying down fucking A-posing anymore. <laughs> I guess they kind of actually used this this uh, sprite once in the previous game, too. When he was attacked in court. It was not really actually the same sprite because it's the younger one. Anyway, anyways, did, did I pass out? Mr. Redworth, thank goodness you're safe. Mr. Redworth, are you okay? Okay. What about you? I just woke up myself. My head's throbbing a bit, but it's no big deal. Dick to Gumshoe. What happened to the killer? They really upped the ante on, in the second game. <laughs> I know, right? Miss Swift came running out of the plane. She told us the killer made a run for it, but... We were too late, sir. We heard from the bodyguard. That the emergency lifeboat over there had been stolen. It's probably at the other side of the lake by now, sir. Didn't you seal off the park? The police were all called back to surround the plane. Right now, there's no one guarding the opposite shore. <clears throat> the means succeeded in giving us a slip. Sure seems that way, sir. Sir Prosecutor. Or is Knightley. It seems you also had a narrow escape. Yeah, it sucked, that punk. Come to think of it. You found this near where you fell, sir. This is the killer's calling card. Looks like a message from him. He always leaves this card next to his victim's body. Okay, nothing else about it. Cool. But you're not dead, sir. Perhaps this signi signifies something similar to a killing. Which reminds me, the last thing he said still bothers me. However, I have already seen the truth. I leave the rest in your hands, Mr. Prosecutor. Seen the truth? What did he mean? Yeah, it's safe now. Hmm? What was that? The president will be making his entrance now. The president. Okay, you 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 may be right. He may be beefy enough to stop bullets. <laughs> This man is the president of Shengfa, Di Jun Huang. You are? It is an honor to meet you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I am a prosecutor. I am Di Jun Huang. I have heard of your deeds. You saved my country from a great crisis. Is he referring to the Yatagata suitcase? I was simply solving a murder, nothing more. Such modesty. I have been observing your investigation. An astounding performance, despite allowing the killer to get away. Thank you very much. So he was watching through the security cameras. However, I regret that it ends here. What do you mean? Heed my words, foolish prosecutor. You should have already been informed by Nightly. This investigation will be handed over to the esteemed police force of Zheng Fa. Now that the killer is gone... They intend to take over the investigation. Hey, pal. What are you doing? What's with that attitude? It's because of the killer and Miss Redworth that... Enough, detective. Mr. President, I cannot agree to this. Why must this investigation be handed over to your country's police? Why, you say? Know your place, puny prosecutor. Must I explain my actions? Nay, I think not. You shall hand over all the evidence you found so far, and leave this plane at once. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, be a good boy and do as you're told. <laughs> I cannot resist any longer. Resist what? <laughs> the evidence handed over to Knightley. Oh no! 
Why? Why won't he allow me to investigate this case any further? Now then, would you kindly take your leave? Knightley, place the suspect under firm restraint. I'm on it, Mr. President. An attempt on my life, the murder of my subordinate. Such evil, such sin. I, I, I didn't kill nobody. I swear. That's a double negative. <laughs> Shut your trap, lady. Uh, uh. You dare question me? You dare stay in this world with deceit? Should we pardon this sin? Nay, absolutely not. It is most unforgivable. My reasons being... There's no mistake. The president is hiding something. If I turn back now, the truth will be lost forever. Mr. Edgeworth! Mr. Edgeworth! Is there nothing you can do? I remember. Countless times I faced this dilemma in the, in the courtroom. The lies of the witness, the rebuttals of the defense. I did not always have evidence to counter them. Nonetheless, I was still able to draw the truth out of them. Your body is a thin. That's right. My words alone are my weapons. Let's fucking go. Now then, let's analyze the situation. This place at once. This is a direct order from the president himself. He's not even listening. Any rebuttal I give, he cuts off. When he has that forceful attitude, I'll need to watch the, watch the situation carefully. My opponent is the president of Zheng Fa. I don't think he'll know and show any weakness easily. His words may be overbearing, but I need not be intimidated. If I observe his behavior closely, I should be able to read his emotions. First, I'll start by asking about his reasons for taking over the investigation. Now, let's begin. A good opening line will put me at, put me at an advantage. Okay, what do we need? Uh, ex let's do the first one. Please, allow me to confirm something about the investigation. Nay, I don't recall granting you permission to speak. I am the president of Zheng Fa. You shall not talk back to me. I'm not talking back. I am simply asking for confirmation. This investigation will be taken over by the police of your country. Is that correct? Exactly. That is all I will say. Restrain yourself from making any more unnecessary comments. Uh, Wait and see, apparently. <laughs> hmm. That's enough. Being on this plane is ten tantamount. To being on my country's soil. You cannot do as you, as you please. This plane. Is there something significant about this plane? I should remember this clue. Uh, explain your reasons. There we go. I'd like you to explain your reasons for depriving us of our right to investigate. Impudent fool. Hold your tongue. There is no reason. That should be enough for, of an explanation for you. Hmm. Perhaps that clue may be useful here. Is it connected to this place? Gathering from what you've said so far, does that forceful attitude of yours have some connection to this place? Hmm, <laughs> you insolent. Earlier, you said that being on this plane is like being on your country's soil. Listen, we already had to deal with extraterritorial... Territor ter yes, territorial, like, rights or whatever. We already had to deal with that and we fucking beat that guy so fucking hard. From those, those words, I was able to deduce the answer. Namely, that is, you wish to claim extraterritorial rights inside this plane. Am I correct? <laughs> That's enough. I shall brook no insolence. You seem unsettled. Yes. Your words are forceful, but I cannot overlook them. The moment I mentioned Eric's extraterritorial rights, your face grew pale. In light of your brazen courage, I shall grant you an answer. 
That's right, I am claiming extraterritorial rights inside this plane. However, what does that change? You are still powerless, and there is nothing you can do about it. I see. Under in international law, the plane would be considered part of Zheng Fa. How convenient. Conven convenient? Convenient. Hmm. If he wishes to stake this claim, then I shall question its validity. The next move will decide the outcome. It may be persistent, but there is a hole in its logic. Let me break it wide open. Aren't you being too forceful? Permit me to say this. Don't you feel that your actions are too forceful? Who asked for your opinion? All you need to do is obey. Forceful is the wrong word. It, it, it is authority. Leadership. So you arrested Miss Swift because you felt you had the authority to do so. Yes, that girl is a criminal. There is no room for dispute. The shooting took place outside the plane. Only she could, she could have done it. That's it. The shooting occurred outside the plane. This could be a very important clue. Is your claim valid? I challenge the validity of your claim to extraterritorial rights. Do you truly understand what it is you're saying? Of course, and I stand by it. You dare doubt my words. You have no shame. Such irredeemable ignorance. It troubles me greatly. There is no need to worry. I do not need to be saved. It is Miss Swift whom I wish to save from these false charges that you have laid against her. I admire her tenacity. However, your wish is unattainable. The extraterritorial... The extraterritoriality laws are unshakable. This plane is Zheng Fa territory. Hmm. It's time to use that clue. Indeed, I do not question your extraterritorial rights inside this plane. However, you just claim that the shooting took place outside the plane. Yes, if it didn't happen inside the plane, extraterritorial laws do not apply. Your claim has fallen apart. Miss Swift's arrest is invalid. <laughs> Impossible. To be bested by a mere prosecutor. I am the president! Checkmate, Mr. President. I was missing the logic chest from the previous game. I was like, oh, damn it, is it only in the second game? Which is also why I wanted to get through the first game so fast. Mr. President, will you allow us to continue with our, with our investigation? Mm -hmm. I... Yield. I will allow it. My heart is generous. My heart is tolerant and merciful. Therefore, as such... Certainly. Thus we shall. It is our duty. For a most noble cause. Gentlemen, now is the time. I th This guy sure likes beating around the bush. Knightley, we have received the President's permission. Could return our evidence. Here. You did it, Miss Regworth. Indeed. Now we can resume the investigation. Heh. <laughs> it's funny how happy you are just because I gave you your precious pieces back. Now let's see how you used them. How well you used them. Hmm. Pay attention then. Here is my next move. Mr. President, may I make one more request of you? Hmm? Would you please testify about the moment of the incident? Testify. Hey, hey, hold on a sec. That's your next move? Isn't that the sort of thing you'd leave to the courts? Naturally, it's a courtroom procedure. However, I'd still like to hear what he has to say. If he refuses to cooperate with the investigation, he will have to give a clear reason. That's... Is there something wrong? Knightley, stand down. I shall grant the Honorable Prosecutor's request. I thank you for your cooperation. Now, heed my words. 
Oh my god, this chapter is so long. Oh, it just keeps going. Oh. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Where was I when the incident occurred? Ah, uh, yes, the stage. Then, Brooke and Knightley suddenly appeared and stood in front of me. After that, I heard a gunshot and a red balloon bursting. And so, those two attempted to escort me into the plane. Then, the second gunshot. The bullet pierced through Rook's body and struck my bulletproof vest. Struck my bulletproof vest, he says as he flexes his muscles. Okay. Sure. If that's the case, then the president's a victim too, right? It was an assassination attempt. Mr. Rook just happened to get caught up in it. Caught up in it, unfortunately. But isn't it strange? Why would the victim want to interrupt the investigation? Of course, if this becomes public, it would cause problems. I see. There's still some dark secret behind... Deep dark secret behind this case, right? His muscles are his bulletproof vests. <laughs> Certainly, the president, and perhaps slightly too, know of the secret. Without fail, I shall reveal it for all to see. Gotta get to the third statement. After that. And then steal Samurai Balloon. A red balloon burst. I'm afraid that's not the case. What? Please have a look at this piece of evidence. Can you see what has burst? <laughs> this is... What exactly? Hmm. It's the Steel Samurai. Warrior of Neo Old Tokyo. You do well to remember it. If you wish to win the support of this nation's people... And don't forget the rival show, the Jam and Ninja. The balloon that was ruptured by the bullet was no ordinary red balloon. It was a steel samurai balloon. But according to the plans, there should have been two red balloons. It says so right here in the security plan. It certainly looks like there are only two round balloons drawn here. Knightley, what is the meaning of this? Explain at once. Yes, sir. That steel samurai balloon was a last-minute replacement. Replacement? That's what we were told. Seems that information didn't make it to the president. We ran into a little trouble during setup last night. One of the balloons that we have prepared burst. So you scrambled to find a replacement? Exactly. We just happened to run into a guy manning a stand in the park. He said he'd lend us a steel samurai balloon. Hmm, I, gee, I wonder who that was. He was kind of a poser. A stand, a steel samurai balloon, and a poser. We pumped air into its red samurai pants to create a makeshift balloon. So the steel samurai balloon looked just like an ordinary red balloon. Is that what you mean? Knightley, why was I not informed of this? Sir, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't think it was important enough to report. Couldn't you tell just by looking at it? Hmm. I did not notice it. So he mistook the steel samurai's pants for an ordinary balloon. Was there a reason why you made that mistake? Ooh! Ooh. What now? A moment, please. I just remembered now. I could not see the balloon very well. You couldn't see it. Exactly. At the time, the wind was strong. The flags on the stage were fluttering wildly, and they obstructed my view. The flags. Did you not see the flags that were set up on both sides of the stage? Due to the strong wind, they were waving about, and just like this. Some strong wind was blowing at the time of the incident. The flags were fluttering wildly. Was there a problem with that? There is a problem, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> President Huang, you have my gratitude. Your testimony has helped uncover a new contradiction. A contradiction, you say? Yes, one that turns the very foundation of this case on its head. During my investigation, there was no wind at the crime scene, so the flags remained still. However, 
the flags were actually fluttering in the strong wind. This completely changes the meaning of that piece of evidence. Wait, hold on, where are they going? Let me check her photos, or does she not? Uh, she doesn't have those on. Of course she doesn't. Well, actually, here we go. Interesting. Which evidence contradicts the state of the crime scene? Um, it is... The bullet's trajectory. Mm. The gunshot rang out during the president's speech. The bullet struck the balloon. And also pierced through the national flag. I had previously deduced the bullet's trajectory po using these facts. The assassin fired the bullet from the left side of the, of the audience area. However, if the flags were fluttering about like so, my reasoning changes. Ah! Since the flag's position has changed. Correct. The bullet's trajectory must also change. You portrays the traje trajectory of the bullet. We can tell who fired the shot. Eh? But, Mr. Ranchworth, that person is... Indeed. I still don't understand why. However, it can be none other than him. You're tracing the bullet's path. Who was the person who fired the gun? Knightley. The person who shot the bull bull balloon was none other than you, Horace Knightley. What? Connect the bullet holes in the balloon and the flag, and the line points to you. That guy is one of the president's bodyguards. Why would he have shot the steel steel samurai balloon, sir? Preposterous. I agree with the detective. There is no reason. Are you saying Knightley, who has saved my life on numerous occasions, is an assassin? Mr. Good Redgeworth, I've had it up to here with you. Your job is to protect the president. Knightley, control yourself. Sorry, sir. Prosecutor, indeed, the wind was strong during my speech. However, the wind's strength can change very quickly. Evidence! Show us evidence that the flag was flying at the moment of the gunshot. Ah! I already found it! The gunshot occurred the moment the president raised his fist to the sky. The evidence that shows this moment is... Is this... The evidence is in this photo. Interesting. And where in this photo exactly? Proof that the flag was flying in this photo is right here. I don't know, perhaps a flag flying in the photo? But you see, the fluttering flag can be seen in this photo. No! There is no mistaking that the flags were flying at the moment of the incident. So then, it really was that guy who shot the balloon. Tell me Mr. Knightley is the assassin. Of course Knightley is, not the assassin. Of course Knightley is, not the assassin. The only thing he shot was a balloon. A balloon on the opposite side of the pre president. He wasn't aiming at the president. Then, was it necessary for me to do the thing like that? Depending on your answer, I might take aim at your pretty little head. Why was it necessary? I presume the reason is connected to the one thing that's felt out of place. The one who shot the balloon was the president's bodyguard, Knightley. That fact will change the entire viewpoint of this case. Okay, uh, Knightley shot the balloon. Huh. <laughs> Wait, yeah. That's... That's strange. He couldn't turn his head to the right. Right? Well, technically he turned it to the left, but yeah. Why was Knightley's position changed? 
I can't turn my head to the right. My position got changed to the president's left side. In other words, I was relocated to the right side of the stage. Was that really the only reason? If the plans had not changed, and Knightley remained on the left side of the stage... Oh, so that was the original one. Okay, never mind. I'm dumb. Knightley can't turn his head to the right. Would he have been able to aim at the balloon on the left side of the stage? Perhaps. The security plans were altered so that Knightley could shoot the balloon. If that's the case... What's this? The details of the security plans were changed. Yeah, that's right. I was asked. It was changed yesterday. President's orders. Wait, hold on. Wait, that says March 19th, and this says... March 24th. Okay, so that's the new one. This is the old one. I see. Security plans were changed on, on the president's orders. Assassination attempt and change in security plans. Interesting. In other words, the president knew of the balloon being shot. He knew about the attempt on his own life. If you think about it that way, everything that's been out of place is beginning to add up. Why was the assassin able to get a gun past such tight security? Why was the assassin wearing a conspicuous red hood? Why did they use a laser sight that would so easily reveal their location. Why was the president so calm after being shot? This was the truth the president and his subordinates tried to conceal. There can be only one reason why Knightley fired the run- the run- the gun. The entire assassination was set up. Huh? Huh? How dare you? Do you seriously understand what you're implying with this? Of course I understand. In fact, now I understand everything. Mr. President, you wish to take the investigation rights from me. That was all so you could conceal the real truth. How dare you mock me with those... With these spurious allegations. Mock you? That was not my intention. I simply used logic to uncover the truth. That is all. Knightley fired the first shot in order to rupture the balloon. Hearing the gunshot and the sound of the balloon bursting, the audience began to panic. This was followed by one more shot. Wait, one more shot? Yes, Knightley turned towards the balloon and pulled the trigger a second time. The second gunshot was also fired by Knightley, to create the illusion of the second shot hitting the president. So what about the bullet that hit the president's bulletproof vest? What if that bulletproof vest had been prepared in advance? No worries! Don't have to worry about it at all. You just being here means a lot. I get- I, I know the feeling very well. Trust me. <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. President? Afraid of facing a little bullet? That's not true. I was definitely shot. We examined the bullet in your vest. It would answer the question for us. Will we find Rook's blood on that bullet? But the person in the red hood who shot me is in that photo. Aren't you listening, Mr. President? From the bullet's trajectory, the one who fired the shot must have been Knightley. Then, Nicole. She too was part of the President's plan. She was to bear the blame and become the false assassin. The red hooded figure. Exactly. I don't know how much of the plan Miss Swift knew beforehand. However, she didn't fire the gun. All she did was aim the laser pointer at the president's head. Th th that's right! I. Once the crowd began to panic, you would turn your parka inside out. And thus, the red hooded figure vanished. After that, you discarded the gun and security plan in the trash. And the illusion of the assassin vanishing like a ghost was complete. But with the assassin gone, the case would go unsolved, pal. Yes, that was what he hoped for. 
That's why he wouldn't let Mr. Edgeworth investigate the case. Exactly. All of this was an asinine publici publicity stunt from a lying president. But you... 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 You are wrong. I... He revealed his true form. The assassination is a lie, isn't it? The chief, why did he have to pick you? This... should not have happened. Alright. Well played, Mr. Prosecutor. N Nightly! I am speaking with the president now. Thank you very much. You're a chess player. You know knights always strive to protect their king. Okay, we fucking get it already. So shut up now. Are, are you threatening me, Mr. Knightley? Huh? What's with this guy? Oops, sorry. I went over the top there. But on to business. That's my first move. I want to ask you a question. You say I fired a gun on the stage, right? When I should have been caught, the entire audience was watching me. I see. Now it's my move. You use a certain object to prevent the spectators from seeing you. A certain object? What did Knightley use to prevent the audience from seeing him? Well, it's the uh, shield thing, right? The Atache case. Exactly. I'd like you to have a look at this photo Kate took. Your right hand is completely hidden by the case. This photo captures the exact moment you secretly fire the gun. You use the Atache case as a screen. Objection. You seem to enjoy making up convenient stories, Mr. Prosecutor. But you've missed something. What have I missed? Everything you said is just a hypothesis, a theory. God, can people just be like, no, that's just a hypothesis. That's just the theory, a game theory. Like, shut up. <laughs> I don't care. Flags flapping in the wind, using the case as a screen. The security plans were modified because I can't move my neck. You got no decisive evidence. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great if you had the bullet that hit the balloon. Bal balloon. <laughs> what? Why does that sound so weird to me? Am I saying it correctly? It's a balloon. Yeah. Why? Do, oh, why? God. Why am I so tired today? This doesn't make sense. Well, it's not the same as a theory, technically. I know, but, but they always use this fucking excuse. Listen, <laughs> you can't give me yet because it's just the hypothesis. You don't have decisive evidence. Like, okay. Sure. I'll give you your decisive evidence. You could examine it and see if the ballistic markings match my gun. But that bullet's probably at the bottom of the lake. Finding it would be real tough though. Tough, right? I hate to admit it. But it's as he says. There's no decisive evidence. If there's no proof, then the only thing you can do is shut up. So do so. Miss Swift. Ah, uh, um... That's it. If she speaks, we could hear a new testimony. Hey, lady. You got something to say? Uh, uh, never mind. There we go. I thought so. Nicole! Don't be afraid. The truth will escape if you let that man intimidate you. You're a reporter. A journalist, are you not? I... I... I will not remain silent! You better consider your position. Use your head before saying something you'll regret. I, I forgot the number one rule of journalism. Journalists must not tell lies. You can't call it a scoop if it ain't the truth. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm sorry. I've been hiding this the whole time. This is... I used this laser pointer to aim at the president. That's all I did. I never fired the gun. 
Stupid woman! If you testify, you'll be admitting that you're, you're an accomplice. I, I don't care. I'm gonna tell him everything. Three days ago, I was covering an event at the Zhengfa Embassy. And then some of the president's men called me over. They said if I cooperated, I'd get an exclusive interview with the president. And the gun in the trash. I really don't know. All I was told was to come wearing a red hood and to aim the laser pointer. I never thought it would snowball into all of this. I'm really, truly sorry. Nicole, thank you. That was a testimony worthy of the courtroom. This is sufficient testimony to ver verify the fake ass assassination plot. Damn you. The lot of you. You're all a bunch of mindless morons. It's a shame. If only you had been able to usurp the investigation as planned. You would have been able to silence this young lady. Blast! So tomorrow's headlines now read. Fake assassination plan exposed. Becomes a murder. Right? Can't believe that you'd do something this horrible, pal. I, I admit nothing. The president. Nightly. That, that's enough. We have no choice but to admit it. So, Mr. President, you admit that you planned a fake assassination. Yes, I admit it. I'm sorry. But why? Why did you have to do this? My approval ratings in Shengfa have fallen. I wanted to appeal to them as a strong president who survived an assassination. But in the end, it was just a lie. A stupid lie. And the bullet in the bulletproof vest. Prepared earlier. It was not fired today. But what about Mr. The Killer? It seems our plan was leaked. Someone wanted to make this fake assassination real. That's why the killer wore the red raincoat. He would impersonate the culprit from the plan. In order to approach the president. But there's still one thing I don't understand. What's that? Why did Rook die? His death was not a part of this charade. And yet, it really happened. Yes, why was his life taken? Ethan was an outstanding bodyguard. Even though he wasn't from my country, he had my utmost trust. I wouldn't think that having the trust of a cowardly president meant that much, honestly. Hey, that's the same sort of bond between me and Miss Redworth, pal. I wouldn't put it that way. Did Rook know of your plan? Not the exact details. I asked him to cooperate, and he refused. You should have listened to this advice. Yes, indeed. I would have done all. I wouldn't have done all this if I had known. You're being too dramatic. What? Rook was just one piece of the president's defense. Nightly. That's. And it's not as if you cooperated with your plan. I did. He ran away, taking whatever dignity he had left with him. Good riddance. I know you're a valuable bodyguard, but still. I don't have time for this, sir. I'm the team leader now. There's going to be a lot of changes now that the chicken's gone. After all, adaptation is the most important principle in chess. I knew you always wanted to be, to be the team leader, but, but isn't this a bit Im imprudent? <laughs> I will orchestrate even more perfect plans just like this one. You definitely have ambition. But wasn't your perfect plan today a failure? If it weren't for you and that idiot Rook, it would have been perfect. What did Rook do? If he hadn't died, the killer wouldn't have threatened me. And you would have never set foot in this plane. Nightly, how can you say such a thing? Yeah, he died trying to save you, Mr. President. Maybe he fulfilled his long lifelong ambition died protecting the president. Huh? But the assassination was fake, right? Of course it was, but you need to listen closer, little girl. Remember the guy who wanted to make the fake assassination real? There were two gunshots at the time of the incident. The first was, as you said, I shot the balloon. But 
The second one wasn't me. So who fired the second shot? The real assassin. But it wasn't the killer. He intended to attack the president with a knife, not a gun. The lucky winner was the hidden queen. Or should I say, the lady in the coat over there. Eh? You're accusing Nicole, pal. I, I know assassin. Really? I don't believe you. The gun that was left in the trash. That was yours, right? I shot the balloon and entered the plane with Rook and the president. Rook waited in the cabin while I led the president into the security room. When I came out, Rook was already on the ground. The bullet that Lady fired must have hit him while we escorted the president to the plane. The shot was fired from the gun you found in the trash. So you're saying you don't know exactly when the victim was shot. The knight's job isn't to protect the Rook, it's to protect the king. Huh. What he's trying to say is that his job was to protect the president only. It's over if you lose the king, checkmate. That's the first rule of chess. If you let your pieces get taken right in, right in front of you, you're not likely to win. But I did win. Look, the president's safe. Hmm. Don't claim victory when the game was has only just begun. Okay, uh, fifth statement. Okay. The shot was fired from the, the gun you found in the trash. Okay. Assassin's revolver. Well, that's right. There was no bullets in it. Or, there were bullets in it, but they, it hadn't been fired. So you shot the balloon and Mrs. Miss Swift sh shot Rook. Is that really true? I can't see it any other way. The gun we discovered in the trash was fired twice. Oh, it was! Never mind, I'm dumb. The number of gunshots don't add up. Why don't the gunshots add up? It's simple. This gun is fake evidence, left behind by the real criminal. Fake evidence? Think about it. The criminal planted this for a reason. By finding the gun, we'd assume that the assassin was in the audience in order to make us believe that the gun was used by the assassin. The gun needed to appear as if it had been fired twice. Get it! Because two shots were fired during the incident. However, we proved that the bullet that hit the balloon did not come from this gun. Therefore, I have my doubts as to whether this gun also took Rook's life. <laughs> Here he comes. You're packing some serious heat. Enough with the song and dance. You've come this far. Go ahead and say it. I won't just say it, I'll prove it. The one who really shot Rook is. Oh boy. Horace Knightley, you murdered Rook. Oh my god, pardon me. You murdered Rook. Heh, <laughs> you finally said it. Knightley, you couldn't have. Killer wasn't the only one who took advantage of the fake assassination plot. You intended to murder Rook and claim he was a victim of the assassination. Once the president had entered the security room and the door to the plane was closed, only the victim and Knightley would have been left in this room. And at that moment, you fired a third bullet directly at Rook. Third bullet. Ha! <laughs> Only two gunshots were heard. The numbers don't match up. And the plane's walls are soundproof. If the doors if the door was closed, the gunshot would not have been heard outside. But wasn't the president in the next room? It's true. The president may have heard the gunshot. Mr. President, did you hear a gunshot? I I didn't hear any gunshots. But weren't you watching this room through the security cameras? Cameras in this room aren't usually turned on. I turned on the power after I entered the security room. So you didn't turn on the power immediately after entering the room? No, actually. I... I... What is it? He's not being clear. Mr. President, focus. This is vital. I... I... I was... That is... I... Please! 
I was hiding under the bed, covering my ears. What? But you knew the assassination was fake. It doesn't matter. I simply hate the sound of guns. That terrifying sound. I just can't help it. That definitely ain't going in my article. Ahem. <laughs> Nightly, you saw the president hiding under the bed. Furthermore, you could tell if the security cameras had been turned on by looking at the monitors. In that moment, when the president couldn't, wouldn't hear the gunshot or see the room, you had a chance to fire a third bullet at Rook. Knightly, did you really? You deceived me? You really think I killed that moron? That's cold, Mr. President. Have a little faith in me, the bodyguard who's risking his life to protect you. I, I want to believe you, I really do, but... I just don't get it. Why are you suspecting me alone? There's still the possibility that she's the killer. This gun is not the murder weapon. The number of missing bullets make that clear. Maybe it was one short to begin with. Ever think of that? What? Maybe it already fired a shot yesterday, or the day before. And the second shot was fired today. The one that hit Rook. Well, isn't that just a perfect excuse? Excuse? The possibility exists. You can't deny that. He's right. I can't deny it completely. God, there's still more! Oh, there's still so much more! We need decisive evidence. Evidence so decisive that it makes my heart stop and my logic crumble. You got something like that? <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, can't you do anything? At this rate, Nicole will... Mr. Prosecutor, it's true, I did an awful thing for a scoop, but I never killed nobody. I, wouldn't, I could never do a thing like that. Decisive evidence. If I could prove the murder weapon was Knightley's gun. Proof it was his gun. It'd be great if you had the bullet that hit the balloon. Then you could examine it and see if the ballistic marking markings matched my gun. If we can't find the bullet that took Rook's life. We can determine which gun fired the shot from the ballistic markings. If you got no evidence, then we're done talking. Hold it! What? You don't seriously have decisive evidence. Hmm. Naturally. It's a big joke. Well, come on now. Show us. What is this so-called evidence? The bullet that took Rook's life. That's the decisive evidence I need. This evidence. Do I have it? I don't have it. I don't have it. Okay, okay, it's game over, man. However, it is somewhere in this room. What? The bullet that killed Rook pierced through his body. So where did the bullet go? Earlier ex you explained it like this. The bullet that took Rook's life pierced through his body and then hit the vest. That's right. It'd be dangerous if he hadn't worn that bulletproof vest. However, now that the fake assassination plan had come to light, has come to light, we know that the bullet in the bulletproof vest was prepared earlier. So then, where did the bullet go? Interesting. Very interesting. Do you have the answer? Do I have evidence that shows the location of the bullet that killed Mr. Rook? I guess I fucking do. Monitors? In this room, there is one thing that's clearly missing. Something missing? You sure it's not your brain? I'd like you to, t like you to look at the rack of security monitors. Ah! It seems you've noticed, Mr. President. Among these images of the plane's surroundings, only the feed from the right side of the plane is absent. That's what's missing. Single monitor. Uh -huh. Mr. President, there was originally a monitor here, wasn't there? Th 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 that's right. Why is there a stuffed toy now? That must have been put there to hide the empty space. 
where the monitor used to be. Why is the monitor missing, and where did it go? Why? Undoubtedly. Because it was hit by the bullets. In order to make us think that the bullet really hit the bulletproof vest, it would be a problem if another bullet hole was discovered. So then, where did the monitor go? Where? It should be hidden somewhere inside this plane. There hasn't been a chance to dispose of it outside, outside since it was shot. Detective Gumshoe, search this plane! <laughs> Where did it come from, Cat Nigel? We get it. <laughs> Roger that, sir. President Huang, you said extraterritorial laws apply to this plane. I, I will allow it. There is no problem. I just want to know the truth of Rook's death. Damn it! Think this is a joke? You always like this. Rook this, rook that. Detective, we have his approval. Go ahead. Mr. Redworth, I found it, sir. Good work, Detective. Now let's extract the bullet from the monitor. Hmm, if I do this here, and then do that, I got it. Well, it's definitely stained with blood. I'm certain this is the bullet that killed Rook. And this is the bullet that will crush your arguments. The decisive evidence that blows a hole in your logic. If the ballistic markings on this bullet do not match the gun found in the audience area, Miss Swift will be cleared of suspicion. What's wrong? Ca got your thong tongue? God. Detective. We need to examine the ballistic markings. Send the gun and bullet to forensics. Roger, we should be able to find clear markings on this bullet, sir. Now then, let's listen to the forensic report. Reporting! First, the blood on this bullet matches the victim's blood. So this bullet really did take Rook's life. Also, Horace Knightley's fingerprints were found on this gun. Knightley's fingerprints probably came from when he took all our evidence. The real issue is the ballistic markings. If the markings don't match, Miss Swift will be cleared of suspicion. It does, it's like... <laughs> and the bullets, bullets, ballistic markings match, match this gun. What? They match? What? No way! There's no mistake, the bullet was fired from this gun. What? <laughs> huh, that's strange. Looks like I was right after all. Naturally. Did you really think you had me cornered? Oh, you bastard. You mis misread the board. The one who's been cornered. Is you! Oh my god, we have two testimonies to go through s still. <laughs> the ballistic markings smashed the gun, there can be no doubt. The bullet that killed Druk was fired from the gun you found in the audience area. Who could have used the gun? Not me, because I was on stage. But what about that lady reporter in the audience? All the evidence points to that young lady as the assassin who killed Druk. It's your move, Mr. Prosecutor. Where did you find this gun again? And which gun fired the bullet? At least, we know. It ain't me. Mm -hmm. This can't be happening. The President and I have admitted to the fake assassination plot. Now it's your turn to admit who the real criminal is. It doesn't make Nicole a criminal. Don't get riled up, Kay. Let's have him say it first. After he's done, he it won't be too late to begin our counterattack. Alright, Mr. Edgeworth. If the ballistic marking smashed the gun, there can be no doubt. Okay, cool. Press first. No, that's... Didn't you say it earlier? This is the decisive evidence. Ugh. Well... 
How does it feel to have a hole blown, blown through your reasoning? The ballistic markings match the gun we found, so... Does that mean Nicole really was a shooter? I'd like to believe otherwise. But he's got the decisive evidence on his side, sir. Hmm, indeed. How should I proceed? If Miss Swift isn't the killer, then the ballistic markings should not match. Thoughts, Kay? Hmm, if the evidence is impossible... Then maybe we should doubt the evidence itself, right? Doubt the evidence? Nicole's definitely not a criminal. So if the evidence says that she's a criminal, there must be something wrong with it. You seem awfully sure of yourself. The Great Thief's intuition. Intuition? Still, it's quite possible. Above all, Miss Swift doesn't seem like the type of person to tell such elaborate lies. Hmm, in court, the evidence is everything, and yet, here I am doubting it. Which evidence do I doubt? The gun. If anything's sus suspect here, it can only be the gun. The bullet was discovered just a moment ago. It couldn't have been tampered with yet. Did Knightley have a chance to tamper with the gun? She'll hand over all the evidence you've collected so far and leave this plane at once. Why am I hungry? I literally ate right before this. Mr. Prosecutor, be a good boy and do as you're told. Mm -hmm. I cannot persist any longer. That's it. We could have tampered with the gun at that time. There's no doubt that this gun is a real murder weapon. In that case, the owner of this gun is... Or is Knightley? He must have switched the guns. Without a doubt, this is Knightley's own gun. In the second statement. Okay, the bullet that killed Rook. Okay, it's that one. Knightley, you fiend! You switched the guns! The gun that matched the ballistic markings was yours all along. Heh. <laughs> Interesting choice of move you made there. The switch occurred at the time you seized the evidence. When we were arguing with the president over the investigation rights. You detached the laser sight from the gun found in the audience area. And attached it to your gun. Then, when you returned the evidence, you gave me your own gun. <laughs> Did I do that? So what you're saying is that I knew you'd want to examine the ballistic markings. Indeed. Saying one move ahead of your opponent. Isn't that the fundamental rule of chess? Gotta just fucking drop it and fucking get it right in the face. <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way, Mr. Prosecutor. But you're giving me too much credit. Besides... Can you even prove I pulled the old switcheroo with the guns? So the gun happened to be the same model as mine. Pure coincidence. But take a closer look. Only one of them has a laser pointer attached to it. Check the number of bullets left in the chamber. Only two shots fired, see? There's no evidence that I switched the guns, right? Giving you too much credit. That that hardly sounds like something you'd say. Guess I'm just more modest than you. Well, except when I'm in front of a chessboard. Hmm. Well, we're not in front of a chessboard. That's too bad. Don't use that as an excuse later. I didn't lose the game. I just couldn't find enough evidence. You're the one who should have an excuse ready. You didn't beat me at chess. You only found the evidence. Fourth statement. Okay, I see. There's no evidence, and I switched again. Percent nightly revolver. Not evidence. Is this? You call that evidence? Prosecutor Edgeworth, you're trying too hard. Certain traces were left on this gun. Traces that prove this gun belongs to you. Show it to me. What kind of piece you got? A 
A rook? A bishop? It better not be a pawn. The traces Knightley left on this gun are fingerprints. You left your fingerprints on this gun. Fingerprints. Ha. Huh. That should be expected. I handled the gun earlier when I seized your evidence. Of course my fingerprints are on it. Well, what if the fingerprints are in a place they should not be? What? That's not possible. Allow me to show you. There is one place where your fingerprints should not be. This piece of evidence will deal the final blow to your king. This would be the grip. I've held the grip of several guns in the past, but it's never been a pleasant feeling. Okay, that's not that. Here, just take the gumshoe. Please have a look at this cylinder. Two shots were two shots were fired, sir. But where would the fingerprints be? On the bullets. You made the switch when you seized the evidence earlier. However, if all you did was switch the guns, you would have been found out right away. That's because the number of bullets fired by the two guns are different. The gun found in the audience area had fired two shots, sir. Then, what about Mr. Knightley's gun? He fired two shots at the balloon when he was on the stage. And later, one shot to kill Rook. Three shots in total. Not counting the number of shots he fired since then. And after each of those times, you would reload the bullets. Tell us, Knightley. Were you wearing gloves when you when doing that? <laughs> Officer, in your report earlier, where were Knightley's fingerprints found on the gun? Sir, the prints weren't just found on the outside of the gun. They were also found on the bullets as well. If all you did was handle the evidence, why would your fingerprints be on the bullets? Uh, that's... With this, it has been proven that you switched the guns. The gun which fired the bullet took the victim's life. It belongs to you, Horace Knightley. You're the one who stole Rook's life. You're the true assassin. I... I... I'm... I'm... Checkmate. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Sorry, there's only one thing I can think of. Okay. There's only one thing I can think of when I hear... Mm. I should have been made the leader. Me. Rook, a piece of scum. If it hadn't been for him. I would have had complete control over everybody. My assassination plan. It was perfect. My plan was perfect. Obviously not. Detective Gumshoe. If you please. Roger that, sir. Edgeworth! This game isn't over yet, you hear me? I... I... That's enough. The rest of this game will continue in the courtroom. Damn it. Damn. You. You have my gratitude. You exposed a murderer amongst my bodyguards, and for that, I am truly in your debt. As soon as he stepped outside the plane, he reverted back to his king-like persona. Some time ago, when I proposed the fake ass assassination plan. You want me, not Rook? Rook declined, so I am asking you. What do you say? Right, let's do this. I'll come up with a perfect plan. I can even use that guy as a chess piece. 
When Knightley said that, his eyes were overflowing with hatred towards Rook. Frankly, I was quite anxious about asking Knightley instead of Rook. Now that I recall those events, he probably sensed the anxiety in my count countenance. Perhaps that is what gave him the imp imp impetus, impetus for murder. Sir President, if you had not orchestrated that fake plan, this would not have happened. That is your sin. A sin that won't disappear. Yes, you are absolutely correct. You have my sincerest apologies. I too must bear some responsibility for this. Even so, I am most grateful to you. I thank you for solving the mystery of Rook's death. I am scheduled to stay in this country for a little longer. But if, o if, but if any of you ever wish to visit the Republic of Zhengfa, you will always be welcome. Oh lordy! Thank you, thank you, thank you! So happy for you, Nicole. You were set up as a suspect for the murder. Still, your involvement with the fake assassination plan remains a fact. You will have to submit a police question to some police questioning later. You should know that there is still a possibility you may be charged with some crime. Yeah, I know. Sorry about all this. I understand you want to catch a scoop, but there's a line that should not be crossed. I hear you. I promise to reflect on this. We did it, Mr. Edgeworth. That was awesome! Prosecutor Edgeworth solves presidential assassination attempt. It's gonna be big news. M big news? M Mr. Prosecutor, would you mind telling us how you feel about solving this case? That was certainly a quick change of attitude. No comment. No, don't be so ornery. The reason is because this case is not over yet. Huh? Not over? What do you mean, sir? What shows that this case is not over yet? Huh? What shows that this case is not over yet? Uh, of course. The calling card. The killer's card? The killer still hasn't carried out his request. You mean killing the president? I hope this doesn't turn into a larger incident. An assassination attempt on the president of Zheng Fa. News of this incident spread across the entire country. The mass media also hounded me as I began to prepare for the trial of Horace Knightley. Everyone had seen the news, and everyone was talking about it. However, amidst the commotion, nobody noticed that the game had only just begun. That's the first case. My god, that took three hours! That was so long! Oh my god. No, I meant to save. It's fine. Oh. Girl, what they do to you? <laughs> she looks like a tease. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I think I have to go and get something to eat real fast. It's, which is kind of funny because I literally ate just before this. Yes! Oh my god. So, uh, I'm just gonna... Hmm, should I, I should put on, like, something. What to put on? There isn't really anything I put, can put on. I guess, like, music? I don't really want to, like... Well, actually, there is one thing I can show you, I guess. The hair? I mean, it, I, I'm sure it's possible. You just need, like, a lot of uh, hairspray and, uh, yeah. But I'm sure it's possible. Hold on, wait. Uh... Okay. Oh, where is it? She buys the same brand as Phoenix. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Uh, if we go to desktop, here we go. 
this this is like the only thing that I can think of when I like think of when I when I hear mm, hold on where is it should be is it near the end yes I would just let this play for you I guess and uh, I'll go make some food meanwhile so enjoy this Markiplier content. <laughs> 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 We need a mouse, we need a mouse. <laughs> oh, go with there, yeah, whichever one. Whichever one. Wait. <laughs> we a bird? Mmm. Well you wanna mess with me? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't. Th I think we're actually weaker than we were before. I think we are too. We have no <laughs> armor. <laughs> oh god. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, he's happy. But we still have the same skin. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting because this is red. We need to main again. That's no, no, one. this is good. Mm -hmm. How are we gonna kill? Oh god! <laughs> oh, they're big sausages. <laughs> Mm. We can't keep this. Yes, we can. How are we yes, we, can. we got two weapons. No, we, I don't care. I oh. wanted to do it. Oh my mm. god! <laughs> Run, just walk. The big obelisk. Mm. <laughs> That's so horrifying. Mm. Is anybody oh afraid of god. me? Oh god! <laughs> There's your thumbnail! Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what we're running into. I don't either. <laughs> so majestic. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna end that episode there. Oh my Thank god. you all so much for watching. We're actually losing daylight, so that's why we're getting darker here. Oh. This is a thing of beauty. I don't know what Wade's bitching about over there, but I think it's beautiful. So thank you everybody so much for watching. Uh, we may not have time to record another episode, which may mean that Spore will be over for a while. We'll see how we stand. And as always, we will see you in the next video. War and everyone died. Except for the Americans, of course. Americans came out and they were like, Sup, nerds? Nice belts on your hat. We were all much care for you. Mm, I don't think we're going to get along. Oh no, we're starving. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry. That was a bit longer than I wanted it to be, but that's fine. <clears throat> but yeah, basically, uh, also, henna is like what you what you use for like those close hand tattoos, you know? Well, not tattoos exactly, but, you know, the paint you use on your hands. I was busy making food, so I could only run. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, this took so much longer than I expected it to. Oh my god. Hmm.
Oh, nice. That sounds very nice. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna turn on some music, I guess. I found out recently, too. We were not the only one. Mm. I'm sure it's great. It's just that I, I kind of like my hair to be of the unnatural color. <laughs> Yeah, it is, it is a dye, so... Technically, you can, yeah. Hmm. It's fascinating how hungry I get from streaming. <laughs> like, honestly? Pretty much everything is less damaging than normal hair dye. like um patch testing like test a small patch of your hair first and like if you're if you're fine after like however long it says to like keep it in there you're good to go also if you bleach your hair uh it is normal for it to sting but if it hurts like a motherfucker you rinse that shit right out Mm-hmm. So you gotta be careful with that. Absolutely bleaches. It can be dangerous. Which is why I just lather it on my head. <laughs> but I found like one that it, that works pretty good and doesn't hurt as much. Because I had one that started hurting at like it literally started hurting. It was like burning after like ten minutes and I was like, no, no, this is not happening. I'm not doing this. But like I said, I found I have a, a bleach that I use that works, at least for me, it works very well. And it doesn't hurt or anything. Well, it does hurt, but like it doesn't hurt a lot, you know. I was planning to do the first two episodes in this stream, but now I'm like not sure. <laughs> hmm. I wonder. Are the other episodes as long? Mm, first one doesn't seem that long. Middle. Oh, oh, that's kind of long. Mm. 
Are you s I use Schwarzkopf. Um, it's either L plus plus or L plus plus plus. I don't remember exactly. So considering we have it here, you probably have it in Sweden. <laughs> oh yeah, perm. Mm. Okay, the first end part is not that long, and the second end part is kind of long, I guess. Okay, anyways. Okay, back to the game we go. What did the oh the song just stopped. Love that. <laughs> okay. If it even played at all, I don't know. I couldn't hear it. No, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Okay, the imprisoned turnabout, let's go. Oh my god. The audio is like way too loud. I'm sorry about that. Hold on. Let me turn that down to 30. Okay, there we go. He's not coming. He's not coming, sir. How long does he intend to keep us waiting? Now, now, Edgeworth. There's no need to get your cravat in a twist. Ethan Brooks' murder. Two days after the incident, we visited the detention center. Naturally, we were hoping to meet with the defendant, Horace Knightley. His trial was set to begin the next day, with me serving as the prosecutor. Still, he is rather late. You there? Do you know what's going on? It, it, it is certainly strange. I'll try calling him one more time. It's terrible! It, it's Knightley! He's been murdered! What? What did you say? Murdered. Inside the detention center. Mr. Edgeworth, let's go check it out. You there. Take us to the crime scene. Post haste. Yes, sir. Knightley is not in his cell. I thought he was being held there. What are you doing, sir? This way! Where are you taking us, pal? Through this door is the... Ah, it's the prison. Prison? Then what were the small rooms back there? Those cells were just we just passed are, are part of the detention center. They're used for holding suspects temporarily while they await their trial. What lies ahead? Is a facility that serves a completely different purpose. This is where criminals who have been declared guilty serve out their sentence, pal. It's the one place a great thief does not want to want to end up, okay? I'm opening the uh, I'm opening the good door now. Please follow me.
There's no mistaking it. Knightley's dead. Moreover, he was murdered inside the prison walls. How exactly did this happen? I, I can't believe something like this would happen to Mr. Knightley. Yes, I can't believe it either. But the scene you see before you is the unmistakable reality. Besides, wasn't Mr. Knightley supposed to be in the detention center? Indeed, he was. Knightley hadn't had his trial yet. Before a suspect is found guilty, they're detained in the detention center's holding cells. They only enter the prison after they have received a guilty verdict. Knightley should not have been moved, have been moved in here. You think he passed through those giant doors that we went through earlier, sir? Huge metal doors and a long passageway separate the prison and the, de and the, de and the detention center. As a suspect, Knightley wouldn't have been able to pass through. And what happened to Knightley? In order to solve this mystery, we must first investigate the crime scene. Horace Knightley, murdered right before his trial. Let me take a closer look. Let me look at this glove first. This is a rubber glove. Yes, there's no mistake it's a rubber glove. How come it's, there's only one? Let me take a closer look. The fingers of the glove are covered in blood. This glove was dropped after the pool of blood formed. Huh? Why is that? If it was on the floor before the pool of blood had formed, the blood would have formed an outline around the glove. Ah, I see. The blood would have only gotten on the edges of the glove. This glove was discarded after it was covered in blood. Scandinavia over here like we can't relate. <laughs> At least I've heard nothing of it. It was discarded after it was covered in blood. It must mean the killer left it behind. Indeed. It's highly probable. At the very least, the person who dropped this saw the body. You there? W what is it, sir? Do you recognize this glove? Sir, the inmates use these for prison labor. That's odd. Rubber gloves are usually kept in the inmates' rooms. They are strictly regulated, so you can't just take them out. Indeed, there are no signs of any other rubber gloves in the room. Ugh, the blood from his neck is stained his brace bright red. The cause of death was most likely from his neck wound. He probably died instantly. He couldn't even cry out in pain. Hmm. There are small bumps on his head. Were these bruises? Maybe after he was stabbed in the neck, he fell back and hit his head. I wonder. At this point in time, there are too many unknowns. Okay, do you have your digital camera with you? I'd like the detective to take a photo of the body. Would you let him borrow it? Sure thing. Here, Gummy. Thanks, pal. Alright, I'm taking the picture, sir. Still, he's wearing some awfully dirty clothes. Hmm, there appears to be a dirt stain in several places. He's wearing those clothes. Clothes even though they're dirty. He's just like me, sir. Detective, I hope you realize that not everyone shares your lack of hygiene. Edgeworth, please! <laughs> huh? What's this? Mr. Edgeworth has something similar in his office. It's a portable chessboard. It was probably the victim's. Ah, Mr. Knightley enjoyed chess, right? Yes, they they all have a history. 
they met when Kay was small. And uh, she called him Gummy. That's all there is to it, really. I was probably using it to pass time in the detention center. What about this tarp thing? Oh, the tarp. It's covered with a dirty sheet. The sheet. There's a rope on top of the sheet. It's nightly tied up with this rope. Let's take a look under the sheet. We might be able to find something. Yikes! This sheet is bright red! These appear to be bloodstains. We still might be able to find something. Let's search this area a little more closely. Hmm. There's something on his finger. Let's have a closer look. It looks like an expensive ring. Don't steal it. What? I didn't do anything yet. Look more of this. This is a rubber glove. Yes, there is no mistake. Rubber glove, how come there's only one? There's some mud stains on it. And blood stains too. There's a possibility that the killer left us behind. Okay. You're there. I already did this part. Hmm. There's a wash basin over here. Are there any clues that could be useful to this case? I don't smell any signs of treasure. I'm searching for clues here, not treasure. I mean, that looks like the other glove, but okay. We won't rest until we've stolen every suspicious looking nook nooking cranny. Indeed. This is quite a large area to investigate. I know how to press the buy button. I won't press until I've infected. Okay, cool. Hmm. It's a pulley. Is that used for prison labor too? It looks like it. There's something I want to ask you. Don't even think about dangling on the hook. Huh? How did you know that's what I wanted to do? Somehow, I had a feeling. There are some colorful sheets. There's a whip. <laughs> They're the most eye-catching thing in this room. They don't fit in with the prison. There's a whip placed on top of the sheets. It reminds me of the whip lady. Maybe she left her whip here. Hmm. I doubt she'd ever leave her whip behind. Rope. There was a rope near the body as well. By the way, my special talent. If it's about rope escapes, there's no need for that now. Aww. She wants to show that show it off that badly. What about the cage? It's a cage inside the cage that's that's an It's a cage inside the cage that is this prison. It's like cage -ception, ception. I believe the correct term is prison cell. They're the same thing. You need to look more at the essence of things. Actually, it's more important to get the correct information. Okay, yeah, but you don't you don't care about you don't care about the fact that if it, it, it's a cool um the um, the ladder is actually a step ladder you don't care about that hmm <laughs> it's worth okay let me if I can look at where the hell what the hell I'm supposed to do because I'm already lost I'm gonna, I suppose I have to talk to someone right. Okay, examining. Uh, examine inspect sheets. Uh, crime scene notes. I have that chessboard. Examine, examine. Okay, rubber glove. Rope. Bloody sheet. Logic. Okay. Bloody sheet and stack sheets. There we go. The sheets stacked here have a very distinctive pattern. It's the same as the bloodstained sheet. That's right. Okay, don't steal my lines like that. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, you shouldn't get caught off guard like that. I never lose my edge as the great thief. I thought she was on hiatus. 
Well, you collected quite a bit of evidence. <laughs> With three of us, right? If three of us here, it's a piece of cake, right, Gummy? That's right, pal. We're the invincible trio. It's too early to start celebrating. There is still something we haven't found yet. Eh? <laughs> what have we found yet, sir? What is missing from this crime scene? The murder weapon. The murder weapon that took the victim's life has not been found yet. Oh, now that you mention it, you're absolutely right, sir. Detective, get your act together. Isn't that the most basic of the basics? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Don't worry about it, Gummy. I didn't notice it either. That's not much of a consol consolation. In this prison, dangerous objects that could not be used, could be used as weapons, are strictly regulated. It'd be quite dangerous if the inmates got their hands on them. Obtaining a murder weapon and carrying it around is not an easy task. I see, you have a point. What was the murder weapon? And where did it go? Where did it come from, Cotton Eye Joe? That could be the key to solving this case. The visitors here already. Who this? Sorry to barge in like this. Is this the crime scene? You're. Huh? You. Aren't you. And that piercing gaze. That furrowed brow. It has been a long time, Mr. Shields. Yes, yes, that frilly thing around your neck and that stiff greeting. There's no doubt about it. Prosecutor Manfred von Karma. Fancy meeting you here. <laughs> what are you saying, pal? Mr. Edgeworth's not that old man. Detective. It's fine. Oh, it's you, Prosecutor Edgeworth. I thought you looked a bit young. <laughs> you two are so similar. Looks like your Uncle Ray got you two mixed up again. You never change. How many years has it been since we last saw each other? Hmm? I've already forgotten. Your Uncle Ray has been overseas this past few years. But you know, there's something I still haven't forgotten. About you. And your betrayal. I I'm getting some bad vibes over here. Do you know this guy, Mr. Edgeworth? Allow me to introduce him to you. Raymond Shields, attorney at law. Ace attorney Ray Shields at your service. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, sir. K Faraday, nice to meet you. I'm a great thief. Ah, but I'm currently on a hiatus. Great thief? Oh, well. That sounds romantic. How wonderful. Oh, Mr. Shields, you get it, right? I'm currently recruiting new members. The registration forms are easy to fill out. That's splendid. Uncle Ray would love to join your little gang. I'm sorry, but we're only accepting bright, cheerful, and energetic girls. I see. That's too bad. Well, how about a hug, then? As a sign of affection. No. I guess not. <laughs> this isn't Europe, after all. Mr. Shields, what are you doing here? Oops, that's right. Sorry, sorry. Preventing the attorney from investigating the crime scene is the Fun Karma way, isn't it? Hey, you've been going on about Fun Karma this and Fun Karma that. What's your problem, pal? Detective, restrain yourself. This can't be helped. Huh? <laughs> Mr. Shields, are you the defense attorney for Horace Knightley? That's right, or should I say, I was his defense attorney. Mr. Shields is the defense attorney. If Knightley had not been murdered, I would have been going up against him in court. You should listen to what he has to say. Look how plain he looks, like, compared to Edgeworth and, like, all the other prosecutors. You just, like, get this, like, different air from prosecutors. He looks so laid back. He 
Since you received the request to represent the victim, that must mean... Yes, your Uncle Ray was supposed to meet with Nightly... with Nightly Boy. This was I. Hold on, wait. How old is he, actually? 36. No, it's 24. 24?! <laughs> Damn, so much anger. <laughs> I had planned to meet with him, but then we heard the report of the dead body. I even brought him a California roll. Mr. Shields, you can't bring food into the detention center. Nah, is that right? Well then, would you like it? No thanks. Hmm. Still, to think that Prosecutor Edgeworth actually meets with the defendants. All defendants are guilty. Wasn't that the fun karma way? That is a thing of the past. Heh. <laughs> is that right? So, you sure you don't want it? I, I told you! I don't want it! Did you meet with Knightley? <laughs> we met yesterday! <laughs> Why does he keep doing the air quotes? He called me over as soon as Knightley Boy was arrested. He was being quite hostile. Oh yeah, he mentioned you. He talked about how you interfered with his plans. He probably said some nasty things about me. Even if he hates me, I'm fine with it. Man, the two of us had a great time talking about you. M Mr. Shields! You also talked about me? I frequent the visitor's room here quite often. It's been quite a while. It's been a while since I had such a good time. Heh, <laughs> so you're a regular at this prison. Hey now, don't get the wrong idea. I'm not here as an inmate. I'm here to visit an old acquaintance of mine. We usually meet in the visitor's room, but I've also been in here before. Then I should ask him about this room. This room was where the body was found. Do you know anything about it? Huh, this room, eh? Here's the pop quiz for our prodigy prosecutor. Which of these three is the name of the, this room? Uh Me trying to read what it says. Okay, yeah, none of them are right. <laughs> Let's call it the entertainment room. The entertainment room. Wow, Prosecutor Edgeworth sees this place as an entertainment room. Why not? There are plenty of toys here. Well, let's reveal the correct answer. Prosecutor Edgeworth's answer is... Wrong. The correct answer is the workroom. All three choices were wrong. I hate it when he does that. Inmates carry out various kinds of prison labor in here. It also serves as a rehab program, allowing them to receive job training in prison. So, how do they monitor this room? Who is in charge of the keys to, this, to the entrance? Prosecutor Edgeworth, even your Uncle Ray doesn't have all the answers. Hey, you there! Could you tell us? Yes, sir! This room doesn't use any locks or and keys. Instead of locks, the doors are equipped with sensors. What do you mean by that? All of the prison inmates are wearing electronic bracelets. When a bracelet passes through the door, it activates a sensor and... Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, an alarm will sound. After a certain amount of time has passed, the bracelet will emit a painful shock. The bracelets are tampered with. It will emit an electric shock three times more powerful. Hey, <laughs> That's terrifying! is to ensure that the inmates follow the rules, although it seems a bit harsh. As by whenever an inmate goes through the door, a guard has to accompany them. To deactivate the sensor first. 
And that's that. Did any of the inmates use this workroom today? In the past few days, no one has used this room. I'm sure of it. Hmm. So not one inmate has entered this room today. If that's the case... It raises a contradiction with the crime scene. There is something in this crime scene that should, should not exist. I will use my powers of deduction and inspect the crime scene again. Okay. Bye, Uncle Ray. <laughs> what shouldn't be here? I mean, other than his body? Why is he wrapped in, in the thing? Hmm. Apparently it's the glove. And the door sensor. Oh yeah, because, of course, the inmates cannot freely enter this room. As they're wearing bracelets that set off the sensors. According to the guard, it seems that no inmates were scheduled to enter this room today. However, a rubber glove used by the inmates was left in there, in here. That is a direct contradiction. Then, who left this rubber glove in here, sir? I don't know, yet. However, it seems that this rubber glove is connected to our case. Guard, aside from the inmates and the prison guards, does anyone else have access to this room? Um, well, this is a prison facility after all. Only inmates and prison guards come here. Mr. Shields. <laughs> what are you saying? There are others that come in here. Aside from inmates and prison guards, there are certain things that can enter this room. Are you talking about them? But they're... Mr. Shields, what are these things you sp that you speak of? It should be obvious. You came all the way here without seeing one, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Prosecutor Edgeworth, there was a question. Usually you can find them walking around the prison facility. Well, you'll see once you leave this room, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Hey, you are just saying that to get Mr. Edgeworth to leave, pal. What now? Don't you trust me? Mr. Detective, you have a big body but a small mind. What did you say, pal? Detective Gumshoe. Uh -huh. Sorry, sir. Come on, follow me. I'll show you what Uncle Ray has been talking about. This place is a little different from your normal prison. There are more than just the prisoners and guards living here. Animals. Yep, animals, according to the guard. They introduced animal therapy here several years ago. Each prisoner is assigned one animal. In other words, they receive a pet partner. Huh? That seems kind of fun. Plus, learning to take care of their pet is a great qualification to have. Ah, so you mean that workroom? Yep, that is where the prisoners practice taking care of their pets. S so then, the thing you mentioned that could enter the crime scene is... Right, these animals. That doesn't make any sense, pal. Why would an animal leave behind a rubber glove? <laughs> quite right. Right, but the fact remains that they could have entered the crime scene. Miss Redgeworth, can you please talk some sense into this man? Mr. Shields, are these an are the animals allowed to go wherever they please? Most of the doors in this prison are fitted with sensors. The sensors not only sound an alarm when it responds to the prisoners' bracelets, they also respond to the animals' microchip and open the doors for them. Microchip? 
It's like a tiny machine embedded in under the animal's skin. All it takes is a simple injection. <laughs> and the microchip is inserted. Wah! That sounds painful! I heard it's not that painful, but anyway. Since the animals aren't criminals, they are allowed to move around freely. How ironic. The ones with the most freedom in this prison are the animals. But still, they can't go out of the prison. The prison's entrance does not have a sensor. Oh? Hmm? What's that? Was that a bell? What's that? What's this? This dog. It has a bell on its collar. Was this the sound that we heard earlier? Mr. Edgeworth! Why are you glaring at each other? I mustn't lose. I must lose! <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, you're not good with dogs, are you, sir? I'll tame that dog myself. Here, boy. Here, boy. You completely ignored me, sir. Compared to the other animals, there's something different about this one. Oh, did you mean your power? I wasn't sure what you meant when you said the power went out. I'm sensing a great hostility towards me only. Well, now that I've introduced you to the animals, what's next on the agenda? Of course, we question those related to the case. Wait, which... Oh, did you mean the power in game or the power in, in your power? Of course, we question those related to the case, pal. Yes, we should gather information about the state of things when the body was discovered. We'll start with you in that cell. Tell us what you know. Oh, in the house. Yikes. He's completely ignoring me, sir. You there? Do you know anything about the incident? Aww. He's scary. <laughs> Don't be so cold. Come on, you can talk to us. Or how about an introductory hug? It's time. What's that? S sorry, was Uncle Ray's joke a little too much? Exercise time. This man is clearly odd. I need to get some answers from him. Your name is? Me? I'm prisoner number D259, Jailbird. Jailbird, Jailbird. Gotta raise my metabolism. I can't let my muscles rest. Muscles aside, it looks like you've lost a lot of weight. Half of the match is won, even before it has begun. Yeah! You gotta make the weight limit. Uh, are you entering some kind of a tournament? Or perhaps as a boxer? I believe it's supposed to be a polar bear. Like a polar bear cub. Yeah, I'm a former boxer, but exercise is just a hobby of mine. Well then, it sure looks like the bear's hobby. It's the bear's hobby too. It is a bear. <laughs> He's hanging on like an apron. So cute. This is Rocky the polar bear. He's my partner. He's losing his tongue. Maybe we can try asking him now. Where were you and Rocky at the time of the incident? I don't know anything. I got nothing to say to you. That's for me to decide. Now answer the question. 
didn't I just tell you? I know nothing. Mm -hmm. He has no intention of talking. In that case, you got no choice but to use that. Yes, if he insists he has nothing to do with this, we'll just have to prove there's a connection. Mr. Elbert, by all means, you will tell us what you know. Now, let's analyze the situation. A fighting stance. It seems that he has become agitated. In these circumstances, a direct confrontation would be pointless. When my opponent becomes agitated, I should calmly wait and see. When I see an opening, I will not hold back. Now let's question him about his knowledge of the incident. To start with, I'll ask about his movements today. I'll have to tire him out before the sound of the bell. Can you tell me what you have done today? A answer me! Huh? If you want to fight with me, get into your fighting stance! Wait and see. What? You're throwing in the towel already? This is not a fist fight. Welcome to the war that is chess. By the way, hasn't all that moving around tired you out? Don't underestimate my stamina. You want to test me? With that body of yours? Wait and see. I ain't tired at all. First off, I held back in my training today. I just stayed quietly in myself. Quietly? And what's with all that sweat? But buzz off! That's all I gotta say. I'm getting a little tired. You're a well-trained boxer. However, you need more practice in the art of flying. Getting a little tired. And that's not possible. You said that you stayed quietly in your cell just a moment ago. Rocky. Looks like this is gonna be a tough opponent. Oh, I get it. It's Rocky because... Rocky, you know, and he's a boxer. Nice. This man, it looks like he's still hiding something. Next, I'll ask him about the time of the incident. I do not need to use fists. My words alone are enough for a KO. What were you doing at the time of the incident? Do you recall what you were doing at the time of the incident? Sleeping. Rocky was too. The incident happened just a few moments ago. You look wide awake to me. Muscles strengthen while they're resting. Sleep is important. Well then, I'm sorry to have woken you. Rest is a part of training. Right? Uh, oh? So you get it after all. Not bad, Mr. Prosecutor. Oh? I don't recall ever introducing myself as a prosecutor. How did you know? Th that That's... The conversation we had when we first entered this room. Were you by any chance eavesdropping on, me, on us? In that case, there was no way you could have been asleep. You lied to us. Got me there. You pack a nice punch. Yeah, I lied about sleeping. So what? I was just ex exercising in this room. You got a problem with that? Well, I now know he was awake. I should remember this clue. You notice anything during the incident? When the incident occurred, did you notice anything unusual about the prison? Huh? Answer the question. What was the situation like at the time of the incident? Sorry, but I got no answers for you. I was asleep then. Rocky was too. Let's try using that clue. Weren't you exercising? Stop telling such an obvious lie. Didn't you admit it earlier? You were exercising. 
<laughs> Looks like I just ate a counter. Your back's against the ropes, and there's no way out. Just confess already. Hey, quiet down a bit. If outsiders like you make a racket, you'll frighten the animals again. You have been persistent. However, I'm afraid you're about to hit the mat. You said again just now that something happened earlier. To frighten the animals! <laughs> Damn it! Could I have gotten sucker punched like that? Yeah. There was this great scream back then. It startled the animals. Dang, I would have never have lost in the real ring. Hmm. Checkmate. Hmm. I believe this proves that you do know something about the case. Damn, okay. I'll talk. I'll talk. You did it, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't lose focus, Kay. The real game has just begun. Let's just stop for a moment. Uncle Ray's got one important thing to say. It must be fate that has brought us together after all these years. I have received the opportunity to observe your skills carefully. And... I'll be giving a detailed report to that person about how much you've grown. Uh, who is that person? You didn't know? The truth is... This doesn't concern Kay. She doesn't need to know. Whoa there. You scared me. Don't get so worked up. You can do what you like. It doesn't matter to me. How you have been leading your life ever since you were you were tainted by the Fon Karma way. I'm sure that person would be interested. I feel that it's my duty to report it to him. I'll expose your mistakes here. I won't let you disappoint. It's not who you think they mean. I don't remember who it is, but it's not who you think they mean. I'll expose your mistakes here. I won't let you disappoint him any further. Further. M Mr. Edgeworth! Miss, what are you guys talking about? Don't concern yourself with it. Our only opponent now is Elbert. Well then, let's hear it. What do you know about the case? You're gonna be sorry. The creation time ended around 10 a.m. I returned to this room and went straight to my training. Just as I'd counted, up, counted to two, I heard a voice shout out, I've been stabbed! It sounded like someone in pain, calling out for help, help, but... I couldn't do anything since I was locked up in my cell. So I went back to my training. And that's odd. You really weren't bothered by that shout. Even if I was, there was nothing I could do. Look out for number one before you look out for the others. That's the basic rule in prison. Indeed, even if you wanted to take a look, you'd still be locked in a cell. I saw that training equipment yours. You seem to have quite a co collection. I get them from the supplier. Supplier? You can get just about anything if you put in an order. It's our secret shop. That's quite convenient. So if Uncle Ray wanted a cute girl. In that case, you should order a book on how to give testimony. Hmm. Huh. Because I'm going to knock you down for, for the count in one hit. You're gonna KO me? Stop kidding around. Hey, don't ignore your Uncle Ray. Crimson nose is there too. I heard I've been stabbed. Hmm. <sighs> Mr. Elbert, can you hear my voice clearly? Are you... you mocking me? The victim received a fatal blow to the throat. Which means he couldn't possibly have screamed. So, why did you hear a non-existent scream? 
that's there should have been a scream. There should have been one. Dang it, I ought to rip that smug look off your face. Yeah, you're right. Never heard a scream. The one who heard it was the guy in the next cell. The next cell. Uh, the next cell. Yo! Are y'all seeing what I'm seeing right now? Because I'm clearly seeing something. Something rather familiar. I guess I can only mean one thing, huh? Parrot. Oh, what's up? Yeah, I heard a scream. Recreation time had just ended. It happened after we returned to our cells. So that night, tell that guy. I heard I heard a great scream. Can you describe that scream for me? Sure. I never told that guy about the contents of the scream, though. Hey! Someone, come quickly! A man's been... Something like that. Hmm, so it wasn't the victim. But rather, it was the first person to discover the body who screamed. I see. That solves that mystery. So there was nothing wrong with Mr. Edward's testimony. Is that really true? Or is there still a problem with Albert's testimony? There is a problem. Oh boy, here we fucking go. No. In this case, a new problem has presented itself. Mr. Albert, why did you not hear the scream? I tell that I didn't hear the scream, sir. Hey, you! Why didn't you hear the scream, pal? <laughs> you guys, you suspect me? I was shut up in this stupid cell the whole time. How could I have killed someone in the in the workroom? That, that would be impossible, wouldn't it? Yeah, none of us could have killed him. Could have killed him. We would have already killed you guys by now. Hey! Guys, don't think you're going to get out of this prison alive. I nearly forgot. Despite being locked inside cages, these guys are still dangerous criminals. <laughs> Looks like we got ourselves in a pretty bad situation here. What can I do? I can't talk to them in these circumstances. Who was that? Please be silent. What? Who are you? Can't you see we're busy here? Silence is golden. <clears throat> what the? Now, your hands. You shall remain silent while under the judgment of the law. You should be thankful you get to live your life without the need of money. You are to receive the blessings of the goddess of law. Guard, if you could, if you would please. Congratulations, you get to spend the night in the disciplinary room. Huh? That, 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 that's... No, not there. Anywhere but there. Accept this wonderful blessing. Let your heart be reborn. Cast away your sins. Stop it. No! Oh, goddess of law. Give this man your blessings. I thank thee. You are... My name is Justine Courtney. I am privileged to be a judge. An emissary of the strength of the law. A judge, you say? Why are you here? Prosecutor Edgeworth, I came to meet with you personally. I convey the will of the will of the Prosecutorial Investigation Com Committee. That is my appointed task. Prosecutorial Investigation Committee? 
What's that? Do not use that name so lightly. Those are sacred words of the goddess of law. Since little Kay doesn't know, Uncle Ray will explain it for her. The PIC is an assembly compromised of 11 members. Their job is to check if prosecutors are doing their jobs properly. If I'm not mistaken, its members are elected from politicians and those of the legal profession. So, I take it you are one of those members. Indeed, I am thankful they judged me worthy of such a task. I too am thankful that I was able to meet you here. Ahem, how about a hug of thankfulness? The Prosecutorial Investigation Committee also shares deep ties with the Bar Association. Hey, I was just kidding. No need to make such a scary face. Uh, so your job is to find bad prosecutors and punish them. Well said. May you be blessed by the goddess of law. Our job is to remove problematic prosecutors from their cases. And so, those people not fit to be prosecutors will be stripped of their prosecutor's badge. What business does this whatchamacallit comedy have with Miss Redworth, pal? We're in the middle of an investigation here. Objection. Sorry, I'm like... Wow, you're thick. Oh my god, I don't know how I want to... Oh, I can't make his voice. Seriously, how thick-headed can you be? I, I just default to fucking the judge. And just who do you think you are, pal? Me? I'm a prosecutor. Sebastian the Best is my name. I don't like it. Haven't you heard of me at the prosecutor's office? Everyone calls me the best. Listen. Listen. I fucking love this guy. I love him so much. He is my son. And it's okay. He will continue saying that he's the best. But that's wrong. He is not the best. But that's okay. He is merely doing... The best he can. Yes, he's doing the best he can. Listen, I love him. I'm so beloved. I'm so beloved there. I've never heard of you. Hey, you, Mr. Flatfoot. You've heard of me, right? This is the first time, pal. Well, this is a f fan translation, too. So... But yeah, no, the names are only gonna get worse. Oh no, sorry, I just had like a flash forward to Spirit of Justice. Those are incredibly bad. It's like they didn't even try. <laughs> but it's also incredibly funny, so... First time, pal. Oh well, it can't be helped. There is no way someone who is so thick on the intake could have good ears. No. That is a spoiler! If you want to look that up, sure, fine, whatever, but don't go sharing it here! The, the stream literally says, no spoilers! What do you mean, slow on the uptake? I suppose it's only natural that Sebastian only became a prosecutor last month. He's just a rookie prosecutor! How old is he? Tiny baby. Oh, he's not here. Right, the best rookie prosecutor in the office. Well, you, you like to think that, but no, I'm sorry, that's not it. Or so he plans to be. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm here to clean out the mess you made. What do you mean? The PIC intends to have me replaced. That much is clear. Mr. De Best, I know what you're trying to say. However, I have not been informed of this. Your Honor, I would like an explanation. Very well. This judgment has been 
passed under the name of the goddess of law. The incident of, at the president's welcoming event and the murder of Horace Knightley. The prosecutorial investigation committee has decreed that you will be taken off this case. And Sebastian has been appointed to take over the case. That is all. Wh what? You can't just take him off the case like that, pal. Your Honor, I thought I asked for an explanation. The judgment is guilty. The goddess of law's verdict is absolute. You have done nothing to warrant being taken off this case. You don't remember. Very well. In that case, I shall remind you of your past crimes. Oh no, is this when he presented illegal evidence? Or he used illegal evidence, like, in the last game? You boarded the president's plane, which was protected by extraterritorial rights. Oh, okay, it's only that. And then, of all things, you ordered a search of the president's personnel. A single mistake could have sparked an inter international incident. You crossed the line as a prosecutor. You have gravely overstepped your authority. Objection. I'll admit, my actions may have gone against the rules. However, if I had not taken that risk, I am certain the truth would have never been found. I have never considered my actions as a mistake. So, you're saying that as long as the ends justify the means, it's alright to ignore the rules. That is an extremely dangerous way of thinking. No one is above the rules. That is the spirit of law. I'm sorry, but I cannot accept your way of thinking. I see. That's a shame. Even so. The gavel must slam down at the conclusion of a trial. Even if you, or the defense attorney, or the suspect do not consent to the verdict. All you can do is accept the blessings of the goddess of law. Or will you fight it and risk losing your badge? She means to take my badge if I don't obey. Aww, that's too bad. It seems you understand. Now then, guards, please proceed. Hold it right there! Hey, what are you doing? No, hey, what are you doing? Where are you supposed to be? Aren't you supposed to be on our side? You should listen to the new prosecutor in charge! Eh? I don't want to work for you, pal. Now I can see how old he is. He's 17! Oh my god, tiny son. I don't want to work for you, pal. But isn't that the job of a flatfoot? We're at an overwhelming disadvantage here. It's useless to resist any longer. Detective Gumshoe, you are now under Mr. DeBest's authority. B but that's... Your Honor. Yes? What is it? This does not mean I have accepted your decision. We will meet again. Certainly. I look forward to that day. Let's go, Kay. Yeah. Wait, don't forget. I'll be reporting today's events to that person. I'm still not sure who that person is, and I've played this before. Mm -mm. Yay, middle. Hey, he has he has removed the chess pieces. They're they're not on they're not on the table. What's happening? Mr. Edgeworth, just what happened yesterday? Those two people, their attitude was just unforgivable. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm here to make clean up the mess you made. The Prosecutorial Investigation Committee has decreed that you will be taken off this case. And Sebastian has been appointed to take over the case. That is all. Judge Courtney and Mr. DeBest, they were certainly ruthless. What I'm more concerned about is... 
Just what is the PIC thinking? I'm worried about what they will do from here on. I have a bad feeling about this. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth! Are you listening to me? Yes, I'm listening. You're not going to give up on this case, are you? No, I don't plan on backing down. Not with the current situation as it is. If I were to silently stand by, that would only validate their claims. But I no longer have investigation rights. What should I do now? What is it, Detective Gumshoe? Bad news, sir! I heard something down at the precinct. It sounds like they were already arrested a suspect in yesterday's case. What? Who is it? I don't know yet, sir. But if we go down to the, deten the, de 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 the detention center, we can ask. Let's get going, Miss Redgeworth. Even if I can't investigate, me meeting with the suspect should not be an issue. Alright, we're heading over to the de detention center now. I'll also head over on the double, sir. Detective, won't that interfere with your job? I gotta investigate the scene of the crime anyway, so it should be okay, sir. Right, we'll meet, meet up with you there. Rogers, sir. Let's go, Kay. Okay. He's not coming, is he? He's not. It's happening all over again! Don't joke about that. No way, I mean it. It's not happening. Who this? Yes, it's happening, alright. There's just someone here to talk to you. Hmm. That sounds like a pretty screechy voice, huh? No way, no way, no way, no way! Don't be so stubborn. But aren't prosecutors, like, crazy scary or something? Always giving you a death glare? Um, pardon me, but would you happen to be the suspect? <laughs> I knew it! Okay, why does this man seem so distraught? Well, because you're, uh, you. That doesn't help me at all. Hello, Mrs. Suspect. Would you mind talking to us for a little bit? Who are you? I'm Mr. Redward's assistant, Kay Faraday. Well, it's just a part-time job. I'm just taking a vacation from my real job. I don't remember hiring you. This is Mr. Edgeworth. He's a prosecutor, but he's not as scary as he looks, so it's okay. Hmm, how rude. R really? Really, really. Really? Anyway, can you tell us your name, Mr. Suspect? Yeah, uh... I'm Simon Keys. Nice to meet you, Simon. You can just call me Kay, Kay. I am Miles Edgeworth, a prosecutor. I would appreciate a word with you. Please, it's for your own good, Simon. Really? Finally, it looks like we'll be able to get something out of him thanks to Kay. First, I'd like you to tell me a little about yourself. No way, not that. I couldn't do that. Impossible! I'm not worthy. There's nothing interesting about me. Your occupation. No way, not that. It's no big deal, honest. Yeah, I'm just a regular employee. Good grief. About the victim, Knightley. I don't think he's going to talk to me about this. Okay. Simon, did you know Mr. Knightley from somewhere? Knightley? Yeah, I did. He was a friend. A friend. So did he know that Knightley was arrested? Did you know that Mr. Knightley was arrested? Yeah, I came here to meet him. So he visited the detention center too. When was that? When did you visit him in here? 
It was two days ago, in the afternoon. I received a call from the police, so I came over right away. The police? Why did you get a call from the police? It was a request from Knightley. He had a message for me. A message? Yeah, he wanted me to bring him his pocket-sized chessboard. So I retrieved it from his house and came here to give it to him. Did he say chessboard? Did you say chessboard? Miss K, stealing my thoughts. No, Miss Redgeworth, it's just written on your face. <laughs> I was just guessing from your facial expressions. See, I can be useful. Can be a useful assistant, right? Hmm. So, do you know what we need to need to do next? You bet. You gotta show that to Simon, right? Correct. Let's present it and see how he reacts. Chessboard it is then. You recognize this chessboard? Oh, it's Knightley's. Just as I thought. This was found near Mr. Knightley's corpse. He always carried a chessboard with him. It's just like him to have one until his last breath. Sounds like you two were really close, Simon. Yeah, we weren't best friends. At least, I thought we were. But maybe I was wrong. Huh? Because I never imagined he would murder someone. Having someone close to you turn out to be a murderer. Reality can be so cruel. It's not something most people can easily accept. And I never imagined we would part ways like this. Mr. Edgeworth, something's definitely strange here. There's no way Simon could have killed Mr. Knightley. Indeed, I certainly can't see a motive at all. However, the fact remains that he was the one who was arrested on that charge. Just what was the justification for doing so? So, why were you arrested? Hmm, I guess he still won't respond to me. Well, I don't know. Looks like he's finally warming up to you. Huh, that's a great help. This morning, a police officer barged into my house. And before I knew it, he had brought me here. Was there a prosecutor accompanying him at that time? Uh, I remember a prosecutor called, um, Best or something was there too. So it was that rookie prosecutor. Then, I guess the police haven't dragged you into questioning yet, huh? Are the police going to interrogate me? Yep, that's right, because you're the suspect. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way! Aren't detectives like crazy abusive or something? Always bossing you around with their big bodies. Detective Gumshoe is on the scene. Oh, I knew it! Please don't beat me with your thick arms. I can't take it anymore. Someone call the police. What's gotten into him, sir? Well, it's because you're you, detective. Huh? I don't get it, sir. I know Simon has to be innocent, Miss Redgeworth. Can we do something? Simon Keys. Yes? You were Mr. Knightley's best friend. You only just met with him two days ago. You say you didn't kill him. Are you certain about this? Y yes I am. I, I wouldn't harm a fly. I see. That's enough for me. I shall offer my assistance in pr proving your innocence. Eh? What's the point in helping little old me? It's not just for you. In this case, I have a personal stake in it as well. That's right, we gotta get back at those two from yesterday. Yeah, I'm fired up, sir. But I don't have any, any investigation right at the moment. Since I won't be able to obtain information myself, your role is most vital. I'm sure we can rely on you to fill in any holes in the information we have. Help us help you, that's all I ask. Ah, oh, I just had an idea. Why don't you just borrow a defense attorney's badge, sir? Come on, there's no way Mr. Edgeworth could do that. This isn't the time to be joking around. 
But, but I wasn't joking. Helping the suspect is the defense attorney's job, pal. Jeez, don't worry about that. It doesn't matter what Mr. Edgeworth's job is. All we gotta do is find the real murderer. So let's get moving. I think his hairdo is cute. Okay, pal. I'm sure you understand. But if the investigation results prove that you are the murderer... No hard feelings, but I will show no mercy. I know what badge they could borrow. Edgy could borrow. Mm. Oh yeah, from from that guy, the, the the man in the blue suit, right? You mean that 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 guy? Or maybe 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 Raymond would want to pitch in a bit. I don't know. <laughs> you don't need to be scared. I believe in your story, at least for now. All you need to do is believe in us and wait patiently. There is nothing to fear. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be off. The truth, you know. <laughs> what, eat free, live free in prison? What is this? A heist with Markiplier? So, we're well fired up and ready to go. And we still can't enter the part of the prison where the murder occurred. If you can't investigate, the only thing you can do now is defend him in court, sir. But how are we supposed to do that? We can't! Huh? I don't know. If it isn't Prosecutor Edgeworth and his merry gang, what are you guys doing here? Did you come here to harass Mr. Edgeworth again, pal? <laughs> what are you talking about, big guy? Uncle Ray's just here to do his job. Your job? Well, yeah, you're a defense attorney, right? Okay, you're as cute and full as ever. Beautiful. It might not look like it, but your Uncle Ray is a hotshot defense attorney. I'm here to meet with a new client today. What was his name again? Shy Monkeys or something? What? You mean Simon Keys? That's it, Kay. Looks like you know the, know the deal. Mr. Edgeworth, he's a defense attorney. I thought as much. I guess we have no choice but to resort to that method. In the past, whenever I had to investigate cases I was not placed in charge of, I was able to gain access by becoming a subordinate to whoever was in charge. Not my, pref not my preferred option, but it's the only one I have now. Mr. Shields, if I may ask... By the way, I don't take on sidekicks. I refuse to take on male assistants who lack charm. Especially someone who was like a son to Von Karma. Mr. Shields, as I thought. He won't forgive me so easily. Mr. Shields, I understand that you cannot forgive me for what I've done. I am also fully aware of your hatred towards those involved with Von Karma. I don't know if you'll believe me, but... I am no longer the same as I was back then. Back when I idolized Von Karma. Yeah, pal. Mr. Edgeworth is... Mr. Edgeworth is a changed man. Sure, he may have been a cruel, inhuman prosecutor in the past. But now, he's completely different, pal. When you put it that bluntly, it kind of hurts. That's right. Mr. Edgeworth's not a bad guy anymore. I wouldn't even call him a prosecutor. He's more like, uh... Um, a hero, yeah. He even helped me out in that big case last, last month. A hero? That's some pretty big talk there, Missy. He's a magnificent hero. Although he'd be no match for a great thief like me. Mr. Shields, don't the actions of the PIC appear strange to you? I believe there may be something else hidden behind this case. I can't afford to quit at this juncture. Juncture. Please let me help you for the investigation. I am begging you. Heh. <laughs> I never expected you to grovel like this. It sure looks like you've changed, alright. And I'm kinda interested in the cause of all this. You're interested in what changed in what changed me. If I had to say, it would probably be the courtroom itself. 
Sure. The courtroom itself. <laughs> sure, let's just leave it at that, I guess. All the experiences I've had, and all the people I've met inside the courtroom, and perhaps reuniting with my old friends. Okay, there it fucking is. <laughs> I never expected you, of all people, to change. Who would have thought that you'd lay open your heart like that? I'm sure that man will be surprised as well. I guess I can't turn you away. It may be long overdue, but allow me to properly reintroduce myself. If you would be so kind as to read this. Edgeworth Law Offices, Raymond Shields, Head Attorney. Edgeworth? Mr. Shields was an assistant to my dece deceased father. Gregory Edgeworth. Really? Your father was a defense attorney? So that means that man Mr. Shields talked about is... Correct, my cute little gay. Prosecutor Edgeworth's old man. I never changed the name of the firm. It's my way of showing my appreciation for his help. Prosecutor Edgeworth. No, wait. Miles. Uncle Ray doesn't fully entrust you just yet. It may have been temporary. Temporary, but the fact remains, you were once a disciple of Von Karma. You say that you have changed, but you'll need to prove it to me with your actions. Even your old man would have wanted what would have wanted it this way. Yes, I understand. All right, I'm getting tired of all this stuffy talk, so let's give it a rest and move on. For now, I'll make you my temporary assistant. How does that sound? I'm sorry to trouble you, but this outcome is kind of moving, yeah. What a, the prodigal son returning to work in his late father's law firm. What about me? What about me? Of course you can help too, Kay. Alright. Thanks a lot, Mr. Shields. I mean, boss. Now then, let's get right to work. Let's see. First off. What do you think we should do, My Miles? That's right. I had some unfinished business yesterday. Hmm, so it wasn't the victim. But rather, it was the first person to discover the body who screamed. Why don't we find them and listen to what they have to say? Yeah, that's it. Uncle Ray thinks so too. Hmm, a beat as always. Okay, with that decided, let's hurry up and grill him. Um, sir, what am I supposed to do? Detectives can't help defense attorneys. Hmm, I can't just even be. Detective, I will give you a special assignment. I want you to assist Mr. DeBest in his investigation and follow his orders. And then, if you discover anything useful, I want you to share it with us. Detective, this is a job that only you can do. Can we count on you? Y yes, sir. Leave it to me. I'm really good at leaking investigation reports to defense attorneys, so we, we fucking know. <laughs> we fucking know. <laughs> Normally, that would be a problem for me, but it may come in handy this time. Alright, let's get moving, shall we? Time to go to jail. Now then, where is the person who first discovered the body? For now, all we can do is ask around. Hold it right there, who this? Oh. Who is this woman? Um, excuse me, but... Oh, you are simply irresistible! Huh? You mean me? Very nice, very nice indeed. What an elegant moustache! It's a pleasure to meet you, mademoiselle. Defense attorney Ray Shields at your service. How about we exchange greetings with a hug? Oh, but of course! <clears throat> Uncle Ray's lips. A proper greeting should begin with a hug and a kiss. It's almost like it was stolen from him. Yes, a remarkable feat of quickness that would put a great thief to shame. I feel that close contact is very important. 
This goes for my family here in my home as well. Quite a splendid way of thinking there. <laughs> I am the warden Patricia Rowland. But please, just call me Patty. Warden. So she is in charge. She's in charge of the prison and the detention the detention center. Nice to meet you. I am Miles Edgeworth. I am a prosec. I mean, I am Mr. Shields' assistant. Pardon me for asking, but were you here in the prison yesterday? But of course! Yesterday was a day that I wouldn't have missed for the world! Wouldn't have missed for the world? Did you have some kind of important meeting? Oh heavens no! I despise meetings! It was the animal show, of course! Well, that's a familiar sound. A wonderful spectacle featuring animals dancing and flying through the air. I always see it along with everyone else in our home. We're one big happy family. We built a special stage in the courtyard just for this performance. A performance for the prisoner's enjoyment. Yesterday, Albert mentioned some kind of re recreation. I suppose the animal show was what he re was referring to. When did this show take place? It started at 8 a.m. and ended around 10 a.m. That's exactly when the body was discovered. So whoever saw the show would probably have an alibi. Now if you'll excuse me, I must be going. I have business to attend to. Please take your time and have a look around our home. So, where should we start, Mr. Edgeworth? There was a prisoner who heard a scream from the person who first discovered the body. Let's start by talking with him. Okay, let me just check out this fucking- I can't? I can't? Are you joking me? Listen, you can't just show me a fucking parrot and not expect me to go- At least, like, t look at it and, and him being like, oh, I-, I war Having war flashbacks or something, I don't fucking know. It must be. What's a rabbit doing here? I almost stepped on it. How nice, it's like a zoo. Although, it's the humans who are treated like animals in here. No, but it makes sense because Yanni Yogi would be in prison, right? Because he did kill people. Do you think they'd find out if I took one home with me? I think that if you did that, you'd be the one behind bars. There is a monkey in the middle. Oh my god, I love this person. That's something I never thought I would say. Ever. Anyways, where 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 am I going anyways? In the third cell. Well, it has to be him then. Where is the person who first discovered the body? Right now. Around this time, I think he should be in the workroom in the back. Workroom. I should go take a look. Hello? Is this occupied? Okay, that's not a restroom. Hey guard, you have a minute? Sir, what is it? Is anyone using that workroom right now? Presently, there is one prisoner working inside. I'm positive he's been in there since the noon roll call. I would like to ask the prisoner a few questions, if that is acceptable. Yes, sir. I will bring him out, so please wait a moment. Watch this. It's gonna be a familiar face, I can say, I can say that much. I'll leave this to you, Miles. What do you mean? Because I don't know what kind of scary guy will come out of that room. Mr. Shields, you're a scaredy cat? Even though you're an adult? <laughs> Same to you, Kay. Here he comes. Oh, good day to you, sirs.
Do you all recognize this man? Do you recognize him? Is he recognizable? Is he of the recognizable kind? That dude, the very first, yeah, the newspaper, the, the newspaper man. Are you the ones who requested my presence? He doesn't seem like a dangerous criminal. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I'm a prosecutor. A prosecutor? Is that right? Ray Shields, a defense attorney. Mr. Shields, his demeanor completely changed once he saw who we were dealing with. Sorry about that. <laughs> my assistant says strange things sometimes. He's not a prosecutor, just my assistant. Hey, get your back together, Miles. Hmm, I guess I messed up. I forgot about my new job. No wonder I thought you were different from the prosecutor who visited me yesterday. It looks like he's already spoken to the best. May we ask you a few questions? Oh yes, of course you may. My name is Frank Sawitz. Okay, go for it, Miles. I guess I'll be asking the questions after all. Huh. Mr. Sawitz, you are aware of the murder that occurred here yesterday, correct? Where were you when the body was discovered? I was in this room. Where I had been working. What kind of work? Well, my goal is to become a pet groomer. An animal beautician, so to speak. Oh yes, I was inside cultivating my skills. In any other prison, such training would be unheard of. That was all. Honestly, I, I did not see a thing. Hmm? Why did you say that? I haven't even asked him anything yet. Which is why, it's so sad to say, I won't be able to help you. Won't be, a, won't be any help to you. That's what I said. Mr. Sawit, I haven't asked you anything yet. No, wait, that's... Even if you were to ask, I would not... You know something, don't you? Oh, oh, that's... It seems he is indeed hiding something. Let's try to press it out of him. <laughs> Firstly, let us assess the layout of the of the board. My opponent's condition is. I'm afraid I didn't see a thing, so I won't be any help to you. This man's expressions do not change much. He's a true poker face. It may be difficult to read his emotions from his body language. Perhaps I should focus on how he phrases his words. It may reveal what's on his mind. Now, for the opening move, I'll start by asking about who this man is. Even if he hides his motions, if I push the right buttons, I'm sure I'll cause a change. Are you involved with this case? Are you involved with this case? Are you referring to the murder that occurred inside this prison? I had nothing to do with it at all. Is that true? I would never dream of being involved in a murder plot. Hey, remember? <laughs> remember when you killed Cindy Stone? <laughs> hmm, how should I put it? I'm... I'm an upright model citizen, after all. You're an upright model citizen. Common sense tells me. An upright model citizen would have never ended up behind bars. Well, that is... Tell me what you know about the incident. I already told you, I don't know a damn thing. Oh, uh, I really don't know anything. I apologize from the bottom of my heart for that outburst. But I will be of no assistance. Pardon my rudeness. It's just that the murder occurred in this rather confined prison. 
It seems unnatural that you do not know anything about it. Uh, oh, uh, unnatural, is that so? If you're looking for the person who discovered the body, you should try someone else. How did you know we were looking for the person who discovered the body? I don't recall saying a word about that. Are you sure you don't know anything? N no, it was merely a hunch I had. I am but a humble pet groomer in training. I honestly have no recollection of the murder. I am positive that this man is hiding something. My next move, I'll ask him about his movements on the day of the murder. This man has suppressed his emotions. I will expose his true nature hidden beneath that suspicious smile. What happened on the day of the murder? Let's talk about what happened on the day of the murder. If you truly had nothing to do with it, there shouldn't be a problem, correct? Oh, well... On the day of the murder... There was a lot going on. Uh, tell me about your movements, apparently. Tell me what you were doing on that day. As I mentioned earlier, I was cultivating my skills as a groomer in training. I was trimming the coats of the animals at the time. Did the murder cause a panic? Imagine, I imagine the entire prison must have been an uproar, in an uproar. Ugh. Well, but... Uh, uh, there was no panic. I could even hear someone's voice. Wait, hold on. Let me pause for a second. God, I'm confused. Uh, was it a scream? Okay. Someone's voice. Judging from the circumstances, I suppose it was a scream that you heard. So you do have a recollection of the murder. You kept insisting that you know absolutely nothing about the murder. But you do not give credence to your claims. <laughs> well, I thought I heard someone's voice, but... In any case, I don't remember it very well. The scream at the time of the murder. It might be a clue. I better keep that in mind. What happened on the day of the murder? Let's try talking about what happened. And then tell me about the state of the prison. There we go. What was the state of the prison at the time? And I don't remember it too well. My memory is rather poor. Let's try using that clue. You don't remember. Ridiculous. Didn't you say earlier that you heard a scream? That wasn't... I could... I could very well be mistaken. At any rate, I honestly do not remember. You still do not remember. Well, enough with your lies. I ain't lying, you... I mean, I'm telling the truth. In any case... I was absorbed in grooming the animals. By the way, how skilled would you say you are in animal grooming? My technique with the scissors still needs some work. But I am very confident in my handling of the animals. When the animals become frightened, I calm them with my gentle hands. Frightened? Well, why would the animals have become frightened? I don't think that's a common occurrence. W well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Perhaps the reason they were frightened was because of someone's scream. Why are you trying so hard to hide the fact that there was a scream? Are you concealing some vital information from me? Uh, I am doing nothing of the sort. It's true what, that I heard some sort of scream. But I'm not trying to hide it. He's starting to show his true colors. I should be more aggressive with my next move. I'll ask him about the scream. Oh god, I fucking hate the time limit. It's- oh, It's awful. It's time to give him a taste. Of the futility of keeping a secret from me. Uh, when did you hear it? When did you hear the scream? Th that's it! I just remembered! At the time of the murder, there was an event going on. It was the animal show. I had gone there to see it. 
So you're saying that since you were watching the show, you did not hear the scream. That's completely different from everything you've said up until now. Shut up! So what if it is? I mean, my memory is just so hazy. Or you can see. The animal show was very enjoyable. What kind of animals performed in the show? Well, um... I believe I saw a whale. You didn't see the show, did you? You liar. You didn't see the animal show at all. Uh, well, that is, I sort of saw it and I sort of didn't. He didn't see the show. This could be a clue. Who did the scream belong to? Do you know who the scream belonged to? Well, I was mistaken. When the incident occurred, I just happened to be in the courtyard. That's why I did not hear the scream. Let's try using that clue. But you didn't see the animal show. Just how deep are you going to dig your pit of lies? It's obvious that you did not see the animal show. Uh, there's no way out of this. Tell me what really happened. Confess everything you know about the scream. I cannot answer what I cannot answer. I didn't hear the scream from the person who discovered the body. That's strange. Normally, if you hear a scream during a murder, it's usually from the victim. Why would you think the scream was from the person who discovered the body? Oh, my mistake. How? How did you know the scream was from the person who discovered the body? Well, that's because... You're the one that got murdered. Allow me to answer for you. That is because you're the one who discovered the body. And the scream that was heard when the murder occurred didn't come from the victim. It came from you when you discovered the body. <laughs> just who do you think you are? It's just, just, just as you say, but what gives you the right to do this? Hmm. Checkmate. Yeehaw. Oh my god, it's getting late already. It's now clear who discovered the body. You have no more reason to withhold your testimony. Correct? Very well, I'll tell you. But I doubt my testimony is worth hearing. Whether or not it's worth he hearing is for me to decide. I will expose the truth with my own hands. That is my sole duty. Um, I think you're a little off there, Miss Regworth. What do you mean? We're not trying to expose the truth. We're trying to save Simon. Isn't there a goal to help our, out our clients? I mean, you're not a prosecutor right now. You're a defense attorney's assistant. Hmm. Well said there, Kay. She's right on the money, Miles. The official task of the Edgeworth Law Offices is to defend our clients. Your old man who founded the firm truly valued the bonds he had with his clients. So if you're not willing to do the same, maybe you aren't cut out for this job. I don't want to fire you on the spot either, so have a heart, okay? The heart of a defense attorney, huh? In any case, it's important that we hear the testimony of the person who discovered the body. Start talking, Mr. Sawitz. Tell me what happened when you found the body. I was in the workroom over there, practicing my skills. By some chance, I got curious about the adjacent workroom and went up to the door. I peeked in through the small window on the door. And I saw him lying there. A man. Not moving. Dead. I quailed in fright and found myself letting out a scream. If I may confirm one thing. You were in the room, right next to the one where the dead body was found. Within the prison, we call it Workroom B. You were in there the whole time on the day of the murder. Yes, after the 7 a.m. roll call, I remained inside the whole time. In this prison, we have roll call three times a day. 
7 a.m., noon, and 9 p.m. And they check the workrooms during those times too. Exactly. I see. So during the 7 a.m. roll call, there was nothing amiss. And Knightley's body was not in the workroom yet. So it sounds like the murder occurred after 7 a.m., huh? And that's right when the animal show started. Correct. The other prisoners went to, went to see the animal show. Meaning anyone who did not see the show does not have an alibi. Do you understand what I'm saying, Mr. Sawit? Yes, that is certainly true. However, I merely discovered the body. His testimony has a clear contradiction. I should press him about that first. Oh, it's the, um, it's about how he just, like, took a look in. The work room over. Got curious, I went up to the door, did you now? You were curious about the adjacent room. Precisely. I felt the need to look inside. Why did you feel that way? Even if you asked me why, I just did it on a whim. So you weren't concentrating on your training. N no, nothing of the sort, for I am a model prisoner. It's just that the other prisoners had left to see the animal show, which is why I was feeling somewhat lonely. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like. That's like being stuck in a classroom after school's let out. Yes, that's right. And since I couldn't enter the other workroom. I picked into this window. <laughs> Mr. Sawit, please stop telling such feeble lies. You don't seem to understand your posi po posi position. My position? I used to be a newspaper salesman, but then I took up the pet group training. What about the bracelet on your wrist? It proves that you are unmistakably a prisoner. And as long as you wear that bracelet, you should not be able to move around as you please. As soon as you went through the door, the sensor would have sounded the alarm. Oh, uh, that is... Peeking into the adjacent room is impossible, when you couldn't even leave the one you were in. Ah! Ooh-wee! Nice one, Miles. That's a real humdinger. But does that mean Mr. Sawit didn't see the body? I'm not sure. Perhaps we should let the man himself explain it to us. Huh? Um, you see, that is... well... Forgive me, it appears my previous explanation was lacking. I shall clearly explain how I was able to see the body. Hmm, very well. Let us hear your revised testimony. There is a rather well-known technique among the prisoners here. If the hand with the bracelet stays in the room, you can step out without sounding the alarm. That's how I was able to peek into the adjacent room. The moment I realized that the man inside was dead, I let out a scream. Let me take a look at this fucking map. It doesn't say which way the doors open. Oops. Wrong button. Hmm. So that means... He kept his arm inside workroom B while he peeked into the adjacent room. I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention this to anyone, especially the guards, okay? Is that what he was trying to hide earlier? I should try asking him for more details about a few other things as well. Why would you do something so troublesome and potentially dangerous? I heard a noise coming from the adjacent room. It seemed odd to me, as there should not have been anyone inside. So you peeked into the adjacent workroom as soon as you heard the noise? Yes, yes of course. I peeked in as soon as I could. I see. Is there a problem with that statement? So you looked into the adjacent room immediately after you heard the noise? If that was true, then you should have seen more than just a dead body. You should have seen the person who made, who had made the noise. That—that that is, um, well, 
and looks really shaken. Mr. Sawitz, answer me. What did you really see? If you intend to remain silent, I will have no, no choice but to assume that you are complicit to the murder. Oh, um, please forgive me. It's just that I couldn't even believe what I saw myself. It may have been just a dream. I hesitate to even recall it. Tell me what happened. Very well. I will be frank with you. I saw a dog. It was a nightmarish scene. A large black dog was biting into the neck of the victim. What? What did you just say? It was a truly hellish scene. That dog and that dog killed him. Oh, I think I'm gonna be sick. That's some grade A trauma right there. Sorry, wrong voice. I was chilled to my very core and let out a shriek. A man-eating dog inside this zoo of a prison. That was everything I saw. Do you believe me now? Yes, I do. And I doubt one would be able to lie about something like that. Would you add that to your testimony? Certainly. The moment I realized that the man inside was dead, I let out a scream. Oh, into my heart, there was a black dog. Oh. And to my horror, there was a black dog biting his neck. The black dog was biting the victim's neck. Yes, blood came pouring out, and as a result, the dog's mouth became stained with it. Stained with it. Ugh, stop, stop! You don't need to go. You don't need to get that detailed. At that time, was the victim. Mr. Edgeworth, why did you ask him that? Okay, why did you hit Uncle Ray? The man did not even flinch. He must have been dead already. But the blood continued to gush from his neck. He most likely had passed away already. His hands pa moved nearly an inch. Ugh, way too much detail. Are you doing this on purpose? Certainly not. I'm just trying to give an accurate testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, Shall I add that statement to my testimony? If you would. It was terrifying. A truly terrifying sight. He most likely had passed away already. His hands moved nearer and in nearer an inch. The ring with the snowflake insignia glimmered, with no purpose but to catch my eye. Uh, okay, yeah. Crime scene notes. Objection! But yeah, he was covered. That's right, I'm getting, like, really tired. Ooh, why are we getting so tired? A ring with a snowflake insignia. Yes, that is correct. It was clearly engraved on the surface. I see, your testimony is very accurate. But it's a little too accurate, if you ask me. And what's wrong with being accurate? You state that you saw a ring with a snowflake insignia engraved into it. And it's true that the victim was wearing such a ring. See? Was I not correct? That is not the issue I have with your testimony. Take a look at this picture. Okay, good night. As you can see, the right hand is covered by a sheet. It should not have been possible for you to see the engraving, from, engraving on the ring. Unless you had approached the body and lifted up the sheet for yourself. You said you only looked into the workroom through the door. And yet, you gave such a detailed account of what you saw. Who do you think you are? Acting all high and mighty. I, I'm telling you. I saw what I saw. Oh, the victim must have moved his arm after I saw it. I don't think so. You said as much earlier. The man did not even flinch. He must have been dead already. The victim was already dead. How would he have been able to move his arm? This guy's looking pretty suspicious now, yeah? Frank saw it. What are you hiding, you scoundrel? Oh, no. I ain't... I am not. That is, you're wrong. 
I know what I saw. <laughs> he did it again! Shut up already! Stop making a fuss about every little thing I say! You're just a defense attorney's assistant! He has finally shown his true self. Whoa, I guess the cat's out of the bag. A black hairy one at that. Just been flying. I'm just your friendly neighborhood witness! You're really just a witness. I would say that you are rather suspicious. What was that? You saw something that could not have been seen from the outside of the room. How is that possible? The logic behind it is simple. Mr. Sawit, this is where you saw the body from. When you discovered the body, you went inside the room where it laid. Since you saw the engraving on the ring, that is the only and only possibility. Heh. <laughs> Even if you say that, you ain't got no evidence, do ya? There's the evidence that shows that I was in that room. I was growing pets at the time. In the room adjacent to where the body was found. I even went so far as to borrow some rubber gloves. Show me the evidence that proves I was in the room where the body was found. Oh, the rubber gloves, you say? <laughs> Mr. Sawitz, what were you doing when the body was discovered? Can I tell you already? <laughs> Didn't I tell you already? I was practicing being a pet groomer. I see. In that case, do you happen to recognize this glove? Oh, that's... This was found near the body. It is believed to have been dropped by the culprit. By the way, I noticed that you also have a rubber glove hanging out of your apron pocket. No, this is something else. Looks like you're missing one of your gloves. You can find you can find gloves like these anywhere in the prison. Your evidence proves nothing. Hmm. Perhaps we should hand this glove over to the police for fingerprinting. I'm certain they will find some interesting results. Okay. I'm not gonna end this until I finish this episode. I don't care. I don't want to split this in two. It's over. Objection. What the? <laughs> Pretty cool, right? My objection, voice. Mr. Shields, could you save the jokes for later? I'm not joking. Because it's not over yet. There's still something else. Something that's clearly odd. And that guy's a prisoner, you know? He's got the bracelet and all. That's right! How did he get into the other workroom? The sensor would have set off the alarm, right? He's right. That's the only thing we don't know yet. Not so fast, Mr. Prisoner. Could you fill us in? That's pretty weird. The bracelet should have been his last line of defense. Defense? That's right, Kay. He was useful evidence for Mr. Prisoner here. He could have claimed that due to the bracelet, he wasn't able to enter that room. But he didn't say a word about it. Is there any reason why you didn't? The silent treatment, huh? Well, the judge yesterday did say that silence is golden. Wow! You really are a hotshot defense attorney, Mr. Shields. Defense attorneys always remain calm in a pinch. And smile in the face of danger. That's what your old man taught me. The defense attorney's creed, yeah? So, what's the deal? Why didn't you mention anything about the bracelet? The truth is, it's broken. Broken. Some time ago, I took a spill and the bracelet hit the floor with a loud bang. Ever since then, it has not been able to activate the sensor. Forgive me. It was so convenient, I didn't want to report it. I see. So the bracelet was broken. It didn't really break so easily. If that is true, then there is a problem with the prison security. You, over there. May I have a moment? Here, kitty kitty. You're such a cute little girl. Yes, you are. Meow. Excuse me. Yes, 
What can I do for you? Meow. This prisoner's bracelet appears to be broken. What? Really? That's not good at all. I'll contact the person in charge and have it replaced immediately. Thank you. I'll be holding on to the broken bracelet for the time being. Yes, sir, please take care of it. Can I pet the cat? I want to pet the cat. Let me go pet the cat. What? You would Fine, now the bracelet's been taken care of. Shall we move on to arresting you for murder? What? Perish the thought. I didn't kill anyone. But your bracelet was broken, right? Doesn't that mean you could have gone anywhere you wanted during the animal show? And all I did was find the body. Honest. And it's true that I saw the dog biting his neck. However, I entered the workroom after the dog had left. Why did you do that? Well, I was just... I was curious if he had any, anything of value on him. So he was planning to loot the corpse. That's why he remembers Knightley's ring so well. Why are you looking at me, Mr. Edgeworth? I am a great thief. Please don't put me on the same level as him. But I didn't take a thing. The animal show had ended and the other prisoners were making their way back down here. I hurried back to my workroom and let out the scream to deceive the others. That's when you dropped your rubber glove. I guess his story holds up. What do you think, Miles? Whether he is a murderer or not, one big question remains. Can I pet the cat? How did Knightley get all the way from his holding cell to the prison? You're right about that. It's a real stumper. And there's something Mr. Sawitz said in his testimony that I'm very concerned about. If that dog had any part in the murder. Mr. Sawitz. Yes? What is it? Were there any other prisoners who didn't see the animal show? Yes, there is only one other that I know of. And this prisoner wouldn't have been able to see the show, even if he wanted to, correct? Yes, that's correct. Why do you ask? Just as I thought. I had my suspicions as soon as I saw that black dog. That fiendish criminal. I never expected him to be held here in this prison. Where is his cell? Uh, do you intend to meet him? Him? Who's him? He's a very special man. He receives very special treatment and... Oh, forgive me. I need to watch what I say about him. However, if you value your lives, I would advise you to stay away from him. Hey, cut it out already. You're giving me the creeps. Hmm, puppet master in the shadows, huh? Yeah, I still value my life. He is being held in the special cell. Over there, in that direction. Pet the cat. A special cell. It certainly seems like he received special treatment. Can I pet the cat now? Well, so just who is that this him anyway? To protect my own life, all I can tell you is that he is the oldest prisoner here. My deepest apologies, but I can't say any more. He is truly terrifying. Can you feel me in? It feels like you're, you're leaving Uncle Ray behind here. He is someone I knew in the past. Let's head for the special cell. I believe that black dog should be there as well. Pet cat? Pet cat! Hmm, a cat. Aww, it's so cute! Meow! Okay, could you please talk like a normal person? If I had this little guy with me, Kristen wouldn't be so bad. Prison life wouldn't be so bad. No, no. I mustn't think like that. Meow. I know. All she can understand is cat speak. Is there anything else I can pet? <laughs> can I? Please. Please. Let me interact with the parrot. God damn it. Hey, it's pitch black in there. I can't see a thing at all. Aren't you always talking about how the Atagarasu is able to flap even in the darkest night? Even in the depths of night, when no other bird dares to take flight. And one alone stores to shine the light of righteousness on the world's blight. And that one is me, for I am the great thief Atagarasu. Oh ho! 
Oh, that was pretty cool. Still, I can't see what I can't see. I'm still just a human. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, I presume. Voice, it can only be. It has been far too long. So you still remember me? <laughs> it would be impossible to forget, because it was you who did what none could do. And placed me here in this cell. Um, don't tell me that the dog is talking to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Is there someone else there? I can't see anything, though. Down, boy. It's rude to frighten the visitors. Here, allow me to illuminate this dark room. <laughs> Such noisy visitors from the voices and footsteps. Two more in the back. But it would be rude not to introduce myself. I am called Sirhan Dogen. Mr. Edgeworth and I, we are old acquaintances. <laughs> this man is a former assassin. The blind assassin, Sirhan Dogen. His weapons are sharp knives and a ferocious dog. His appearance is always accompanied by the sound of a bell. It is said that the ringing of this bell in the darkness is the last sound his victims hear. Would you be so kind as to share the reason why you have come, Mr. Edgeworth? That would not be necessary. You are already well aware of why we're here. <laughs> it seems we know each other quite well. Okay, you're, you're not wrong, though. You're not wrong. Okay, we're to suspect. We suspect your dog of committing the murder. The witness who discovered the body saw him biting it. There must be some mistake. My boy is obedient. He would never do such a thing. Right, Anubis? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Anubis may be your guide dog, but you raised him to be a vicious killer. He was one of the weapons you use as an assassin. To begin with, the witness of, of a, is the witness of a reliable sort. Ugh, it's true that Sawit is also one of the suspects. And it's difficult to say if we can trust his testimony. In any case, I think you have the wrong dog. Right, Anubis? Right, boy? I wonder if he knows who the witness is. I would like to hear your alibi from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. yesterday morning. During the animal show. <laughs> I was in my humble cell the entire time. I took up whittling recently. My focus was solely on the wood and chisel in my hands. The prisoners have free access to chisels here. Normally that's not allowed. The warden is a kind soul. She has given me special permission. Kind. Ridiculous. Even five metal chisels would become deadly weapons in his hands. I started out by carving these Buddha statues, but I moved on to other shapes after the 674th. Really? That many? All it takes is time, which I have plenty of. Here is what I am working on now. I did not know that you played chess. Do you play as well, Mr. Edgeworth? I would like to test your wits in a game sometime. I only started playing since my arrival here, so I am still inexperienced. Hmm? What is this piece? It's a three-headed... dog. Just for the fun of it, I carved this hound piece. Chess is a game of war, pawns, knights, and castles. Each side pushing their forces to the limits to take the life of the enemy's king. However, I found the absence of dogs to be strange. Hounds are an indispensable part of warfare. But it is nothing more than folly. I still play by all the normal rules of chess. Isn't it difficult for you to find opponents here in the prison? They always play correspondence chess. Correspondence chess. So you play chess through the mail. 
Prisoners are allowed to send and receive letters, although they are subject to inspection. At the moment, I am waiting for my opponent's next move. So he plays chess with people outside, outside of this prison. Do you know who was murdered? He was Horace Knightley, a most unfortunate lad. Your ears are as sharp as ever. They are all I can rely on. As I thought, he has full knowledge of everything that goes on in this prison. On second thought, he might be fortunate after all. Fortunate? How so? He committed a grave crime, but he was able to avoid punishment for it. An assassination attempt of the president. What a bold man. Assassination attempt. Hey, Mr. Redgeworth, didn't Mr. Knightley just... He may have killed his own superior, but he never attempted to take the president's life. Are they trying to conceal the fact that this, the assassination was staged by the president? Whoa, 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 hold your horses, Knightley. Hold your horses, Knightley didn't attack the president. But Uncle Ray was requested to defend him in court on charges of attempt attempted assassination. You didn't know either, Uncle Ray. So they're trying to pin the whole thing on Mr. Knightley. Now I see why the PIC is taking action. Ah, so that's why they removed you from the case. The pest guy? <laughs> was going to indict him of charges of attempted assassination. And in doing so, they would have twisted the truth. <laughs> I suspected it was a false charge. I heard about it from one of the guards. About Knightley. The pest. The pesto. <laughs> He kept this, this he kept desperately insisting I didn't assassinate anyone. But the courts are supposed to bring the truth to light. I may not be well well versed in law, but I can say one thing for certain. Some of the prisoners here were convinced on false charges. Ugh. That's the reality of it. Right, Anubis? Right, boy. Leaving the truth in the care of the court can be dangerous. Leaving the truth in the care of the court is dangerous. Huh. There was someone who said the exact same thing before. That investigator from Interpol who doesn't trust prosecutors. <clears throat> You're not twisting the truth behind those closed courtroom doors too, are you? Fueled by those ideas, is it any wonder that courts produce nothing but falsities and lies? Rest assured, the next time we meet, I won't be so forgiving. I doubt his distrust has cleared up completely. <laughs> yeah, boy, Lang. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the same way, don't you, Anubis? The truth of the courts and Miss Redgeworth's reasoning both can't be trusted, right? Uh, it is nothing to be upset about. You're not the only one who suspects me. Yesterday, the other prosecutor and that judge came here too. They brought the warden along. How they despise me. Oh, it must have been those two rude people from before. P prosecutor De Best and Judge Courtney. They thoroughly inspected my room, but left without finding a thing. <laughs> It seems they were searching for the murder weapon. It is a shame. They searched the other prisoner's cell too. Not just mine. Yet they were still unable to find anything. All that hard work was for naught. <laughs> this is quite a problem. What should we do? So its testimony alone won't hold up in order to confront him. We'll need evidence. Now, if my guests would be so kind as to leave. Right. Anubis, show them the way out. Uh, does this mean what I think it means? Let's get going, Mr. Edgeworth. We shall meet again, Dogen. 
would be a shame for our long-awaited reunion to end so soon. I'll be waiting. Now then, we still need to find that murder weapon. Mr. Edgeworth! She went all the way up there. It's fine now, Kay. Come down from there. Where is Mr. Shields? He meets me. He just took off, running like death was after him. Good grief, that man. What should we do now, Mr. Edgeworth? We'll continue investigating. First, we should... Start by solving that one mystery. Knightley's body was found in the workroom inside the prison. However... He was supposed to be in the detention center's holding cell. How did he get to the prison under such tight security? Let's go investigate the holding cell of the detention center. That was where Mr. Knightley was held, right? But what about Uncle Ray? Let's just leave him be for now. I thought we were supposed to be his assistants, though. That's fine. The victim's cell in the detention center was this way. Let's check it out, Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth, sorry. Oh my god. Who this? Oh, this is truly just dreadful. Hmm? What happened? Ah. It's the warden, Miss Rowland. She must have come from behind that no entry sign. So we still won't talk. Even after all the trouble you went through to get the evidence transferred from the pre precinct. That's right. I don't know how many times I've tried. I can't report back empty handed. An assassin sure is one tough cookie, huh? Did you just say assassin? Oh my! Pardon me, but were you talking about Sirhan Dogen just now? Oh, eavesdropping, were you? You naughty boy. Did you question him personally, Warden Roland? Not just him. I tried to have a heart-to-heart -heart with all the prisoners and suspects. In my home, we're all family here. It's only fair I invite them to my warden's office. The warden's office. Oh, have you taken an interest in my room as well? It's just down this hallway, but outsiders are not allowed past this point. Down the hallway, so around here. So around there. <laughs> it's such a lovely room. People do so enjoy being invited back there. I always show, show them the splendid view of my precious courtyard. The courtyard of this animal filled prison. I'd sure love to see it. I'm delighted that you want to see it. However, I cannot invite you. What? You're not a child of our home. If you want to come to my room, you'll have to be convicted first. That's rather hi that's a rather high hurdle to clear. Goodness me! Look at how long we've been talking! I was just about to feed Ali her lunch. Ali. She is my favorite little angel. Now if you'll excuse me, I must be off to the courtyard. Toodaloo! I never got a chance to ask her about Dogen. Well, let's head over to Nightly's cell. This is the victim's cell. When did Mr. Knightley arrive here again? It was after the President's welcoming ceremony, on the night of March 25th. So when and how did he move over to the prison? There might be some evidence left that we can ans that can answer that. All right, let's get cracking, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm, a reflection in the mirror. Huh, it's a security camera. A great thief's arch enemy. I guess they don't take too kindly to thieves here. There's no reason for a detention center to be kind to thieves. I mean, why would they have an alligator, though? I mean, to be fair, they do have a polar bear, so... Guard! I would like you to check the footage of the security camera. 
If you find any problems, report to me at once. Understood, sir. Mr. Regborth, is this a dining menu? You can choose your daily meals in this detention center. However, unless you have the money, you won't be able to choose what you want to eat. In the end, the world revolves around money. Doesn't this mean that the rich won't have to reflect on their crimes? Yes, well, those who come here haven't been declared guilty yet. There are a few good people who don't need to reflect, probably. Hey, remember when you were here? Sounds like you're just making excuses for them, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> Why should I have to come up with excuses for the detention center? Mm, what's this? Huh, there's something on the desk! It seems to be some kind of memo. Let me take a closer look. Open it from there. Hurry up and open it. Why are you getting so excited? What are you saying? Doesn't everyone get excited when they're opening a box? I think that probably applies to you only. These are chess pieces, right? I saw something similar in your office, Mr. Ashworth. Huh? But the pieces here are black and white. Those are the correct colors. My pieces were custom made. Custom made? That sounds like treasure to me. Her eyes are sparkling. Does she intend to steal it? Oh hell no, I fucking hope not. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why this, like, detention... The holding cell looks like this. my blue jacket guy chest set. Get your own that dude coffee. I'm on, okay. See here, we have a jacket. It's Horace Knightley's suit. According to the results of my investigation. Hmm? What did you find out? A man who looks good in a suit leaves a more favorable impression with the ladies. Ah! Uh, next time I'll investigate men who look good in frills! Please don't bother. Hmm, this newspaper. It's missing a few pages. Yeah, it does look way more depressing. It's literally just like a room, probably with a toilet, and like... A little ledge and uh, tatami. They appear to be torn out. Why would someone tear out the pages from a newspaper? I mean, they use it to clean their cell instead of a rag. Clean the cell. It's quite possible. Something seems off. The floor here is clean. Was it mopped recently? It seems strange that only the area in front of the bed has been wiped clean. Oh, oh no. It's not as dirty as I thought it would be. And the toilet paper shows no signs of use. Looks like there are no problems with the toilets. 
Eh, there's a huge problem. What's the problem? It's totally awkward having the toilet out in the open like that. They need to think more about the, en about the end user. This facility wasn't designed with the spirit of service in mind. Uh, oh my god, it's just like a lot of like examine, examine, examine. Ow. Hmm. Listen, speaking of like those like snow cleaners or snow plowers or whatever, whatever the hell you want to call them. Sometimes they, they like drive in the back of like my apartment block. And when I'm like sitting during like nighttime and I'm watching like something on on my TV. I just suddenly see this like bright light behind me and I'm just getting, I'm get, I get so scared. Look at everything, but I don't want to waste too much time though. Oh wait, examine so the bed. Here, examine the clean part of the floor. Yes, okay. Uh, examine the newspaper, Get got that. And the logic, okay, cool. To connect the two together. Front of newspaper and floor wipe clean. And the floor here is clean. It was probably wiped down with something. Did someone spill grape juice here? I don't know exactly what was wiped away. But I can imagine what was used to wipe it. It's very likely it was this torn up newspaper. Couldn't he have asked one of the guards if he could borrow a cleaning rag? Perhaps it was something he didn't want the guards to see. He pissed himself. <laughs> Luckily, I don't really- I don't actually hear that much noise in my apartment, especially not in my living room. Because, um, uh, I have this, like, uh, windowed balcony. So, like, there's, like, no sound that gets in here, pretty much. Well, there's, like, a tiny bit, but it's not that big of a deal. And at the front, I, like, barely hear it because there is so much snow anyways. <laughs> okay, I floor. Examine. Sheet of paper looks like chest notation. Deduce. Do I just do this and this? Yes, apparently. This chess notation. I've seen it before. You're still thinking about chess. Focus on the investigation. Focus. Chess is quite important to this investigation. Okay, have a look at this. Are these the chess pieces from Dogen's cell? I don't know much about the rules of chess. The rules of chess are not important here. Look at the positions of the chess pieces in this memo, and the pieces in Dogen's cell. Do you notice anything? Uh, pom pom pom. Rook, rook is up there. Oh well, yeah. The hound isn't there. Huh! I don't know anything about the different chess pieces. But if you flip the board around, the positions of the chess pieces are completely the same. Yes, although the memo doesn't include the Cerberus chess piece. The positions of the other chess pieces are identical. What's going on here? I always play a correspondence chess. This might be hard to believe. The Dorgan's chess opponent was... Huh, are you saying he was playing against Mr. Knightley? With this, we now have the evidence to link Dogen with the victim. That was all I needed to do, thank you. So this is what our investigation turned up. It seems we found a major connection between the victim and Dogen. This is terrible, who this, hmm? What happened? The, the security camera recorded something terrible! 
What? Can you let me see it? Of course, sir. I have a portable playback device right here. Let me see it right away. This is... This black thing has got to be do that doggy, right? Up until this point, I thought that the murder took place inside the prison. But it appears I was mistaken. The place where Knightley was attacked was... It was the detention center. And furthermore, he was attacked by Dorgan's dog. This is the decisive evidence. If Knightley was killed in this room, then this piece of evidence we found in the cell takes on a new meaning. Which piece of evidence takes on a new meaning if the murder occurred in the holding cell? reason someone wiped the floor clean. It's possible they were wiping away blood stains. Thank you for your hard work. While I have your attention, may I ask for one more favor? What would that be? There should be a detective by the name of Dick Gumshoe in the, de in the detention center or the prison. I would like you to give him a message. Tell him to check this room for traces of blood and give the results to me. Yes, sir. They should corner that old coot. No, not yet. We still don't know how Knightley and the dog moved from here to the prison. That's true. But once we figure that out... Where should we check out next, Miss Ridgeworth? The guards here might know something about the murder. Let's see if we can learn any new details from them. Alright, let's continue our... Ah! Ah! Sergeant Drew. Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor and the little lady. Fancy meeting you here. This man is Shi Long Long, an Interpol agent. About two weeks ago, he was in charge of investigating one of my cases. I would have thought he'd returned to the, his native country of Shengfa by now. Agent Long, what brings you here? Just some boring work, nothing you need to know about. <laughs> On top of a black dog, we meet a black wolf. Huh? You came alone today, Agent Long? Usually. He'd have a huge police force with him. Mr. Prosecutor, seems you've been busy these past few days. These past few days, is you referring to the incident with the Zheng Fa president? I would have thought you'd be involved in, in his security too. <laughs> Our president doesn't even trust his own country's police force. Look at the results of hiring a private security company. It's laughable. Agent Long doesn't trust the prosecutors or the courts. That's why. He brings along a f large force of capable policemen to thoroughly investigate the crime scene. Yes, if you and your subordinates had been there, the results might have been different. My subordinates, huh? They're no longer with me. They're not with you. Funny, looks like I'm a real lone wolf now. <laughs> Agent Long, just what happened exactly? Didn't I tell you? It's nothing you need to know about. Well, be seeing him, Mr. Prosecutor. Mr. Long, I wonder what happened? Yes, it troubles me too. But there's nothing we can do about it for now. Okay, 
and let us continue with our, investi our investigation. Got it. First, let's ask those guards a few questions. Hmm, this is a difficult case. What's wrong? Is something troubling you? Sir, one of my uniforms has gone missing. But I'm certain that I placed it in this locker. Maybe the uniform grew legs and walked off somewhere. What kind of logic is that? In any case, I wish you the best in your search. I'll be rooting for you. Yes, thank you for your support. Stolen uniform. Interesting. You there. Have you seen a black dog around here? Uh, of course not. If I had actually seen it, I wouldn't be standing around here so carefree. Um, did something happen with that doggy? Okay, let's not press this matter any further. Hmm, so Dogen's dog didn't come here. Didn't come by the detention center. Ooh, there you are. Oh, no, okay, never mind. Damn it. <laughs> I thought it was Patricia. Why would it be Patricia? Mr. Shields, where did you go? Indeed, I've been searching for you guys this whole time. Walking all around the prison is hard work, you know. That's strange, seeing as you came from the opposite direction. I got some new information. You want to hear it? Do you? You sure changed the subject quickly. I heard a little something from the guards. It seems Knightley caused a bit of an incident two days ago. An incident? You know how Simon said he came to visit Knightley, right? After the visit, when Knightley returned to his cell, Naturally, a guard escorted Knightley back to his cell, while the guard was unlocking his handcuffs. All of a sudden, Knightley struck the guard and knocked him out. It seems he was going to attempt a jailbreak. By the time the other guards arrived, the key to his cell had disappeared. But there's been no reports of Knightley's jailbreak attempt two days ago. Exactly. It's strange, isn't it? Right up until his death, he was still in the cell. Once more, Knightley claimed he never stole the key in the first place. In fact, they searched his cell and the key was nowhere to be found. Did the guard show... Did the guard who was struck have anything to say? No one knows. He was taken to the hospital while he was still unconscious. He's still there now, it seems. So in the end, we still don't know what happened. It's you... Oh, it has to be... Who this? Hmm, that voice. Yes! Baby! What are you still doing standing around here? Oh, well, you see, this is my assistant. Are you here to object our investigation and make me into a laughing stock? Was it Sebastian? I believe obstruct is the word you're looking for. In a way, I think his expression was apt. A pleasure meeting you again, Judge Courtney. I am. I know, you are Simon Keyes' defense attorney, are you not? Well then, let's skip the formalities and celebrate our happy reunion with a hug. Or maybe not. Incidentally, I heard you mention an assistant a moment ago. Yeah, we're assistants at the Edgeworth Law Offices. Prosecutors are civil servants to open a side business is to betray the goddess of law. As long as profit, profit is not our objective, there shouldn't be a problem, right? Yeah, social distance club. <laughs> More like social distance hammer. Ooh. Gavel, I mean. Even better. Yeah, that's it. My here is a volunteer worker. The purpose of my office is to make money. We're pro bono. What a wonderful heart you have defending. Have in defending others without demanding payment. Huh. <laughs> I, I do have an ama amazing charitable heart. More importantly, I'd like you to explain your reasons for arresting Simon Keys. There's no need to. Is that a challenge against me? No, I was speaking with Judge Courtney. I guess it can't be helped. If you want to take on the best, you will fall like the rest. 
I haven't said anything yet. But this is convenient. Then I will hear you out. What were your reasons for arresting Mr. Keys? I see no need to inform you. Sebastian, let us... <laughs> just watch, Justine. Watch as I run around in circles against this useless prosecutor. You think you mean run circles around me? Yeah, that's what I meant. Prepare yourself, Mr. Regworth. He always gets, like, sayings wrong. It's amazing. I love him so much, honestly. So you want to know my reasons for arresting that man? The answer is simple. Yes. We found traces of that guy over there. How's that? Perfectly simple. Perfectly decisive. Right? Of course. I was the first to notice it because I'm the best. No, baby. How am I supposed to go about pressing that? How's that? I got nothing to say. Speechless is in my speechless in my presence. Ah, <sighs> this guy sure talks a lot. No, he doesn't. Did you forget about old bag? Another of those guys. It's another another guy. So you're the one who arrested Mr. Keys, I take it. Mr. De Best, do you have the right to do such a thing? Well, obviously, it was the police who carried out the arrest. But since it was under my direction, should that also count as my arrest? As I expected. It would be diff difficult to deal with both of them at the same time. However, her silence is troubling me. Just what is she thinking? That guy, over there. That's, cer that's certainly vague. Well, don't they say, the best hears one thing and understands ten. You're just being lazy. Explain it more clearly. Sebastian, if, it is so, if it's alright with you, would you please explain it to them in more detail? I'm sure that everyone wants to hear what you have to say. Hmm, huh, alright. If you insist, Justine. We discovered that. We discovered that. Perhaps you didn't know. But the victim carried a chessboard with him. From it, we found that suspect guy's. I mean, Simon Key's fingerprints. Well done, Sebastian. I bless you on behalf of the goddess of law. Look, he's just doing his best. Honestly. <laughs> Please amend your testimony. Are you alright with that, Prosecutor Edgeworth? Y yes victim carried a chessboard. From it, we found Simon Keyes' fingerprints. Objection. Oh, it's a guy. His name is Sebastian. Fingerprints found on the chessboard. Is that the ace up your sleeve? Ace in my sleeve? Huh, ace up my sleeve? Yes, the methods I use are always the best. This ace is my trump card. Well then, allow me to show you that it is not in fact a trump card at all. Simon Keyes was the one who sent this chessboard to the victim in the first place. So it's only natural some of his prints would be left on it. Huh? Oh my god. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you meant the... The ju The... Court me. She's also a judge, you know. That took way too long. These fingerprints are hardly decisive evidence. Perhaps your arrest was a little too rash. Rash? To begin with. This incident occurred in the detention center and the prison. To suspect Simon just because he is the prisoner or a guard is a little unreasonable. Ah! What? What's with him all of a sudden? <laughs> I finally get what you're trying to say. Rash, you mean we were too quick to arrest the guy, right? He was stuck on that? Listen, he's doing his best. He's fucking... Sure, I will 
was the first to lay eyes on him. And I was the first to notice the evidence. That was even faster. But I'm not rash. Sure, Simon Keys isn't the guard or a prisoner, but... Sebastian? Judge Courtney. What are you doing, Justine? Don't butt in like that. Pardon me, Sebastian. Yes, your words on the suspect are very interesting. However, shouldn't you get to be... Get to the best part first. The best part? Why don't you tell them? About your wonderful reasoning regarding the murder weapon. Good one, Justine. A suggestion. Mr. Edgeworth, listen to my first-rate reasoning. Will this reasoning explain why you arrested Mr. Keys? I'm sure I will meet your expectations. Judge Courtney just changed the flow of the conversation. Just what is she planning? It's obvious the metal murder weapon was a sharp metal object. However, the prison man maintained strict control over potentially lethal items. So, that's why I've reasoned that the murder weapon was brought in from the outside. I, I'm not happy with his voice at all. Yes, it was hidden inside that chessboard. And since only the victim and the suspect's fingerprints were, on, were found on the chessboard, isn't it obvious who brought and used the murder weapon? At least it's clearer than his last testimony. It's the best reasoning you can get from prosecutor, the best. How do you like that? He, get, he even gets that wrong. Honestly, I relate. <laughs> now he's mixing up the best with his own name. But could someone really hide a weapon inside a gift sent to a prisoner? <laughs> You'll find a good place if you examine the inside of the chessboard. Inside the chessboard. Is there some place to hide a weapon? As I thought, there are only chess pieces inside. <laughs> wow, what an annoying laugh. Inside the chessboard, huh? Perhaps I should examine it a bit further. This is... The top panel is removable. It's quite deep. Yes, there's more than enough room to hide a small knife. Understand now? This is how the culprit smuggled in the... Huh. What's with the huh? I wasn't even finished! Mr. De Best, there is something you have forgotten. There is a gate at the entrance of the detention center. Eh? Well, there is, but... He means the security gates with the metal detectors, Sebastian. We had to pass through the same check when we entered the prison, remember? Oh, oh yeah, that's it. I remember now. It looks like he completely forgot. It would be impossible to smuggle a sharp metal object into the detention center. Therefore, your reasoning never held, even, never held, even from the very beginning. Overruled! That gate is only used on people. The other, in other words, packages sent to the detention center undergo a simpler check. So they don't use a metal detector for that. Why not use an x-ray machine? Like, I feel like that should just be, like, normal, you know? So they could actually see what's inside of the packages? Ah, uh, fucking lack security. This never should have happened. It seems the guards were too careless. Right, Justine? Thanks for the assist. You're welcome. Now then, Prosecutor Wedgeworth, your cross-examination, if you please. Cross-examination? It's as if we're in, in the courtroom. Very well, his reasoning. Let's see how long it will hold up under pressure. Hmm. Hmm. 
You'd be giving the guards more tools to do their job. Nah. Oh, here is the rebuttal. Okay, here we go. Press fourth. Two, three, four. Press. No weapon was found at the crime scene. Not even inside the chessboard. So where did the murder weapon disappear to? I'd like to hear your answer to that. Th th that's... Well, after the crime, the culprit must have hidden it somewhere in the prison. Is there a problem with the statement? There is a problem. The murder weapon is hidden inside the prison. I don't think so. That's clear from this piece of evidence. Which shows that the murder weapon can't be inside the prison. Have you completely forgotten your own actions? You, along with Warden Roland, conducted a search of the prison. But you did not find the murder weapon, right? Th th that We must have overlooked something! This guy just completely contradicted himself. You carried out such a sloppy investigation. I am amazed that you call yourself the best. Are you mocking me? Sebastian. Please calm yourself. Don't get caught up in the opponent's pace. Fine, Justine. You really think the best prosecutor would be shaken by someone miles behind him? That's a good one. That's the good one. I wish you'd stop messing around with other people's names. In that case, K Faraday is far, far ahead. K, don't you get caught up in this too? Yes. If my best investigation didn't find anything then there must not have been a single weapon in the prison. In that case, there is only one possibility. The criminal must have taken the murder weapon with him when he left the prison. So it's only natural we didn't find it in there. Yeah. Objection. There was no way the culprit could have brought the weapon out of the prison. And this piece of evidence shows why. Have you completely forgotten your own testimony? You! This twice you insulted me! Oh, it seems you remember what I said earlier. Will you do well to remember further than that? What is that? <laughs> Sir! <laughs> Honestly, isn't he just, just the sweetest? Honestly, just a cinnamon roll. This guy! He really doesn't remember anything, honestly, if that if that ain't me though. Like if that ain't me, like I forget. I forget what I'm talking while I'm talk what I'm talking. What I'm talking about as I'm talking about it. Like it mid-sentence, I just forget completely what I talk about. <laughs> it seems that way. The detention center and the prison are equipped with security gates. But also like five, pretty much. Anyone leaving must pass through these gates. Gates equipped with metal detectors. Ah, that's what you. Looks like he remembers now. Yes, there is no way someone would have brought the murder weapon through those gates. And so the criminal could not have taken it out of the prison either. Ah. So then, Prosecutor Edgeworth, do you know where this murder weapon went to? Perhaps the weapon is still inside the prison. But we couldn't find it anywhere in the prison! The reason you didn't find it... ...is because you believed it to be a sharp metal object. We saw the very moment when Mr. Knightley was attacked, after all. If you can say that much, then perhaps you should, enli should enlighten us. What would you say is the murder weapon in this, in this case? From this piece of evidence, the murder weapon of this case becomes obvious. Anubis. Here is footage from a security camera. It shows one of the cells in the detention center. See it with your own eyes. What? This 
this is... This can't, can't be! This tape clearly shows the moment the victim was attacked by a black dog. I believe this is sufficient proof, wouldn't you say? Indeed, this is vital evidence. Horace Knightley was killed in the detention center by that dog. After that, the body was moved to the prison workroom. Our witness claims to have seen a dog in the workroom when the, when the body was found. Of course, a dog couldn't have planned this crime on its own. However, there is someone who could have, who could have. That's enough, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Judge Courtney. It's true this camera footage is vital evidence. However, there is something else you must prove. Actually, you've already noticed it, haven't you? It's just as she, just as she says. There's a huge, there's still a huge flaw in my reasoning. If that black dog is a prisoner's pet, how was it able to move between the detention center and prison? Huh? What will we, what, what will we do, Miss Redgeworth? I still don't know how the dog managed to get from one place to the other. I knew it. What? You don't want to talk. You don't know either. If you do not solve this mystery, I'm afraid I cannot accept your logic. If this was a real courtroom, I would call for a recess now. What? Wait! I'm not finished yet! Court has been adjourned. Leave at once. This isn't the courtroom. Well then, as I said, court is adjourned. Adjourned. I can't prove my argument, but isn't it the same case with Mr. Keys? Whatever do you mean? Just as I don't know how the dog entered the detention center. You also don't know how Simon Keys entered the detention center in prison. Although he came to visit the victim, he was an outsider to the prison. Don't you think it would be difficult for him to commit a crime inside the prison? Judge Courtney, now is now the burden of proof lies with you. Proof, proof lies with you. Show us evidence that Simon Keys entered the prison. <laughs> you want me to present evidence? I'm happy to oblige. Ma'am? What? She really have evidence. It's about time I told you. Now that I know the basis of your reasoning, Prosecutor Edgeworth. What is she thinking? It seems you don't even know Simon Keyes' real occupation. He is a circus performer. A circus performer? Yes, have you ever heard of the very big circus? Circus! <laughs> But of course, yesterday was a day that I wouldn't have missed for the world. Wouldn't have missed for the world. Did you have some kind of important meeting? Oh heavens no, I despise meetings. It was the animal show, of course. Seems you realized. On the day of the incident, an animal show was being performed at the prison. And the show was put on by the very big circus. S so then... Do you mean Simon is... Simon Keys entered the prison as a staff member of the animal show? You won't see the clown. That we know for a fact. It's just the animals. Huh. <sighs> this woman. She's been concealing this fact the whole time. She only planned to reveal it after hearing my reasoning. Come to think of it. What are you doing, Justine? Don't butt in like that. Pardon me, Sebastian. Yes, your words on this suspect are very interesting. However, shouldn't you get to the best part first? I'm sure the best was going to say it then, but she stopped him. <laughs> Ah, how do you like that, worthless prosecutor? You didn't do anything. <laughs> well then, now it really is time for a recess. 
I'll end with some advice. I had already doubted your abilities as a prosecutor. Which is why I relieved you of your authority. You'd best not forget that. What are you trying to say? The PIC can st the, the PIC? The, the PIC? <laughs> Can still take away your badge. If you value your badge, I'd advise you not to show your face before me again. Is that a threat? That the goddess of law is merciful, but that doesn't mean you can get away with everything. And one more thing. I must digress. I suggest you stop with this, this defense attorney act. It's none of your concern. I don't intend to abandon a case I am involved in so easily. Poor defense attorneys have a relationship of mutual trust with their client is vital. It is very different from the way of the prosecutor. In any case, you didn't even know about your client's occupation. <laughs> well then, I must be going. May the blessings of the goddess of law be upon you. Did Simon lie to us? It seems he lied to Uncle Ray, too. This complicates matters. Why'd he do that? Hey, hey, Miles, don't tell me you got cold feet already. Courtney Pie is quite a handful, but giving up is still uncool. A defense attorney's creed is to never give up, remember? You're my assistant. Of course, I don't plan on giving up either. It's just... My theory that he couldn't enter the prison no longer holds. It looks like we'll have to investigate once more. Oh my god, I still have two chapters left. Uh, but it's the end parts. Why did you not mention that beforehand? No, but I did! <laughs> did I mention- oh, I forgot. You're a member of the Berry Big Circus! No, it's just that, you know, I'm not! I can't call myself a member yet, I'm just a new recruit. Regardless, that still makes you a member. <laughs> So why didn't you tell us that before? If I had told you I was part of the circus, it would have made me look suspicious, right? Since I already knew Nightly and all that. I mean, not telling us that you were a part of the circus, and then us finding it out afterwards is even worse. So, like, you made my hat, by the way, right? Mm. Oh. Oh my god. <sighs> I didn't think anyone would believe what I had to say. Not even you guys, Kay. Didn't we promise to believe in you? But, Mr. Edgeworth, you're just kind of scary. And you're, ju you're just terrible at getting info from people, aren't you, Miles? Hmm, <laughs> that's none of your concern. Looks like we need to have a talk with him again. So, um, what did you do in the circus, Simon? I guess you could say I'm a wild animal tamer. I'm still just an apprentice, though. Wow, that's incredible. So you command lions and tigers to do your bidding, right? No, oh, nothing crazy like that. No way, no way, no way, no way. My partner is this little guy right here. Is that money? Is that money the monkey? And that makes you a wild animal tamer. It's more like an organ grinder than a wild animal tamer. <laughs> it is money! Fucking knew it. Hey, money, cut that out! He can be quite a handful sometimes. I thought organ grinders control their control their monkeys. Control their- I thought organ grinders control their monkeys, not the other way around. Tell me about the very big circus. 
Yesterday, you told us you were just a regular employee, correct? Even if I'm a member of the circus, I'm still legally an employee. You read it to us. Nature's like any regular company. The ringleader is the boss and I'm just a grunt. Oh my god, you're right though. I even had a supervisor. She's the head of the wild animal tamer division. No matter what kind of fierce creature, they all immediately follow her every command. <laughs> she might even be able to hand get a handle on Miles here. I am not a wild animal. Did you and your supervisor take part in the animal show here at the prison? Yeah, it was just us two. It was only a small operation this time around. Basically, my supervisor takes center stage and I take care of all the dirty work. Well, I did have a tiny part in the performance. So there are only two members of the circus that are related to this case. So can you tell me about your movements around the prison? Okay, I went to meet Knightley two days ago around noon. And that's when you gave him the chessboard. That's right. And then that night, I started setting up the stage in the courtyard. It was pretty tough going back and forth, moving all the crates by myself. I left everything in workroom A, I think. Just temporary storage. Workroom A. And that's where the body was discovered. Didn't your supervisor help you at all? No way! I can't let her do anything like that! That's my job! After I got everything ready, we started rehearsing. When we left, it was almost midnight. The show was set to start at 8 a.m. the next day and go, until, go on until 10 a.m. The only one who went in and out of there with the out of where the body was found is Mr. Keys. And then the body was found, just before the show ended. You happen to know why you were arrested. It's weird how it happened so fast. I don't think that the pest guy could- would have- I'm like that fucking kid, uh, what is it? Do you ever have a dream that you went and then you went and then you- and then you could and so the so and then and then so and 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 and, and maybe and and then and, and you can do anything. <laughs> Something like that. I'm practically that that little kid. I don't think that that the pest guy would have would just have you rested on a whim, <laughs> even when I read it. I wouldn't put it past him though. Well, maybe it's because of that. When I was moving the crates, I decided to go check up on him. You know, nightly. You went directly into the into the detention block. Did you have permission? No, I had to sneak in. It wasn't a formal visit or anything. Didn't you already see him two days ago? Why would you go and do such a thing? Well, we were only... F we were the only friends either of us had since childhood. He was the same as me. We never had real families. I just wanted to talk with him for a bit. So I went to see him. Hmm. You didn't have a family. Um, when I was younger, I lost the only family I had. My father. So is that it? I know all too well how it feels to lose your father at a young age. So you're the same as Mr. Edgeworth and me. So it was just the two of you talking at the time. Yes, the other cells were empty and there weren't any guards nearby either. <laughs> but then you got found out and that's why they suspected you. What? What? Did I do something really bad? Something must have happened while Mr. Keys and Knightley were alone. That's probably the best logic. It seems that we'll need to talk with your supervisor as well. She should be here today, too. Probably in the courtyard. Oh, I'm sorry you turned out like this, boss. Simon, if there's anything we can do to help, just tell us. What? What? But I can't do anything in return. Don't you worry about that. We're, we're your allies. That's because we're like birds of a feather. Right, Mr. Edgeworth? Birds of a feather, huh? I suppose that's true. We have a sufficient information about we have sufficient information about your past. I doubt you had a motive to kill Knightley. 
Rather, you are probably the most affected by this by his death. And I doubt someone as timid as you could work up the courage to murder someone. Alright. I'll get you out of here. We'll believe in you. Well, what do we have here? Starting to get the hang of the whole defense attorney gig. You sounded a bit like your old man just now. Hmm. Me sound like my father. <laughs> he would say the defense attorney's job is to be an ally to the deserted. If you're going to ride that stallion into the sunrise, wait for me, I want in too. Mr. Shields, I think you mean sunset. <laughs> yeah, of course. It was just a joke. Want some candy? No, no thank you. I don't like sweets. Sorry, I was the defense attorney for a day. <laughs> well, technically, it was like for a day and then for like a few hours because he had to be in court too. Oh, really? What a shame. What's wrong with the sunrise? The legendary Atagarasu is all about the sun. Since the sunlight always exposes the, exposes the truth. Good grief. For now, let's just head to the prison courtyard and see what we can find there. Huh, the shutter is open! Yes, it looks like that way leads to the courtyard. So what are we waiting for? Come on, let's get a move on! Hmm, huh. she's certainly in high spirits. So this is the courtyard. Just before the body was discovered, the animal show was held here. It looks just like a carnival. Man, I bet it was lots of fun. The prisoners were gathered here when the body was found. So that means whoever saw the show has an alibi. We should start by checking the area for... <laughs> hey! C can you help me, Mr. Edgeworth? You there! Stop right this instant! Ow, 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 ow! Someone, anyone help! Down, Mystique! Down! <laughs> Who are... Looks like you found a new playmate! Good for you, Estique! It wasn't playing around, it was about to eat me! Huh? No way, that's impossible! This child doesn't bite. Often. Often, huh? People normally never get to play with an elephant of clothes. Isn't it wonderful? No, it's not. How old is she here? I don't have her yet. I'm like checking my fucking organizer. I'm like meeting these people and checking my fucking profiles like they're fucking Pokemons or something. <laughs> like, who's that Pokemon? It's Regina! It, it's wonderful, right? It was simply marvelous, little lady. M Mr. Shields! Really? That makes me so happy! So how about a hug, as thanks? Hey, watch where you swing that thing! Weren't you taught not to hit people with your trunk? <laughs> it looks like a stick is friends with everyone! I am an assistant of this defense attorney. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Regina Berry. Nice to meet ya. I'm the great thief and defense attorney's assistant's assistant. <laughs> K for a day! It's a rather complicated job title. And the only one and the and the one playing with Mr. Elephant is a defense attorney, Mr. Ray Shields. Ow. It's not Mr. Elephant. It's a steak. The fantastic Asian elephant. You're incredible, Regina. You made the steak stop right away. 
Well, I am a wild animal tamer after all. Really? And you must be Simon's supervisor. Yep, I am the head of the very big circus, Wild Animal Tamer Division. The one and only Regina Perry. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am Ace Attorney. Ha ha ha, Ray Shields. It looks like he's the one she has a handle on. Hmm. Huh. Yes, she's perfect. What are you mumbling about, Kay? Look at her. She's energetic, fun-loving, and healthy. She could be the new member of the Yatagarasu. She'd be perfect as a great thief. A great thief? That sounds like fun. We could make a hu huge ruckus with the animals. Oh, you can't make a ruckus. A great thief is supposed to be quiet and sneaky-like. Well, the show needs to have flash. Being quiet is kind of boring. Now I should have her here. Yes, here we go. She's 17. Also, they're, they're the same age. They're the same age?! How old was she in Ace Attorney again? Was she 16? Aw, oh, I guess she's not very thief-like after all. It seems there has been a breakdown in negotiations. Alright, let's get started, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's check out anything that looks suspicious. We'll even look through the barbed wire if we have to. Yes, we need to gather more information about the case. We should also try talking with anyone connected to the case. Talk to Regina. Head of the Wild Animal Tamer Division. Are you Mr. Key's supervisor? That's right. Very big circus was created by my daddy. But daddy died in a murder incident. Y your dad is... But after that, our current ringmaster made the circus even bigger. Mo. The ringmaster is daddy's close friend. Close friend, mm hmm yeah. Close friend. He's like a funny uncle. Wow, a funny uncle. That's great, Regina. Yep, Uncle Mo established the Wild Animal Tamer Magic and Ventriloquist Divisions. Only the Wild Animal Tamer and Ventriloquist Divisions have subordinates, though. Close friend. God, you remember how fucking gay they were portrayed in the anime? That was shocking. Just old guys being pals. Bro, bro, what if what if we started what if we started a circus together? Bro. <laughs> Very Big Circus is going to become even more famous! Yes, yes, that sounds amazing! The way these two are carrying on, I'd hate to be a, put a damper on things. Could you tell us about the animal show? It's an amazing show! It has a storyline and everything! What's more, it's a love story! Doesn't that sound wonderful? <laughs> Very nice! You're the hero in Regina Pie! Nope, the heroine of this show is a steak. And her partner is Regent the Tiger. It's about the forbidden love between an elephant and a tiger, ma'am. <laughs> that episode didn't have, even have gay undertones. I s remember I said it as a joke and then we got to like the end and it was just like, no, that's literally what it was. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. Elephant and tiger. Forbidden love. That's right. It's what they call a love triangle. Isn't it romantic? There are th three sides <laughs> in the <a> triangle. <laughs> That's why it's called a triangle, right? It's, it's because it's three angles, but 
Yeah, I was literally. <laughs> Let's run away and start a circus together, bro. <laughs> But how can it be a love triangle with only two? It sounds amazing! Right, Mr. Edgeworth? Heroine. Mystique is a female elephant. Female? A female. Um, since it's a love triangle, shouldn't there be one more animal involved? Yep, the third animal. He's the one who interferes with the love between Astique and Regent. Ah, no, there was, there was, a, there was a third one. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you think it is? Well, since it's a circus, perhaps a lion? I think a crow would be nice. <laughs> the third animal is a naughty little monkey. The scale suddenly got smaller. Ah, oh, Money the Monkey. Nope, the one who plays the role of the monkey is Simon. What? <laughs> what? Listen, that's not the problem here. <laughs> Money is a little too small. He's like the villain who tries to break up the love between Astique and Regent. How will Astique and Regent control their own destiny? Isn't it wonderful? I... I, I guess? I thought Mr. Keys just did all the grunt work. Wouldn't you feel sorry for Simon if he didn't get to perform on stage? Could you tell me about the preparations for the show? Simon handled everything. So I don't know that much about it. Simon insisted on it. He wanted me to focus on the show. I saw Simon doing something near the well, though. The well? If I recall, it was behind the stage. I'd better go take a look at the, look at it ladder. L lad later. <laughs> Why were you thinking of ladders? He even moved the, this giant cage all by himself. Simon is such a nice guy. Th th that sounds like something Simon would do. While crying profusely. During the preparations, Simon went back and forth between the workroom and the courtyard. We were using the workroom to store our, our equipment. Only Simon entered that room, so I don't know anything about it. The workroom? Was it the one where we found the dead body? So Simon was the only one who entered workroom A. Man, the bad news just keep on coming. Sir Lawyer, please promise me you'll help Simon... Don't worry. Despite his looks, Mr. Edgeworth is really amazing. Despite my looks? And just what is wrong with the way I look? Okay, anyways. Uh... I need to examine this. Danger! High voltage! These signs really do exist! On the other side, you can see what appears to be the detention center's garden. It's just as Warden Roland said. You can see the garden from her office. If it weren't for this barbed wire, we could take a look at the garden on the other side. That is Warden Roland's price garden. I doubt she'd let us in so easily. Oh my! There you are, Regina, darling. Hi, I was looking all over for you. I wanted to have a little chat with you. Could you tell me a little about this person? Currently, this place is my pride and joy, which I like to call our home. When I first came here, this prison was in terrible state. Terrible state. You mean the prisoner's attitudes. There are no bad children in my family. It was the environment that was terrible. That's why, after giving it a lot of thought, I enlisted the help of the animals. 
Being together with animals will soften up even the most hardened criminals. Right now, everyone has returned to their most honest self. Just take a look at Frankie. He's a model prisoner. A model prisoner who was trying to steal from a dead boy body. There are lots of model prisoners here, but Frankie is number one. He is proactive with his job training and helps out the, with the chores. Don't the other model prisoners do job training and chores? Huh? <laughs> Don't be silly. They all do, of course. It's just that Frankie here, he has his sights set on something different. Hmm. Something feels strange. In any case, he's a very good boy. Please get along with one another. The enchanting music. The prancing animals. The very big circus is fabulous. My head is killing me. <laughs> if you come here, you can see a show once a month. Yeah, I don't imagine that is false. So... Really? Then maybe I should. Was she just thinking about committing a crime? Once a month, you say? Is it always the very big circus? Of course! I'm Regina Darling's biggest fan! My darling Regina, she's just so fabulous. Ma'am, <laughs> she's such a cutie pie, I could just eat her up. She really likes her darling Regina. That's why I'm worried about poor little Simon. If he is found guilty, Regina darling will be heartbroken. Mr. Lawyer, please take care of little Simon. If there's anything I can help with, please don't hesitate to ask. Okay, cool. God, I can't believe I have to talk to you again. Huh, Miss Returney, how are we doing today? We're doing... Hey, we just met a few moments ago. Please do forgive me. Ever since I've come here, I've been working on refining my speech. That's not the only thing that needs refining. Right now, I'm helping out with the cleanup after the show. Ah, but if there's anything you need, please let me know. You'll have my full cooperation. I'm in the middle of volunteer work right now. As you can see, I am a model prisoner. I have been reborn inside this prison. Reborn as a thief. Th th that was... The devil made me do it! How can you blame the devil? You're a disgrace to thieves! I have nothing to say. I still have much to learn. As a thief. I mean, as you can see. Wait, well, you no, know, he was a thief originally, and then he murdered. And now he's a thief again? And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Old habits die hard, I guess. But as you can see, I've exchanged my bracelet for a working one. I will continue to devote myself to being a model prisoner. Again with a model prisoner. Give it a rest already. I'm training to pay my debt to society once I become eligible for parole. So you were training instead of watching the animal show. So there were only two people who did not watch the show. Sawit and Dogen. Why didn't you say anything about Dogen earlier? Well, if you asked any inmate at this prison, they'd all think twice before telling you. That person is like the ruler of this place. Around here, we call him the supplier supplier. If you ask him nicely, he can provide you with anything you want. What? Is that allowed? Normally it's not allowed, but with him, it's another story. He supposedly has a secret route to procure these goods. As a supplier, Dogen would be in, posi in a position of power. However, I put all that behind me. All I care about now is supplying mud packs to the animals. Mud packs? I coat the animal's fur with my mineral-rich mud packs to give it a beautiful shine. To help with my training, I give them to all the animals in the prison. Each and every one of them. Mud, huh. Could be related to that piece of evidence. 
I should present it to him. Rubber glove. Th that's the rubber glove I dropped. Where did the mud on this glove come from? Ah, oh, that's the mud from my mud packs. At the time, I was practicing applying my mud packs. Could you tell me when this took place on the day of the incident? Since the animal show had started, I'd say it was around 9 a.m. The mud packs turned the animals' bodies pitch black, and my heart was pure white. I was totally engrossed with covering the animals in mud. Person life must be taxing on his stress levels. Thanks to the warden's policies, I can undergo job training here. I owe her a debt of gratitude. Okay. Northeast. This crude looking well seems handcrafted. Was it built built by the inmates? There are a bunch of tools lying around the well. Long piece of rope and a heavy looking weight. It weighs 33 pounds. It says it right there. It e There's even a couple of pulleys. Okay, please stop touching other people's things. Stingy pants, I'm just checking stuff out. It's not like I'm gonna t going to take it home with me. Still, these tools, what were they used for? But really, I would have loved to show everyone yesterday. You did a wonderful job on the stage, Regina darling. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. I'm glad all the prisoners came to see it. Well, about that, just between you and me, not everyone came to see the show. That would be Dogen and Sawit, I, I imagine. And there were three people who didn't see your show yesterday. Unbelievable, really. Excuse me, but did you say there were three prisoners who did not see the show? That's right. I took a count and there were three empty seats. My butt. And we even had the correct number of seats set out. Doesn't that seem weird to you, Mr. Edgeworth? It does. We had thought that Dorgan and Sawit were the only two prisoners. Who were not present in the courtyard during the show. That doesn't add up. Where did the third person go? Further investigation is needed. Ah, I was having so much fun talking to you, Regina darling, that I completely forgot. It's time to feed my baby. My baby. Ah! Hey, you were right. It's an uh, uh, alligator. Oh, Allie, you look as cute as ever. Oh, how cute. So her name is Allie? Yep, she's Allie the alligator. She's my favorite out of all my family. How lovely. I want to try petting it. If Regina Darling wants to pet it, go right ahead. I'll allow it. You seem pretty excited. We... We need to go check the, uh, the prison cells, don't we? That's right. Let's look for the third prisoner who didn't see the animal show. Gumshoe. Mr. Edgeworth, I finally found you, sir. Detective Gumshoe, I take it the investigation is running smoothly. The judge and that prosecutor haven't shown up yet. Oh yeah, I also got your message, sir. What was the result of the examination of the victim's cell? We hit the jackpot, sir. Traces of blood were found on the cell floor. There wasn't a whole lot of... Lot there. Wasn't a whole lot there, though. This should prove that the murder occurred in the holding cell. Indeed. The probability has increased. However, we still cannot say for certain. I thought you'd say that, sir. So I asked the lab guys to look into it a little further. They're running an, an, an analysis on the blood, so we'll know soon if it's the victims or not. Way to go, Gummy. Good thinking. Detective, you've outdone yourself. What caused this sudden foresight? 
I'm actually a little hurt that you're so surprised by it, sir. I hope nothing bad comes of this. As we get the results, we can prove that the scene was the holding cell, which leaves. Finding out how that doggy managed to sneak his way in there. Just leave that to me, pal. Since that other prosecutor isn't here, we can investigate as much as we want. That's why I brought my secret weapon with me. Weapons? Secret weapons? That's right, pal. I've gotten us out of a few jams before. Take a gander at Dick Gumshoe's seven secret, wep sec seven secret weapons. Looks like he'll come in handy. Wanna take up his offer, Miles? Detective, please allow us the use of your secret weapons. Sure thing, sir. First, I'll give you a rundown. Secret weapon number one, the trusty metal detector. Perfect for finding all kinds of metallic objects. As its name implies. Next, secret weapon number two, everyone's favorite pal, missile. You can track any scent you want, especially the scent of food. He's much cuter than Mr. Dorgan's dog. And then, secret weapon number three, it's some, uh, this. Isn't that a fishing pole? What are you trying to catch? No, actually, I just brought it by accident. Never mind that. What's next, detective? Um, that's all of them, sir. What? You call them the seven secret weapons, but there's only three of them. That's all I have for now, pal. We can use the rest next time. I can't just reveal them all at once. Why do you think they're called secret weapons, pal? It doesn't matter. We'll just use the three that he's provided. Alright, which one do you want to use? Missile, apparently. You want missile, sir? Hey, pal! Over here, missile! Ah, oh, there he is! First, let's decide what scent he should track down. We are searching for the route Dogen's dog used to, used to get to the detention cell. This route would have also been the same path used to carry the body to the prison. Pet the dog, yeah, I want to! So if we have him track the scent of the body, that should lead us to the path! Hmm? Did you smell something sweet? Really, all I can smell is the scent of blood. It's a very faint sm scent, like cake or something. The scent of cake from the body. Right, Missile, get a good whiff of that scent, pal. Come on, let's follow after him. Let me pet the dog. Up way he is. He's heading towards the special cell. And he's gone straight inside. Yes, let's follow him. This is Dogen's cell, but it looks like he's absent at the moment. Maybe he's being interrogated. What's in here? Shh, I think he's found something. What could there be in this room? Mr. Edgeworth, we better take a look. Look at this, Mr. Edgeworth. There's a small chisel here. I'm not well versed in woodworking, but this seems to be a pocket-sized chisel. A pocket-sized chisel? It must be convenient to have one whenever you go. Is that from a thief's point of view? No, it's from a great thief's point of view. She didn't even skip a beat. It's Dorgan's chessboard. It still has that hound piece on it. Ah, the chessboard the chessboard has legs. Aren't these things expensive? They can't be. This is a very this is very good craftsmanship. Mr. Dogan playing chess is kinda unexpected, you know? I figured he'd be more of a Go player or something like that. Go. Do you play Go okay? I'm really good at Go Bang. But that's not Go. 
Okay, what am I? Biscuits, apparently. A teacup and biscuits. I suppose he has his tea time in here, too. Playing chess while drinking tea in his cell. Isn't this going a bit overboard with the special treatment? It's like he gets whatever he wants. He'll complain to me. You should tell him yourself. I think I'll pass on that. It's a chisel Stogan uses. More than enough for him to murder someone with. Speaking of chisels, it kind of looks like someone used a chisel on your forehead, Miss Redworth. And what is that supposed to mean? See, that furrow between your brow is getting deeper. It looks like it, like, it looks like a carving. I would leave the subject alone if I were you. Hmm. Mizzle, maybe... Is this what you're barking at? Oh, boy. Whoa, hey! Knock it off, pal! Chocolate cake is bad for dogs. If that's how it's gonna be, I'll eat it all myself. Oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> good for you, but it, but it looks like someone else has a problem with that. That wasn't fair, Gummy. I wanted to eat it too. I doubt it's wise to eat food you find lying around a prison. Anyway, I guess Missile was barking at the cake, sir. That was pointless. Is that police dog going to get the job done? He's fine, pal. He was just following his stomach instead of his nose. Let's track down the scent of the body for real this time. Missile. Let me pet the dog. Let me pet the hacking dog. Oh, looks like he's found something else, sir. Oh, it's this cell. This will be Mr. Elbert's cell. I'd like to examine the interior, detective. Call a guard. Roger that, sir. Good work, detective. By the way, is Jailbird still being held in the disciplinary room? No, he should have already returned. He was present during the noon roll call. He may have been assigned to work someplace else. I see. Well then. Maybe examine the cell. Yes, sir. Huh! There's a poster of Mr. Elbert on the wall. What's this next to it? Is this his weight loss tar target? Hmm, he was a former boxer. He probably continued to... Continued with his weight management. Seems he also takes various protein supplements. Muscle protein, hustle protein, weight loss protein, nothing but protein. Which weight class was he aiming for? Sir Redworth, how many minutes do you think this hourglass goes for? Albert is a former boxer, so I'd say three minutes. In a boxing match, each round lasts for three minutes. Bzzz, wrong. The correct answer is around two minutes. Why? Well, because the glass is cracked and some sand is spilled out. What? How could you, how could I have missed that? Uh, oh, ow. Rocky is reading, written here in messy handwriting. Could this be the bear's toy? This prisoner seems very close to his unusual partner. Ah, this takes me back. Didn't you play with stuff like this when you were a kid? No, I don't recall doing that. Well then, what did you play with when you were younger? Chess, golf, and the flute. Things like that. Mr. Edgeworth? Didn't you have any friends? Why must you be so concerned about that? The sandbag shows signs of repeated use. 
Aha! You want a box too, missile? <laughs> Signal Samurai. I guess it's only, only like, canon in the anime, though. Ha ha ha! Look at him go! Can't be. Detective, move this sandbag at once! Yes, sir! Hole! This is... Hey, missile! Come back here! I'm going to! Hold it! I'll stop him, sir! Ugh. It's too tight for me, sir! D detective I can't it can't be helped. I'll have to wait for her to contact me. They just left him in there? <laughs> Hello, Kay, are you alright? I get so worked up. Right now I'm in the detention center. Detention the detention center. That hole comes out at Nightly's cell. Really? Stay where you are. I'm coming over there now. Let me pet the hecking dog! Oh, he actually managed to get into the hole. I thought he got stuck or something. Hey! Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> you really helped out, didn't I? Indeed. She doesn't appear to be injured. The floorboards have been ripped out from under the bed, sir. I see. It seems we found what we were looking for. The passageway between the detention center and the prison is blocked by solid doors. However, there was a secret underground tunnel beneath it. We were following a sweet scent and arrived here. That means... The scent must have come from Knightley's body. Can I pet the dog now? Come to think of it. His body was covered in dirt. It may have been caused by passing through the tunnel. Okay, what was the inside of the tunnel like? It was pitch black, so I really couldn't see much, but... I took some photos. Please show us. Mm -hmm. This is... Spoons and forks. Were these used to dig the tunnel? More importantly, what are these footprints? These footprints, could they belong to a dog? This will surely be vital evidence. However, before we consider that, we have a big problem. Problem? JL Bird could use this tunnel to move around freely. Detective! Confirm his whereabouts post-haste. Perhaps he's... Y you may be right, sir. This is a big deal. No. We're gonna take the dog. No, let me pet the dog! After speaking with the guards, the search for J. Albert was carried out immediately. They searched every nook and cranny of the detention center and the prison. But in the end, they found no sign of him. Did you count? Did you contact the police? Yes, ma'am. We've already done that. We set up. We set up a security perimeter around the prison, ma'am. Right. But this is the first scandal in our prison's history. We're so sorry. She's completely different from before. Mr. Edgeworth, was it? Thank you for finding the escapee's tunnel. But it's a little too late. Mr. Albert has got, has long since left here. I don't believe he has gone beyond the detention center. There are security gates located at the exit of the, deten of the, the detention center. I believe it would have been difficult to get through those, wouldn't you agree? Maybe he has another tunnel. I certainly can't deny that possibility, however. Anyway, there is no use in you being here now. Please return to your investigation. Yes, we'll do that. You guys get back to your post too. Yes, ma'am. Detective Gumshoe, sir. You got the results of that blood test you requested. Good work, pal. These are the forensic results. These are the forensic results in the bloodstain found in Knightley's cell. 
So what's it say, Mr. Edgeworth? The blood is confirmed to have been Nightly's. <laughs> hey now, that's good news. We found the blood stain in Nightly's cell and discovered the tunnel the dog used. Furthermore, the security camera shows footage of a dog attacking Nightly in the cell. We have all the evidence we need. It's time we ask Dogen a few questions. Dogen? Did you say? Please use utmost caution. That man has even as henchmen outside of the prison. Outside of the prison? Is this related to his secret trade routes as a supplier? The police have been searching for Dogen's henchmen for ages. I've also been helping them, but... So that means back then. So we still won't talk. Even after all the trouble you went through to get get the evidence transferred from the precinct. That's right. I don't know how many times I've tried. I can't report back empty-handed. That assassin sure is one tough cookie, huh? You had evidence transferred from the precinct. Yes. We borrowed all the evidence concerning Dogen. I've been interrogating him personally in my office. But, no matter how much evidence we have on him, we can't get a single word out of him. The warden interrogates him herself. Might go that far. Lose your focus and he'll eat you alive. Be on your guard. Whoa, you made Uncle Ray a little nervous. Judge Courtney, what are you doing here? Questioning a prisoner. Did you forget that we're investigating as well? Or rather, have you forgotten my warning? If you value your badge, you should not have appeared before me again. I'm sorry if you thought that I would abide by those words. I won't overlook something important just to heed your warning. I've come for a testimony about the truth of this case, which you have overlooked. You mean to say you require my humble services? As I promised, I have returned to prove that you are the culprit. Mm hmm. Interesting. Do tell. For that, you should first listen to our reasoning. We can say with confidence that Simon Keyes is the culprit. Only Simon Keyes could have moved Mr. Knightley into the prison. And we can show proof of this fact. But first, I'd like to hear your resolve, Prosecutor Edgeworth. If our reasoning is correct, will you submit it to us? Your Prosecutor's badge? <laughs> we'll deprive him of his badge. Is that a threat, pal? Oh my god, yeah, you're right, they do. No, it's not a threat, rather, an act of compassion. Normally, I wouldn't even have taken notice of you since you have no right to investigate. However, since you are able to show proper resolve, I would be willing to let you be my opponent. Are you willing to risk it? Your prosecutor's badge. M Mr. Edgeworth! Miss Edgeworth, sir. Very well. I trust my own reasoning, but moreover, at the moment, I am currently a defense attorney's assistant first, and a prosecutor second. I will not sully the good name of the Edgeworth Law Offices. I intend to see my job through. I won't yield to your threats. So be it. Is this bravery or simply foolishness? On the goddess of law's behalf, I shall be the judge of that. Sebastian, allow me to... Yeah, I got it. I'm counting on you, Justine. I presume you know, the in the, you know of the incident Mr. Knightley caused the day before yesterday. He attacked a guard and stole his keys. Afterwards, Simon Key stopped by his cell with an animal cage from the show. During this time, Mr. Knightley was able to use the stolen key to exit his cell. He then hid the cage while hid in the cage while it was moved to the prison workroom. So Mr. Keys went to his cell after all. 
After hearing you talk about the security camera yesterday, we investigated it ourselves. Why don't you have a look? I have here a printout of the security camera footage. Sebastian is a prosecutor. This is the moment when Mr. Keyes visited nightly. Exactly. As you can see, the cage creates a huge blind spot in the cell. By using this blind spot, Mr. Knightley could have entered the cage. That is our reasoning. Hmm, a blind spot. That means... The camera doesn't actually show him entering the cage. At this time, there's still the possibility that Knightley never left the cell. But why would he be hiding inside an animal cage? Mr. Knightley was planning to escape from prison. That is the only possibility. A prison escape? That's so cool! First Mr. Elbert, and now Mr. Knightley. I won't let them show me up. Okay, this isn't the time to get excited. J. Elbert's escape is no laughing matter. Simon Keyes was aiding Mr. Knightley in his escape. Obviously, he was a hologram this entire time. <laughs> In other words, he was an accomplice. Not bad, Simon. Well, praise him. The cage was transported temporarily to the workroom. Originally, Mr. Knightley was to remain hidden until the end of the animal show. He would then be carried out along with the cage. I presume that was the plan. However... Midway through the plan, he was betrayed by Simon Keyes and murdered. Judge Courtney's reasoning does appear to make sense. However, there must be a hole somewhere. I must not lo I must not overlook anything. Okay. Second press. Hmm. You have proof Knightley stole the keys. It is the only explanation as to why Mr. Knightley would have attacked the guard. Ha, huh, but then it's not proof, is it? This is what you guys fucking refer to all the time as just, like, hypothesis. We will know for certain the movement the guard regains consciousness. Is that really true? Should I ask Judge Courtney for more information? There is one point in your reasoning that is odd. If Knightley did indeed steal the key, I'd expect he'd try to escape immediately. Was it really necessary for him to wait for Mr. Keyes to help him escape? He simply chose the method with the highest probability of success. After stealing the key, he concealed it on his personage. As he waited for the opportune moment, and that is what I believe. Would you believe exactly? He concealed the key. Judge Courtney, such an oversight is unlike you. Knightley could not have concealed the key, and I can prove it. Knightley did not hide the key, and the proof is... in the pudding. Take Haven't the guards informed you yet? They searched nightly after we attacked the guard, and the key was nowhere to be found. Since the key's location is unknown, your logic doesn't hold. I mean, that's not the, that's not the only thing, but okay, so sure, let's go with that for now. That is not an issue. There is an ex explanation. Mr. Knightley had the key, it simply wasn't found. The reason being, he concealed it inside the chessboard. The chessboard? You mean the one that concealed the murder weapon? Come now, how do we know whether or not the murder weapon was really there? Courtney, you fucking annoy me so much! Oh my god, you're so annoying! Seriously. What? Take some responsibility for your own words! Yeah, exactly, okay, you fucking tell her! That was all Sebastian's idea, after all. So those two don't always agree on their reasoning. In other words, once we put all the pieces together, 
Mr. Knightley concealed the key he stole from the guard inside the chessboard. But did you find the key? Can you confirm this in any fucking way? Do you have evidence to prove that? When Simon Keys arrived, Mr. Knightley used the key to slip out of his cell. He entered the animal cage and was transported to the workroom. All thanks to his accomplice, Simon Keys. What I think is kind of funny too is that she's like, Here, I have this printout of this one frame from this video. That proves... That he had a cage with him, I guess, with like a, a blanket over it. God, her logic pains me, literally. Fuck. Mr. Knightley had planned to be carried outside after the show had ended. However, he was betrayed by his accomplice and murdered during the circus performance. But how was he gonna get out that way? Well, I guess there's like a back entrance or something. Mr. Keyes performed in the show. He would have had no opportunity to murder him during the circus performance. Oh, the room! No opportunity, is that so? A story placed itself out on the stage, and such was the case with the animal show. So she examined the contents of the show. The suspect plays the role of the villain who antagonizes the ele elephant heroine. In the final act, the villain is defeated by the heroine's love, and all ends well. At that point, the suspect in the role of the villain is blown away by the heroine's bur burning love and makes his exit. Blown away by the elephant. W was he hurt? After being blown away, the suspect disappeared from the stage. The suspect was absent from the stage for about 15 minutes. Are you saying the crime was committed during that time? Even in such a short period of time, it would still be possible to carry out the murder. Don't you think so? So he committed the crime in 15 minutes, and then returned to the stage. That may have been possible if the crime scene had been the prison. Judge Courtney, the actual crime took place in the detention center. I'm afraid I cannot accept that camera footage alone as evidence. You didn't fucking show us any evidence! God! Courtney! Get the fuck out of here! Fuck! Why are you- how are you so annoying? As for evidence, I have it. Can't say the same for you, bitch. Well then, please show us your evidence. Can say the same to you! Where is the evidence that shows the scene of the crime was at the detention center? What you mean? You mean? You mean? You mean? You mean the white blood stain? You, you mean? You mean that? This is the floor. Oh God, it's a flaw. I am unable to comprehend your mysterious ways because you're dumb. This is what we discovered. The area here was tested positive for Mr. Knightley's blood. Yes. This blood test. Can it really be trusted? To begin with, how were you able to conduct the scientific investigation? Hmm. I happen to have a subordinate. I can't vouch for his competence, but he is a man that I can trust. The detective! And this concerns me. I cannot think why one would disturb the order of law. The prosecutorial investigation committee's influence goes as far as the police department. <laughs> Come in trouble! Forgive me, detective. I'm afraid something bad may come of this. I will accept the fact that blood was found at the detention center as evidence. However... How ridiculous! This is unthinkable of you, you third-rate prosecutor! <laughs> Sebastian, please. <laughs> Mr. DeBest, you're here? I'd completely forgotten about him. Edgeworth, <laughs> please! There's a giant contradiction in your statement. According to the security tape, a dog killed Knightley in his cell. Then after he left the cell, the blood on the floor was wiped away. 
Ah! Did the dog wipe away the blood stains? As if that could happen. That is possible of my Anubis. Right, boy? What? That was one of the tricks I taught him while I was still in the outside world. He makes sure to hide any bloodstains he makes. <laughs> so as not to leave behind any evidence. I was saved, if only by chance. Shouldn't you have taught your dog to shake or something? <laughs> Anubis also performs that trick very well. But the shake I taught him is a little different from others. First, he bites the victim's hand. Stop! 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 I don't want to hear anymore! I see. I understand, Prosecutor Edgeworth. It appears you've gathered a good hand. I'm glad you understand. My argument isn't over yet. Objection overruled. Hey now, that's a little harsh. Sebastian, would you allow me to the privilege of explaining? Sure, Justine. You finally realize. The murder occurred in the detention center. Therefore, that assassin's pet dog. My opinion has not changed. Unless I can understand how the dog was able to enter and leave the crime scene. What's that bitch? She... Her fucking double standards. Her fucking double standards, man. Like, she can just fucking say whatever she wants. Just like, I think she, I think that's what he did. Do I have any evidence? I think that's what he did. But if you, like, want to, like, say something to her, she's like, but where's your evidence? Huh? Where's your evidence, punk? <sighs> I'm afraid I cannot accept your logic, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Oh, and I have that, too. I've been waiting for you to say that. Now let me show you. This evidence shows the route the dog used to go between the, the detention center and prison. This photo! She worships the god of bullshit. It shows a secret tunnel hidden in the prison. That's impossible! A secret tunnel?! This tunnel was dug by the escaped prisoner, Jailbird. It begins in his present cell. And it and it's connected to a holding cell in the detention center. Damn, that's one one hell of a tunnel. My god, what the hell is this? Shawshank Redemption? Namely, the victim's cell. I'm shocked. How did this... Dogen, you must have known of this. Since you used this tunnel to commit murder. In the name of the goddess of law, I hereby reject Prosecutor Edgeworth's claim. On what grounds? On what fucking grounds, bitch? Yes, you fucking let her- you, you tell her. What do you mean? Evidence is everything. That remains true here, just as in the courtroom. They fucking give us evidence for your fucking claims! You don't give us jack shit! You don't show us anything! I'm really getting fucking worked up over this fucking bitch. Oh my God. Isn't that right? I have evidence here. Horace Knightley's autopsy report. Autopsy report? Since when? Why are you surprised? This was delivered straight from the police a short while ago. It's not complete yet, more of a preliminary report. Here, the very word of the goddess of law is written. Cause of death, stab wound to the neck. Died instantly. Murder weapon, sharp metal object. The victim was stabbed multiple times in the same spot with a sharp object. Although, they were unable to determine the actual shape of the murder weapon. They have clear proof that it was a sharp metal object. So do you still stand by your claim? 
that a dog used a sharp object to kill the victim. This can't be! And that is all. The, the court's adjourned. But that still does not fucking prove what bullshit you tried to fucking show to us. The fact that he can fucking walk through fucking sprinklers apparently now because... <laughs> and walk through the bars to get into the cage. That makes sense apparently. <sighs> My god. You're so annoying. Please, yes. But wait, the tunnel contains the dog fo dog's footprints. Perhaps it may have been one of my Anubis's walking courses. I can never tell what Anubis gets up to outside my cell. Something feels unnatural about all this, but I have no evidence. Courtney Pie, you sure pulled out a hidden gem at the very last moment. She waited for the perfect time to reveal the autopsy report. I will let her outwit me again. Appointed attorney shields. Here is the autopsy report from earlier. I apologize for the delay. Oh, it's alright. Thank you. <laughs> I'll gladly accept it. Mr. Shields, I don't believe it's necessary to hold hands while exchanging documents. I'd advise you to stop. Huh? Persist any longer, and I shall call on the strength of the goddess of law. I'll be careful. Justine, well done. Just as I planned. I only acted in, in accordance to your instructions. The autopsy report came straight from the police. I can't refute it. However, if the murder weapon wasn't the dog, Dorgan will be cleared of suspicion. The merciful goddess of law so decrees. If you choose to yield now, your badge will not be taken. What will you do, sir? She says that, but my answer remains the same. Judge Courtney, it is as I said before. I will see my job through. I will not yield to threats. So even now, you still refuse to give up. If you want to keep your badge, then this may be your last chance. Right now, I am a defense attorney's assistant. What I protect is not my badge. But my client... The goddess of law grows weary of your sentiment. The goddess of law grows weary of your bullshit, ma'am. <laughs> now we're talking. Miles is starting to understand that a defense attorney never gives up. Actually, those were the words of your own man. My father. He really is in your blood. You're the spitting image of him right now. You said it yourself. You have changed since you were tainted by Von Karma. It's only now that I've actually come to believe it. Sir so Shields. Well then, Miles. Now's the time to put those skills to the test. Think beyond your limits. If the murder weapon was a sharp object, does that really negate your reasoning? The murder weapon was a sharp object. That's it. There were five chisels placed inside this special cell. Dogen is a former assassin. It's quite possible he could kill someone with just a chisel. In that case, the weapon that killed Horace Knightley was... Is that all? Well then, I suppose you'll be giving up. Evidence is everything, didn't you say? The murder weapon was a sharp metal object. However, such a weapon has yet to be found. What? What, what? So what are you trying to say? Hmm, the only decisive evidence is the actual murder weapon itself. And that was in plain sight this whole time. The real murder weapon is... Dogen's chisel. What did you say? <laughs> Take responsibility for your own statements. The scene of the crime was Mr. Knight Knightley's cell. You said so yourself. If the evidence changes, then so will my logic. That too is courtroom procedure, is it not? If the chisel was used, that means the killer was human. However, that, the fact remains that we cannot deny his the security photo. Yeah, yeah! What about that photo? I'll give you the answer. This photo shows the moment. The dog leapt at the victim. 
Dogen's dog left it nightly. However, the victim did not die at the time. He didn't die. He was only knocked unconscious. The dog didn't move a dead body. It moved the unconscious nightly. And the real killer was its owner. I see. If the victim was moved, it would, would, have been, would have been possible for Dogen to commit the murder. He used the murder weapon. Indeed, the killer is... Sirhan Dogen. It can only be you. <laughs> I bet your teacher used to write on your report card. Needs to pay more attention on what others say. I would think that describes you more. We examine that room, every crook and cranny. Right, Justine? We examined all four of Mr. Dogen's chisel. And found no traces of blood. Hmm. Thank you, Judge Courtney. Thanks to you, I am now certain. Thanks to me? Whatever do you mean? When I came here earlier, I saw five chisels. That's right! There were definitely five there before. Uh, so the one that disappeared was the smallest one. Presumably for portable use. Dogen, where is that chisel? I'm not free to leave this place. I have no need for a of a portable chisel. Not free to leave. In that case, he mustn't have been free to hide the deadly chisel either. Hmm. Dogen, you just dug your own grave. It seems you know something. Would you care to show it? Dogen couldn't leave, so the place he hid the chisel is. In his cell. Dogen is a prisoner, so he can't leave his cell freely. Perhaps he could have sent his dog out to dispose of it. But he would not have been able to confirm the weapon's location. <laughs> so what does that leave? Above all else, special metals tools are allowed in this cell. Even if one chisel were to appear here, no one would suspect a thing. You'd be a fool not to take advantage of that. I see. Of course it's always safest if you do something yourself. But I examined everything. I didn't find anything, any hiding places in the cell. I am certain that the murder weapon is here. The reason you haven't found it is because it was cleverly hidden. You say I hid it. Where exactly? Think. Where could he have hidden it? I have to remember everything up to this point. There must be some clue. Does that mean what I think it means? Let's get going, Miss Edgeworth. Come to think of it, that dog hasn't barked at me once today. Previously, when I came to the special cell, it barked on Dogen's command. Th that's it! That's what's been- that's what's been out of place! There's just one place he could have hidden the murder weapon. Giving up already? <laughs> how dull, how dull. I will present evidence. This piece of evidence shows where you can seal the murder weapon. Hasn't your dog been awfully quiet today? Now that you mention it, it hasn't barked at all. Before it was... Sirhan Dogen, open that dog's mouth, now! Nubis doesn't bark needlessly. I ordered him to do that before. In that case, order it to bark now. Naturally, you should be able to, if you have nothing to hide. It was inevitable. Anubis, show me your mouth. As you can see, a dog of this size can easily conceal a smoke. What? God. Why a chisel? The dog really had one in its mouth! I thought he was unusually quiet. Was he unable to follow the discussion? Sebastian, could you call the forensics department? 
Urgently, please. Uh, I got it! A reaction! This chisel tests positive for blood. What? I guess that proves my theory it wasn't just nonsense. <laughs> Will this chisel be the murder weapon then? It reacted positively for blood, and there is no doubt about that. Finally, you shut up, huh? No? Okay, it was a worse Dogen. Okay, I, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can agree with that, Mr. Sirhan Dogen. Now that the murder weapon has been found, I must ask you for your testimony. We know how your dog got to the, the detention center, and we found the murder weapon. You still think you can talk your way out of this? <laughs> Interesting. This guy! Even at a time like this, is still smiling! Well, Anubis, it seems everyone has become suspicious of you. It's quite troubling, but since it has come to this, we have no choice but to tell the truth. I did not kill anyone. I have long since grown weary of killing. What's this? His face looks completely composed. It seems we need to listen to Mr. Dogen's, ex Dogen's explanation. Please promptly give your testimony. <laughs> Certainly. First of all, I would like you to explain my motive. I do not know anyone by the name of Knightley. We share no connection. So I wouldn't think some motive for murder would just appear out of nowhere. Or are you insinuating my Anubis had a motive? <laughs> he only bears his fangs at others on my command. I do not hunger for blood so much as to kill a man I do not even know. <laughs> Coming from an assassin, it sure is persuasive. <laughs> an assassin who only kills acquaintances. I doubt that would be profitable. I may kill strangers in my line of work, but I never make it personal. Is there evidence that shows a connection between Knightley and Dogen? I should thoroughly review the evidence once more. Second. Present. And then, uh... Objection! Knightley's memo. You lost your touch, Sirhan Dogen. Yes. If you had your dog clean up after you, you should have disposed of, thi disposed of this too. This is a record of a correspondence chess game found in the victim's cell. This record and the chessboard in your cell both clearly depict the same game. What? I've heard that the number of possible chess positions is around... How do I say that? God, you can't just fucking hit me with this bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. Oh, it was- it, it is 10 to the power. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was that or if it was something else. It's around 10 to the power of 120. 10 times 10 is- 10 times 10, 120 times. 100, 1000, um... Is that even a real number? Indeed. There was absolutely no way these two could have coincid coincided by chance. Tell us your reason for killing Knightley. Unless you intend to explain this as coincidence. Okay. 
Well, don't they say that the truth is stranger than fiction? It is as you said. This is merely a coincidence. But there is no way that could have happened. My correspondent's chess opponent was the victim in this incident. What a horrible coincidence. Aren't you shocked too, Anubis? Looks like I have to tell them the truth, Anubis, my boy. The animal show, or something that was when everyone left. Or something that was when everyone left. Anubis brought the body to my cell. <laughs> he had already been stabbed in the neck with a murder weapon. I did not wish to be suspected. So I had Anubis carry the body to the workroom. After that, he pulled out the murder weapon and returned it to me. So you're saying the one who pulled the weapon out was Anubis? That's right. If I pulled out the murder weapon here, the blood would have been a problem. Mr. Redworth, isn't this what Mr. Th what the Mr. Sawit guy said? A large black dog. I don't fucking care to make his voice again. Do his voice again. Was biting into the neck of the victim. What? What did you say? It was a truly hellish scene. A dog. That dog killed him. I see. So that means saw it. Witnessed the moment the murder weapon was pulled out. Oh yes. That prisoner's testimony. It surprised me when I first heard it. It's not often that Anubis makes a blunder like that. Right, boy? Now... I believe that exp that explains my actions. I did not kill him. All I did was remove the murder weapon. Now, will that be all? Anubis is getting tired. Objection. Whoa there, just a moment, Mr. Dogen. Mr. Shields. Isn't there one thing you haven't explained? Why would you need to pull out the murder weapon in the first place? That's right. I understand why he'd move the body to draw suspicion away from him, but he didn't need to retrieve the murder weapon. I thought him just a fool, and how quickly his scent has changed. Care to elaborate, Mr. Dogen? It was because of this bell. The bell attached to the murder weapon, and the bell on my dog's neck. They share a distinctive shape, wouldn't you say? The Assassin Sirham Dogen's trademark. An Assassin's trademark? The blind Assassin, Sirham Dogen, he will always appear at the sound of a bell. Sorry, that's terrifying. The sound of a bell ringing in the dark of night is said to be the last thing his targets hear. Okay. <laughs> you remember well. It has been a while since you last saw my bells, after all. Ah oh, yes, they both look like bells. <laughs> when I prosecuted you in court, I confiscated a knife with a bell attached to it. Yes, my bells. There are only two in the there are only two in the world. Only two. They're custom made, attached to my knife and Anubis's collar. Even though I can only rely on my ears. I can easily identify them. Alas, one has been confiscated and is not in my possession. When Anubis brought the body here, I heard a familiar sound. I thought my knife must have been embedded in the body. So I imagined so I imagined my confusion when I found out that it was merely a chisel with my bell attached. Indeed, your knife is nothing like this chisel. Either way, no spells are my trademark. Moreover, I am the only one in this prison who uses chis chisels. Oh my god, there's still more! With all this, I knew I would be falsely suspected. So I removed the murder weapon and hid it. So you're claiming that you only move the body. Didn't I tell you? That chisel isn't mine. If you think I'm lying... Go ahead and check for my fingerprints. Sebastian! Eh? Me? But how do I check for... Forensics? Yes, ma'am! 
Uh, uh, uh. Reaction! We have fingerprints. They're nightlies, Justine. What about Dogens? Nope. Just nightlies. And there's no evidence of prints being wiped either. Only nightlies fingerprints. It can't be. Um, should we re-examine it? <laughs> See now? I never even touched that chisel. Because I ordered Anubis to carry it in his mouth. In other words, the fingerprints belong to the chisel's original owner. <laughs> the murder weapon's owner. It was the victim. Hmm. This is perplexing. At any rate, I did not touch the murder weapon. In other words, the killer could not have been me. Isn't that right? <laughs> I have nothing to refute that. How could this... Is it really... The killer... Could Dogen's testimony actually be true? This can't be. It seems this is sufficient enough not to warrant any further explanation. As it stands, you have not changed the state of this case. I believe this is more than enough reason for us to believe you of your to relieve you of your badge. To save any needless fuzz. I suggest you hand over your badge now. This is bad, sir. They sound serious. It's regrettable, but with those prints as decisive evidence, I'll have to rethink my logic from step one. But there are still many unexplained things. Why would Mr. Knightley be carrying a chisel? Could be used for many things, perhaps even prison escapes. Well then, how did he carry it into the prison? I mean, the prisoners aren't even allowed cutlery. Right, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Redworth! Hm? Even if your reasoning is off at first, you shouldn't let that confuse you. The most important thing is to arrive at, to, to arrive at the truth, isn't that right? It doesn't matter how you get there. The end result is to save Simon. We have to do everything we can for his sake. Well said, Kay. Nice one, Kay. I really want to scout you out for the law firm now. Remember when Uncle Ray said a defense attorney never gives up? Miles, you do you understand the true meaning behind those words? The true meaning? Those words? Defense attorneys carry the fate of their clients on their shoulders. You are the only person your client can rely on. Just like with Mr. Keyes, we are the only ones who can save him now. We are linked by fate to our clients. That is why we must never give up. There's no way Uncle Ray can go against the teachings of Gregory. So, what will you do? Currently, I am a defense attorney's assistant. No, an assistant at my father's firm. I have made a, a commitment to this case. Therefore, if I don't save my client, I cannot say I, I have achieved it. I will abide by this. To save Simon Keys. No matter how many times my logic fails, I will always find another possibility. Okay, you're finally back. Well then, let's search for that other possibility to start with. Do you think there was a way Mr. Knightley could have brought the chisel into the prison? The method Knightley used to bring the chisel into the prison was... Chessboard. Normally, metal objects can't be brought in to the detention center of the prison, or the prison. They just be caught by the security gate. However, there is one way to avoid this. And that is, if they're sent in a package to the detention center. The gate is only used on people. In other words, packages sent to the detention center undergo a simpler check. So they don't use a metal detector for that. This never should have happened. It seems the guards were too careless. Knowing this, Knightley asked Simon to send him a package. Namely, a chessboard containing the chisel. Well, this has solved one of our problems. The fact that the chisel was not Mr. Dogen's, but Mr. Knightley's. Given this, one major issue remains. The security camera shows a dog attacking the victim. As long as that exists, I will maintain that Dogen, Dogen is the killer. But Dogen never touched the murder weapon. I'm stumped. We also desire a conclusion to this matter. 
Spreadsworth, we can use one of, use one of my secret weapons, sir. Secret weapon number four, the video analyzing machine. Mr. Analysis. What's with that ridiculous name? I, I named it myself, sir. This will let us an analyze video footage in detail. Go ahead. You'll soon see I'm not lying. I don't know what will come of this, but all we can do now is investigate. Mr. Edgeworth, do you know how to use Mr. Analysis? A video analysis machine. Should I hear how to use it? Sure, hear it. I don't remember. Sir, the gumshoe, please show me how to use it. Of course, sir. Okay. Fundamentally, it's the same as an investigative crime scene. Oh, okay, so it's the same as the... Like in, um... Whatever. Well, oh, I'm just skipping it. Pause. Okay, whatever. Okay. That concludes the explanation, sir. Well then, let's turn on Mr. Analysis. Use Mr. Analysis to examine any suspicious part of the video, sir. This is the video from the detention center's camera. I believe this was the moment when Knightley was being attacked by the dog. And if that wasn't the case, then what does it show? Is the person in this video really Knightley? And what is the true form of the black silhouette attacking this person? I should check the video and try to find the answers to these two questions. There could be unexpected things in unexpected places. So be sure to check every nook and cranny of the video, sir. Okay, that's the pause. Uh, let me, let me. Oh, wait, just, okay, I see. Okay, screw it. Uh... Well, it's not the monkey! Th this is... Here we have made a grave mis miscalculation. This animal, this silhouette, no matter how you look at it, it's not a dog. This animal is... a bear. From the silhouette, I'd say the animal is not a dog, but a bear. So then, in that photo I took, most footprints must have belonged to this bear, yes. Wait. Okay. I guess we can't really see them well enough, so we can't really tell, like, if they're bear or dog prints. Hmm. Did you say a bear? Yes. That man is the first to come to mind. Now that we know this black shadow isn't a dog, but a bear, there's a good possibility that the man being attacked being attacked is not nightly. 
Whatever can show that this man isn't nightly. Should be somewhere in the video, wouldn't it, sir? Since his face is not visible, it will be difficult to get direct confirmation. However, perhaps there is something indirectly reflected. Something reflected? Hey, isn't there a mirror in that cell, sir? Indeed. That could be worth examining. Okay, it takes way too long. I mean, that looks like, um... Is that a cap on his head? Okay. Surely it looks kind of like the caps the prison guards wear, sir. You don't think it was a guard who was attacked? Have you received a report of any guard being attacked by an animal? No, not that I've heard, sir. Hmm, then it was someone else wearing a guard's uniform. I see. I have evidence that shows what this cap is. It is. Stolen uniform. There was no report of a guard being attacked by an animal. However, we did hear that a guard's uniform was stolen. I thought I made the wrong decision. <laughs> Putting two and two together, I'd say this was a disguise for the purpose of a prison escape. D disguised as a guard. It sounds like it could have been successful, sir. Huh? Speaking of prison escapes. Indeed, that person certainly was successful. We were all under the impression that the person in, in this video was Knightley. But it's his cell after all. Why would it be anyone else? That line of logic no longer holds. Remember the tunnel under his bed. It's possible whoever used this tunnel is the one in this video. It seems it is time to answer that question. Just who is the person in this video? The person in this video is... It has to be... Uh, jailbird. The person wearing the guard uniform is... Oh. The escaped prisoner, Jailbird. The probability is extremely high. His pet is a polar bear cub. But, but, the bear here is black! We have evidence that can explain this matter. The reason the polar bear became black is... Is this right? Think back to Frank Sawitz's testimony. It's a rubber glove I dropped. Where did all the mub, 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 mud on this glove come from? Ah, oh, that's the mud from my mud packs. At the time, I was practicing applying my mud packs. Could you tell me when this took place on the day of the incident? Since the animal show has started, I'd say it was around 9 a.m. The mud packs turned the animal's bodies pitch black, and my heart was pure white. I was totally engrossed with covering the animals in mud. During the animal show, Mr. Sawit was applying mud packs to the criminals. To the criminals, to the animals. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> it's 1 a.m. So then, among those animals was this polar bear. Yes. Overruled! Prosecutor Edgeworth, there is a huge contradiction in your argument. The security camera footage. Judge Courtney, you are quite right. 
I thought I said you are quite high. Are you quite high? Spa time. Sawit used the mud packs during the animal show. Knowing this, a new contradiction in the video comes to light. A new contradiction? Okay, do you know when this footage was taken? It was after the mud packs were used that would put it that would put it at around 9 a.m. In that case, you should notice something strange about this video. Huh? What's strange about it? The strange thing that contradicts the time this video was taken is. Did it work? Nope. That's the contradiction? So where specifically? Okay, we get it. We get it. My god! We get it! We get it! I never failed this before. I never failed this before, so I can't skip it. I can't skip it. Damn it. Hmm. Video was taken at around 9 a.m. In that case, there is something obviously strange about this video. Yes. Here, that's what you're supposed to do, dumbass. The time saw it covered the polar bear in mud was around 9 a.m. Which means this video should also have been taken at 9 a.m. However, the timestamp reads 6 a.m. On that day, the prisoners went to the courtyard to watch the animal show. At this time, only three people remained behind. Logan in the special cell. Saw it, and the workroom were playing his mud packs. And the one who put this, his escape plan in motion at that moment. J. Elbert. It is. It's kind of annoying. Elbert left the polar bear and saw its care and entered the secret tunnel. However, the bear escaped from Sawit and followed after its owner. Oh my god, I can't believe the polar bear did blackface. <laughs> blackface polar bear. Though, like, technically, I guess... Aren't uh, polar bear skin... Isn't, like, is, isn't their skin black? So, like, technically... They, they whitewash themselves with the fur. <laughs> the bear escaped from Sawit and followed after its owner. And just as he was chasing after the escaped bear, Sawit happened to witness. He was cosplaying a back black bear. <laughs> the dog pulling the murder weapon out of the body. If Sawit's testimony is correct, this video must have been taken at around 9 a.m. However, the timestamp is off by three hours. Why would the timestamp be off like that? Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to examine the security camera. Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. I asked all the guards and... It seems the camera's power was cut off for a moment, throwing off the timestamp. What? The camera is an old model, so if it loses power, the clock stops as well. In that case, this means the camera's power was cut for three hours. Interesting. While I'm at it, I've got some more information for you, sir. You heard that Nightly denied stealing the key, right? It seems nobody could, would believe the words of a criminal, but Knightley testified I was knocked out too. It may not necessarily be a lie. My, 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 there you all are. Making progress in your investigation? Can I be of any help? Actually, Morden Roland, there is something we must report to you. The escaped prisoner, J. Elbert, is most likely still inside the prison. He has disguised himself. Here is the proof. The person visible in the security video is Elbert. So perhaps he is still in this very building.
Come to think of it, didn't Mr. Albert have a bracelet like the other prisoners? Bracelet would have been concealed under the uniform sleeves. Moreover, the prison's main gate does not have a sensor to detect bracelets. All I would have to do is avoid any doors with sensors inside the prison. Th th that's right! So if he didn't enter the cells or the workrooms... Could one of you guys be J. Elbert? Huh, Rocky! Stop it! What are you doing? It would seem that Rocky has answered that question for us. <laughs> no! Rocky, this is all your fault! The little guy loves you so much, it's enviable. Right then, seize him at once! Wait, there's something we must hear from this pers prisoner. It's necessary if we are to find the truth. I'd like permission to interrogate him. Understood. What do you want out of me? Albert's escape route is linked to Knightley's cell. So it's highly likely he knows something about the crime. I thought it was a criminal, and I was like, the fuck is a criminal? I'd like to ask you about the day the body was found. So it was you guys. You were the ones who found my secret tunnel. Okay. After this is final, this chapter is finally over. I'm still gonna sit through it. I'm gonna just go and get something more to eat first. You were the ones who found my secret tunnel. And it took me ages to dig that. The day the body was found was the day I had planned to escape. It was in disguise. Then Rocky followed after me. When he was all covered in mud. I panicked and returned to my cell. Interesting. Damn. If only you guys hadn't shown up. If only Knightley hadn't died. They really use damn a lot in the investigations game, don't they? I mean, to be fair, Long only used it like once or twice at the end of the last game. But this 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 time, though, granted, it is um, a fan translation, so it makes sense, I guess. But um, they use it a lot. They say damn it. And damn you. Only Knightley, ha Knightley hadn't died. You say you dug the tunnel. What did you do? What did you use to dig it? Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. I'm also super, super tired. But I don't want to like end it and like have to like just finish it up tomorrow. No, sorry, not doing it. So I'm gonna sit here until I'm finished. Oh, that. Just hammers and spoons. Stuff like that. I bought them from a supplier. But it was all for nothing. Okay. Eh, eh. No, no, no need to lose your temper. There's always next time. On the day of the incident, it's possible that Albert met Knightley while he was alive. I'll have to listen to his testimony carefully. I hope they give Edward an F bomb. They don't. <laughs> I can say that they don't. Okay, third statement. Did you obtain the guard's uniform from the supplier too? Yeah, that's right. Seems he got it by threatening a guard. That guy went and stole it from someone's locker. So when you went through the tunnel, you were already dressed like a guard. No, to ensure that the clothes wouldn't get stained with mud, I carried them with me. Once I got out of the hole and ch changed clothes, getting out the cell doors was simple. And that's when Rocky ran up and jumped on me. That must be the moment the security camera captured. I see. Could you add that to your testimony? So I got out of the hole and changed clothes, getting out of the cell doors was simple. You say it was simple, getting through the cell door. Yeah, that's right. You got a problem with that, huh? Even though you managed to arrive at Knightley's cell, opening the door wasn't so simple. How did you intend to unlock the cell door? J. Albert, you had the key to Knightley's cell. 
I ain't got nothing like that. That's it. It was open. It was already unlocked when I got there. Indeed, the cell was vacant after Knightley's death, which is why. At the time we conducted our investigation, it was unlocked. Your successful ex escape attempt occurred after Knightley's death, so the door would have been open. However, you had tried to escape once before then. The plan was foiled thanks to Rocky. The video shows it. Yes, that was during the animal show, before Knightley's death was known. And the cell door was locked because no one knew he was dead. Without the key to Knightley's cell, your escape would have been impossible. Uh, uh. That means it can't be. It's exactly what you think. In the case of the stolen key, the culprit is. J. Albert, you were the one who attacked the guard, weren't you? The guard, Knightley too, in order to steal the cell key. It was in me. I don't know any Knightley. After stealing the key, you returned to yourself as a precautionary measure. Then, you waited for a time when the prison would be mostly vacant. That was just before Knightley's death became known. In other words, during the animal show. But in the end, the plan was foiled thanks to Rocky. Don't screw with me. If you don't have evidence, I'll still win by decision. Besides, it was that Knightley guy who attacked the guard, right? I think not. Regarding the theft of the keys, Knightley was the victim. This proves Knightley was the victim who was attacked in his cell. The blood, right? Or not the blood, but the floor. The bike floor, yeah. God, so close. So close. In Knightley's cell, there were traces of his blood, which had been wiped away. I believe this is more than enough proof Knightley was attacked in his cell. You attacked those two people and stole the key, didn't you? Damn. Never thought you'd find the bloodstain I wiped away with the newspaper. Why would you go through all the trouble of wiping the bloodstain? On the hands of Knightley and the guard. There were obvious signs of a scuffle, you know. If the bloodstains were uncovered, I'd find out there was another attacker. And if anyone looked around the bed, the tunnel I dug would be discovered. So you were trying to buy more time for your escape attempt. But I'm afraid to say your plan still ended in failure. Now then, hand over the keys to the Knightley cell. Okay, that's fucking brutal. <laughs> no way. Could an amateur like you knock me out? Here, I got the keys right here. Hold it. If you have that key, then that means... That's right, Judge, Judge Courtney. You reasoned that Knightley stole the key and used it to leave his cell. From there, he entered Mr. Key's cage and was moved to the workroom. However, the very foundation of that, that hypothesis has collapsed. <laughs> oh! I see, in that case... There was only one person who could have moved Knightley. The criminal must have been someone who knew about the secret tunnel. Hey, are you suggesting... J. Albert, you're under arrest, pal. Wait, I didn't do nothing. Sure, I knocked out those two guys, then I stole the keys. And after that, I waited for the perfect time to enter that guy's cell. But the cell was empty then. There was no dead body either. And also, how could I have gotten into the workroom? I couldn't even leave my own cell, right? It's true, you only had the key to Knightley's cell. But, there's also Dog and Dog. What? It'd be impossible for the dog to carry the body from the cell to the workroom. I see. So you're saying there was an accomplice. The crime would have been possible if Albert and Dogen were working together. It's perfectly possible. Somehow, Albert managed to carry Knightley's body to his own cell. 
And then, the dog must have carried it to the workroom. Yes, because all the animals can move freely in the prison. But that's not the case for the path between the detention center and the prison. The only one who could use that route was you, J. Elbert. What if there was another route that you didn't know about? Hmm, there couldn't have been. The tunnel is a straight path, is it not? Yeah, seems like it. I didn't have enough time to dig any more than I did. I only dug halfway up the corridor. What? You mean to say that you didn't dig the entire tunnel? When I got to that cell, the tunnel was already there. And there was a tunnel linking my cell to the, to the well. Looking down the well from the courtyard, there's no mistaking it. You've always been connected. I just continued the tunnel with my digging. What was that hole doing there in the first place? Who knows? Maybe another inmate dug it in an, in an attempt to escape. Or maybe the animals dug it. Maybe they wanted to drink from the well. That's highly doubtful. There's no water in that well anymore. It's all dried up. Hmm? Wait a minute. That's it. For some reason, that well gave off a nice scent. A nice scent. I don't know what it was, but it smelled sweet. Like candy. The scent. I believe we've come across it before. We know the scent from... Nightly's body was giving off a sweet candy-like scent. We used the police dog to track that scent. And that led us to discover the tunnel. We had a chance. Could this be the same scent as the well? Prosecutor Edgeworth, I know what you're trying to say. But the scent proves the body was carried down through the tunnel. Exactly. And, J. Elbert. You are the only one who could have used that tunnel. Thank you. Mr. Elbert, I am very grateful to you. At last, at last the truth comes to light. Mr. Elbert, wouldn't it be wise to confess now? To being an accomplice, I mean. Tell me even you sus suspect me too. Judge Courtney, it seems you and I have come to the same conclusion. Not at all. Our thoughts on this matter are still quite different. This is the last part, right? right? Yeah, okay, it is. It doesn't seem too long, though, but I remember. Oh, no, it's actually really long. Never mind. Okay, it's fine. I'll sit here for ten hours. It's, it's cool. Our thoughts on this matter are still quite different. Mr. Elbert had, was certainly an accomplice, but an accomplice to Horace Knightley. What do you mean? Mr. Elbert did not move the body. He simply lent the victim his keys. What? It would seem Mr. Elbert did indeed strike Mr. Knightley on the head. However, Mr. Knightley was not knocked out. The two must have made a little negotiation, okay? Ma'am, where is your proof? Where is your fucking proof? Huh? This is just a hypothesis. You don't have any fucking evidence. Negotiation. For Mr. Knightley's escape plan to work, he would have needed the keys to his cell. So Mr. Elbert stole them from the guard. On the other hand, for Mr. Elbert to escape, he needed to get to Mr. Knightley's cell. But if Mr. Knightley had seen him and yelled, the plan would have gone down the drain. And so, they negotiated. Has she judged before? I, I didn't negotiate nothing. Oh, you still intend to deny it. I see. So in other words, we're back where we started. Mr. Elbert opened the cell door and Mr. Knightley entered Mr. Key's cage. And then he was moved into the prison. This is why judges don't do the detective work, I guess. Of course, and then he was killed in the prison workroom. Weren't you listening? The scent of the body shows it must have been moved through the tunnel. 
Knightley was moved from the detention center through the tunnel. Please wait until someone is finished before speaking. I do not claim that he wasn't moved through the tunnel. What? You don't? The scent shows that the body was moved through the tunnel. However, that does not mean it came from the detention center. What do you mean? That sure sounds like a contradiction to me. Isn't there one more possibility? The well in the courtyard. It's possible the body was dropped down from there. The courtyard? Ha! Ah, the well in the courtyard! Mr. Keys carried the cage not to the workroom, but to the courtyard. Mr. Knightley was killed in the courtyard, and his body was dropped down the well. And then, the body at the bottom of the well was moved by Mr. Dorgan's dog. Now, there's one thing I'd like you all to remember. Before the body was discovered, what was happening in the courtyard? The animal show, right? Regina and Simon were there. Wait. Simon? Huh? I see you understand. Who then dropped the body down the well? Judge Courtney. She's a tough opponent. Yeah, because she doesn't fucking offer any proof sh herself. Her flexible way of thinking enables her to adapt and come up with her own deductions. Mr. Knightley was not carried to the workroom, but to the courtyard. And Mr. Keyes was off stage for 15 minutes. This was when he dropped Mr. Knightley down the well. It's as simple as that. Objection. Judge Courtney, your reasoning is sound, I'll admit that. However, let's say the body was dropped down the well. That didn't have to be done during the show. It could have happened at a different time. Wait, have they mentioned anything about the body having bruises? I mean, I know that they never like got us like a complete um, autopsy report. Nothing here mentions that like there were bruises. If he got pushed down the well, he would certainly have a few bruises or two, even after he was killed. Could have happened at a different time. Unfortunately for you, Prosecutor Edgeworth, that is not possible. What? When the show started, Mr. Elbert was in the tunnel on his way to the cell block. Mr. Elbert, at that time, did you happen to see a body in the tunnel? Yeah, exactly. Like I know they didn't like get like the the, the full one, but like surely they would have seen bruises. <laughs> like as soon as they fucking just took off his clothes, just like, oh shit, bruises. Better write that down. At that time, did you happen to see a body in the tunnel? Nope, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So if the body had been dropped before the show, Mr. Elbert would have seen it. However, he was he has stated he did not see a body. So it's impossible to think the body was dropped before the show. And after the show, the body was discovered in the workroom. In other words, the body being dropped down the well and then moved to the workroom could only have been done during the show. And the only one who could have done it is Simon Keys. Mm -hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, what should we do? If the body was moved through the well, that does put Mr. Keys at a major disadvantage. However, the notion that the body was moved through the well is only a, hypo a hypothesis. That doesn't mean there is evidence. I am obligated to recognize that fact. Thank you! Fucking finally! But you keep fucking showing up in our faces like, Evidence, you need evidence, but where is your evidence? But then you can just spout this bullshit and then it's like, 
yeah, I don't have the evidence, and I, 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 I recognize that, but, like, I'm right, so. Will you allow me to investigate the courtyard once more? I give my approval, in the name of the goddess of law. We investigate in the courtyard. I fear this may be our final chance. Huh? What? Fire! Could be another prison break, pal. Sh should we evacuate? Everyone, please remain calm. This is just the signal for the evening meal. Listen, I would ha I would have fucking PTSD from that bullshit, like... It's a little loud, so I can understand why you'd be surprised. It sure scared me. I'm terribly sorry. And with that, everyone, please return to your posts. J. Elbert, it's also time for you to return to your room. <laughs> I got it. Let's go, Rocky. Warden Roland, we will be proceeding in proceeding to the courtyard for another investigation. Isn't it time for you to go home as well, Miss Ragesworth? It looks like we're out of time. Why don't you continue this another time? But, but the investigation. Today's been a big day, right? With the escaped prisoner and all. So I'm afraid I can't let you outsiders like let, let outsiders like you loiter around anymore any longer. Mm -hmm. This is my decision as the warden of this prison. Looks like it can't be helped. The warden's word can be called the law of the prison. Prosecutor Edgeworth. This means we will have to carry out our investigation another day. Until then, you may hold on to your prosecutor's badge. And with that, I leave you. Yes, please leave. Now, I think it's time you all left. Well, it looks like we'll have to come continue the investigation tomorrow. Knightley's body was dropped down the well and was carried to the workroom from Mr. Albert's cell. This is Judge Courtney's logic, but is it correct? And Judge Courtney claims that Mr. Keyes transported him, but was Mr. Keyes really the only one with the chance to move him? Mr. Edgeworth, let's do our best tomorrow. We have to save Simon, no matter what. Indeed, I agree. I must prove Mr. Key's innocence without fail. Okay, finally. My god. God, I'm gonna have to, like, split, split up the next one because it's, like, fucking nine chapters, right? I have to split it up into fucking three or four days. Like, I can't... I'm not gonna be able to, like, do it in two as I, I had hoped because these episodes are so long. I don't know for what... Like, obviously, of course, I'm also derailing a lot, but... God, hold on. I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna go and get something to eat, I guess. Come on, start. There we go. I'm gonna go find some food. They do. Oh my god, but at least now I know. So, yeah. BRB. But you can go, you can go to sleep. Please, you, you, you hardly even slept. So please do sleep. Okay, good night. Yeah, go sleep. Good night.
Okay. I am back. I just need to like eat a bit, I guess, before I actually get back into the game because I'm I'm really hungry. Like my stomach has been like really acting up like this last fucking this past chapter. I didn't think it was gonna be fuck. Fuck! No! Damn it, whatever. Hmm. My god. So that's why my mom was like trying to call me earlier. Whatever. Huh. My god. This is exhausting. At least now I know. Next time. Split these episodes up a lot more. Even if it looks short. Just don't. <laughs> hmm. So we yeah, have Courtney just made the fuck up. Gone. What is her deal? And you're like, not. Well, how many episodes does like this um, game has anyway? Has? Have. Okay, there are three more. My god. <laughs> no. I'm just picking there and then you just go on slide down. Yes, perfect. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. I need to get more crisp bread. I don't have any more. Hmm. Yeah, I figured people left. <laughs> it's fine. It'd be like that. I'm not really just eating. I'm almost on though, so. I want to like 
just put on something, but like, I don't know what. I would put on like race attorney stuff, but like, there's like so easy to find spoilers. And I'm like, no. Maybe I should just go through like the next chapters and literally just like write down what I have to do and when. <laughs> Because it's so hard to like get lost when I am like reading like the guide. Like, I get that they, like, wrote it to, like, make it make sense or whatever, but god, is it so fucking annoying. It's so annoying. <laughs> because... Oh, fuck it, I'm gonna fucking show you. Like, look at this. If this is from the last fucking chapter, right? It's like all of the things that are in bold. That's like the things that you have to like either present or you have to like examine or something. And usually it says like examine like this, but sometimes it doesn't. And I'm like, uh, what am I supposed to do? And I have to like read through like everything. And I'm like, oh, okay, it says logic. Here it doesn't say, but at some point earlier it said logic somewhere. And I was like, oh, okay, I see. And it's just so dumb. Like, this doesn't even seem like that long of a chapter. But it just went on forever. Oh my god, that was so annoying. Anyways, I'm ready to get back into the game now. <laughs> like, god. I... I do very much like this game, but like, oh my god. Okay. I can shut up and I can put these back on. These bad boys. And we're good to go. Save. Yes. Huh. Okay. We go again. Oh my god. Chair is full of crumbs. Fuck.
courtyard. Depending on what we find here, the entire incident could become clear. However, there's nothing left here. Yesterday. Isn't there one more possibility? The well in the courtyard. It's possible the body was dropped down from there. In other words, the body being dropped down the well and then moved to the workroom. Could only have been done during the show. And the only one who could have done it is Simon Keys. Was the body dropped down the well or not? This could be the decisive clue that we need to reach the truth of the matter. Before I continue with the investigation, I should organize my evidence. Please, yes. Let's see here. Hey! There's a grate here! Well, it's from dry after all. They even put a lock on it. Lock picking is one of my specialties, wanna see? There is absolutely no need for you to show off. Come on, don't be like that. Whoa! What happened, Kay? The lock is broken! Judging from the looks of it. It feels like it was broken some time ago. So the lock was broken. And this means that anyone could have dropped the body down this well. According to Judge Courtney's reasoning, Mr. Keyes murdered Knightley in the courtyard. And then, during the show, he disposed of the body in the well. In the well. Think so? Did he really use the well to move the body? I know! Let's get Missile to help us out again. He should be able to track the scent of the body. Good idea. Let me contact Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir. Detective Gumshoe here. Detective, I have a favor to ask of you. I would like for you to bring Missile to the prison courtyard. Sounds like you need the help of one of my seven secret weapons again, sir. Again, huh, sir? I thought Missile belonged to the police department. And also, I would like for you to contact a witness. Please contact Regina Berry of the Very Big Circus and bring her here. Roger you that, sir. I'll bring them over in a flash. So, what should we do while we wait for Gummy? How about some hide and seek? What are you talking about, Kay? There's nowhere to hide here. I don't think that is the issue. Kay, during times like this, isn't it your time to shine? Oh, that! You want me to recreate the crime scene? Huh? How do you do that? See for yourself, the great thief's <laughs> the great thief's secret weapon, little thief. Whoa, what's that? Screens floating in midair. Just what are you doing, Kay? I am entering the information needed for the simulation. Mr. Shields, this little thief. It's a tool that can recreate a crime scene, based on the information it is given. Should I set it for how this place was like when we came here yesterday? Yes, I believe they were in the middle of taking down the set. We didn't pay enough attention to the well, so it's possible we may have missed a clue. Leave it to me! I took a picture of the place too! Oh, you did, you did. You took a lot of them. There, 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 and there! Data entry complete! Now to set the projection to maximum output. Dark skies of evening. When no other bird da dares take wing, and one alone remains all seeing. Now witness the true power of a real modern day Robin Hood. What just happened? I recreated the courtyard from yesterday, based on the information I entered. This was a tool the previous Atakarasu used. It's a device to run simulations and practice stealing things. We used in this manner, we can inspect the crime scene as it was in the past. Oh, but it's still only a recreation, based on what information we have. I can't recreate what I don't have information for, and if my information is incorrect, 
The big creation could come out strange too. In this case, since Kay had the photo, there should be no problems. Now let's begin the investigation. Since it's a recreation, you can examine things just like you always do. Okay, you can even present evidence. Yes, I know. <laughs> First, I should start with a well. Yes, I indeed. Start with a well. Let's examine the area around the well. It holds the key to this case. This is a metal weight. It weighs. It's hard to see in the re recreation. Okay, do you remember? I think it was 33 pounds. I wonder what such a heavy thing was used for. It doesn't seem to be directly related to the circus. Oops. Hmm. There are some pulleys here. They don't appear to have to to be the pulley that was used to lift the bucket from the well. It's a sturdy hemp rope. It looks like the rope they use for tug of wars. I'm not going to play tug of wars with you. I didn't even say anything yet. There's a metal stake attached to the end of the rope. Ah, you use these to pin down the tent when you go camping. It doesn't seem like they need this for the performance. I wonder what it was used for. The well was behind the stage. That means... Only a few people would have access to dump the body in the well during the performance. This isn't looking good for Mr. Keys. These things around the well... What were they used for? They don't seem to be related to the animal show. I agree. We can ask Miss Barry about it later. Um, what was the elephant's name again? She's a steak, the Asian elephant. Oh, that's right. It's an easy name to remember. Maybe. They couldn't think of a good name, so they gave her a name that's easy to remember. Mr. Edgeworth, what a terrible thing to say about poor Steak! That's all the information we can gather for now. The detective should be here soon, too. Okay, go ahead and shut down Little Thief. Alright, returning the area to normal. Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Hey, speak of the gummy! Detective Gumshoe, that was quick. I couldn't keep you waiting for too long, sir. Thanks for coming along too, Regina. No problem. It sounded like fun, so I skipped practice to come here. Thank you for your cooperation. First, Detective, let's have Missile do some tracking. No problem, sir. Hey, Missile! Over here, pal! Hey, what's eating you, pal? I said over here. What's the matter? It looks like he's scared of something, sir. Ah! Alligator! I guess he's scared of the alligator, sir. Good grief. It looks like missile won't be much help to us. So what should we do, Miles? Maybe we can ask Miss Berry for help. What is it? What is it? Is there something I can do? Do you want me to teach Ali a trick? Actually, she probably could. No, I just need you to tell me about the condition of the courtyard during the show. Looks like it's my time to shine again. Yes, if you please. Alright. That should do it. I'm starting up the recreation now. Recreation complete. This time you can see how it how the courtyard was during the animal show. It should be around the time the body was dropped down the well. Oh, cool. It's just like 
Magic! <laughs> it's not magic. I just recreated the scene based on the information you gave us. See? Look over there! Hmm. The backstage area is missing. Well, Regina didn't help with the prepar pre preparations, so... She doesn't really know how it was set up. Get it. You can't recreate what you don't have the info for, huh? I'm sorry. It's because Simon took care of setting everything up. Don't worry yourself, nun. Regina Pye, Miles is the one at fault here. Why me? Mr. Regworth, I recreated the show in progress. But I can also change it to how it was earlier, when it was being taken down. I see, so we can examine the courtyard during the show, and after the show. And we can freely switch between the two different states. To change the recreation, select little C from the bottom screen. Cool. Now let's begin the investigation. Okay, where, where are we at? Okay, we're talking to Gumshu. Begin my talking to... Mr. Edgeworth, you got that look on your face like you want to use my secret weapon, sir. Hmm. Miss Listen in the mood, but I've got my fishing rod ready to go. Would you prefer the metal detector? I've never seen the detective's eyes sparkle like that. If need be, I'll let you know. For now, just stand by. Oh, wait. Can I pet the dog, please? As you can see, he's totally scared, sir. I wanted him to track a scent, but it looks like that won't be possible. Let me pet the heckin' dog! Edgeworth, pet the fucking dog! Oh my god. Examine the stage next. A love story between an elephant and a tiger. I really wanted to see that. I also wanted to see Simon in action. Simon is really amazing, especially the part where he gets blown away. Blown away? That's the scene in question. At that point, the suspect in the role of the villain is blown away by the heroine's burning love and makes his exit. After being blown away, the suspect disappeared from the stage. You're saying the crime was committed during that time. You know how long he was gone from the stage. Let me think. About 15 minutes or so. It's just as Judge Courtney said. But isn't it dangerous to be blown away by an elephant? It's alright. A stick is very gentle. That's not who we're worried about here. During the first few practices, he was having trouble getting blown away. Then all of a sudden, he was able to be sent... He was able to be sent flying beautifully. He might be using some sort of device, but it's amazing! A device? Do you know anything about it? Mm, I have no idea. Simon handled it all by himself. Oh, this crate was empty in the recreation earlier. That's right! It was also empty in the picture I took. Oh, I'm sorry. That information is wrong. What do you mean? This crate contained Gastique's food. In the morning on the on the day of the show, all the apples were gone. I totally forgot about that. I'm sorry. Missing apples, huh? I should make a note of it. Like, I low-key remember what happened since, like, the first time I played this. But, like, the apples... <laughs> I'm like, how did the apples fit into this? Okay, missing apples. Uh, logic. Cool. It was around the well to Simon's stunt. There we go. Mr. Keys used the device for his stunt. Maybe the tools around the well are connected to this. Okay, I'd like to re recheck the tools laying around the well yesterday. Can you change the recreation to the to the after the show scene? Roger.
from the tools lying around the well. Could they have been a part of his device? It seems very likely. I wonder if it's possible to recreate the device. If you ask Mr. Keys, he should be able to tell you how the device was put together. Alright, I'll go ask him. Mr. Edgeworth, I asked him about it. And did you find out how the device works? He used a rope to hang some weights on the well's pulley. The weights were suspended inside the well. Then, he ran the rope through two more pulleys. And tied the end of the rope to his own body. So he, so he uses the force of the falling weights to send himself flying. What's to stop the weights from falling on their own? In order to prevent that from happening, he used a stopper. Miss Barry didn't know anything about the well. That means... Mr. Keys removed the stopper by himself. Correct! That's why a second rope was needed. This rope was attached to the stopper, and when it was pulled from the stage... The stopper would be removed, and the weights would drop down the well. I mean, that's only 15 kilos though, right? I'm definitely going to steal this idea. The Yatagarasu won't lose to something like this. Don't waste your time. Circus acts require extensive training. Even if you steal the device, it won't do you any good. Then, I'll train as well. Before you start training, could you first update the recreation? Huh? Oh yeah, you wanted me to recreate the device that was used in the performance. First, let's return to the during the show scene. Next, I'll input the information of the device on the well. Now we can recreate the device Simon made. So this is the device that Mr. Keys used. Interesting. Simon sure is gutsier than he looks. Using the falling weights and the force as the force to launch himself during his performance. Oh, actually, if he used two of them. I don't know how many he used, but... I don't know if actually if 15 kilos would be enough to lift, like, a grown man. Maybe he's, like, small imposter. I don't really know. We, we don't really get, to, like, know about their measurements or anything. <laughs> Hmm, indeed. He, he would have to drop enough weights to exceed his own body weight. Okay, cool, that is actually a thing. In order to provide the strength needed to pull him off the stage. Simon must have practiced a lot for this. Okay, and then, uh... Tools around the well, time and stunt, Simon's device, strength to be pulled, logic connect, okay. Huh? Isn't this strange? What's wrong, pal? Haven't you noticed, detective? What's strange about the way it is? The weight? Yes. It's not heavy enough. In order to pull up Mr. Key's body weight. You're right, sir. But where did the rest of the weights disappear to? Looks like it's time to use my seven secret weapons, sir. Hmm, if necessary. I'll let the detective know. Connect the metal detector to not heavy enough. Connect the metal detector to not heavy enough? Detective Gumshoe, it's time for your secret weapon. Yes, sir. Oh. Fishing rod? 
I was hoping for the metal detector. I don't get many chances to use this one. Before we begin the search, let me go over how to use the metal detector, sir. This metal detector uses sound. Oh, we're just fucking tagged. And this meter. To let you know how close you are to a metal object. When you get closer to the, to a metal object, the metal detector will have a bigger reaction. Like this. Okay. When you get to the biggest reaction, I'm with the order to examine that spot, sir. Now, let's see what we got. It's just a metal fence. And that's basically how you search for metal objects. Oh my god, I can't remember that this part was this fucking bad. Just give me any instructions on where you want to search, sir. Okay, hold on. I am gonna mess around with some sound settings. Let me try the dual. That's slightly better, I guess. And uh, what if we go back to that one and go to Z? No. What about P? Okay, no, the, the best one is definitely the, 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 that one. Where am I supposed to go? Ah, yes, beautiful. Getting closer, there should be something metal nearby. Okay. The fact that you're fucking tired! <laughs> okay, I'm fucking looking at where I'm supposed to do this. Back to this. Yeah, there's a reaction here too, sir. Let's check it out. Huh? I found these in the clumps of grass here, sir. These are weights used for that hoisting device. Are these intentionally hidden? There's four of them in all, sir. How many weights would be enough to lift Simon? So the other weights that were used in the device were hidden. Why were they hidden over here, though? See? I'm really earning my keep today, aren't I, sir? Yeah! Huh, the alligator! It scared me, pal. Huh? What's the matter, detective? It looks like the metal detector is reacting to this allig alligator. Really? Why? Are you sure it isn't still just reacting to the weights? 
It's a different reaction, sir. And it's definitely coming from the alligator. It's gone. Looks like it's scared of us. Hmm, I don't think so, Kay. Huh? If anything, I think Ali looks a little under the weather. Ali, I suppose that was what Warden Roland called it. She didn't eat any of the food that the ward gave her yesterday. I think she might have eaten something bad. So I guess the metal detector could be reacting to whatever the alligator ate. Oh, maybe she ate one of the weights. I doubt that even an alligator can ingest a 33-pound weight. And what could the metal detector be reacting to? And regardless, why were these weights hidden? Hmm, maybe we should take another look at the device in the well. Okay, I'd like you to recreate the after the show scene again. Alright, leave it to me! There's nothing unusual about this area. Okay, no, that's not what I meant. I wanted to do something. I mean, these and the sheets, right? This spots don't have connected to any of the evidence I hold. Yes. This bloodstained sheet. This piece of evidence shows the contradiction with the crime scene. No, that's not it. Can you be more precise about where the contradiction is? I get it, 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 I get it. Oh my god. Something is missing. Ah, this and the rope. That's it. This piece of evidence. What? What? That's literally what it says here. Put the cursor to the rope and deduce from Simon's device. Oh, do I need to do this in Simon's device? Oh, okay. In this recreation and the device we saw earlier, there was a major discrepancy. One of the ropes is missing. You're right! Without it, the device won't work. I wonder what happened to it. And where did the missing rope disappear to? It's possible that we hold the piece of evidence that shows where the rope went. Eh? Huh? Which piece of evidence shows where the missing rope went? The rope we found with the dead body. Uh, could it be? Yes, it could be the other piece of rope that was used here. Then, does that mean... This rope was attached to the, to the weight. However, the weight was not one of those these metal weights. And these weights were hidden in the grass and replaced with something else. If they were replaced, then what was used as the weight? What was tied to the rope we found in the workroom? If we can recall that, then the answer should be clear. The weight that was dropped in place of the weights that Mr. Key had prepared was... What dropped down the well was none other than Knightley's dead body. Eh? Mr. Knightley's body was used as a weight? Yes, the weights were replaced with Knightley's body. Mr. Keyes used the device to launch himself off the stage. When the rope that was tied to him was undone and let go. Both the body and the rope dropped down the well. The rope wasn't used to tie up Knightley. It was used to suspend him inside the well. That also explains why the other weights were hidden. Ah, oh, so that no one would find out that the weights were replaced with the body. Yes, the killer was the one who hid those weights. But Miles, 
was a knightly boy who stabbed in the neck with a murder weapon. If he was suspended in the well, wouldn't there be blood at the bottom of the well? The killer was also aware of that. That's why they used this item. The sheets. The sheets we found near the body. It was used to wrap up the body. I see. <clears throat> it looks like all the pieces are starting to come together, huh? But this means that the body definitely came from the well. If that's the case, wouldn't that mean Simon is the killer? No. That's not necessarily the case. Eh? But... Yesterday, Judge Courtney said if Mr. Keyes was the killer, would he have needed to set up such an elaborate device? I guess you have a point. Mr. Keyes was only responsible for dropping the body during the show. In other words, it doesn't matter where the real killer was, or what they were doing during the show. Until now, this placed the doubt on the people who did not watch the animal show. It's true, we also suspected Mr. Dogen. The killer's true intent was to make us think that the murder occurred during the show. In other words, they used the device on the well to create a fake alibi. Miss Barry, do you know when this device on the, on the well was set up? Um, let me think. The day before the show, I think it was at night. We all started preparing at 9pm. We finished it around midnight. The killer replaced the weights with a dead body afterwards. Hmm. Did Dogen know about the device? No, even if he knew about the device, it, will be, it wouldn't be possible for him to use it. You can't teach, teach a dog to suspend a body in a well. In other words, Dogen is not the killer. Then who is? Um... I suppose I have to go to logic now, right? Elephant and the apples, and the apples in the crate were probably eaten by Astique. But, but it's strange. I remember leaving the crate out of reach from Astique's nose. Are you certain? Yes. The crate was still full of apples on the night before the show. And the cart was moved to where her nose could reach it. With that many apples, it could not have been moved by the wind. Most likely, the crate was moved by a person. Prior to the show, the cart's position was already changed and the apples were all eaten. This appears to be the correct information. Please update the simulation parameters, Pekay. Pekay? Alright, I'll use the new info to recreate the scene. First, let's return to the during the show scene. Using the info we got from Regina, I'll recreate the scene with the, with the cart in its actual place. Recreation complete! This door is locked. Want me to pick the lock? Success is not guaranteed though. No, if need be, I'll just borrow a key. Sheesh, I thought it was finally a chance for me to steal the spotlight. Don't even think about stealing anything in my presence. Not even the spotlight. Crate of apples to weight switch body? Hmm. And this cart was moved the night before the show. The body was also switched the night before the show. I don't think it was just a coincidence. Keeping that in mind, the question now becomes... Why was the cart moved? The cart used to be in front of that door. I can think of one reason why. Somebody opened that door! Alright, let's hurry up and... and... The door's locked. Let's ask a guard. Hey, Mr. Guard! Yes, what is it? That was fast. You there. 
Where is the key to this door? The warden's in charge of it. I'll get it from her right away. The warden is in charge of the keys here. Without the warden's permission, this door can't be opened. Thank you very much! It's a circuit breaker pa panel. This must be the breaker room. On the night before the show, somebody came into this room. I wonder, I wonder why they would come here. I don't think anyone would confuse the breaker room with the break room. It was definitely to operate the circuit breakers. Um, so someone came here to shut off the power to something. Was there anything that had its power shut off? What could have had its power shut off by the breaker? Okay, it's not that. I mean, I figured it wasn't, but I wanted to try anyways. Oh my god, just fucking get it over with! God fucking damn it! When the breaker trip, the electrical equipment would have lost power. Is there any evidence that can prove this? Is there something that lost power? Oh my god, yes, I'm dumb, I'm dumb, I'm dumb! Isn't it like security footage? Security camera footage had three had a three hour gap. Oh, see, the circuit breaker for the security camera was stripped. It's highly possible. Was this the killer's handiwork? With the camera down, it'll be easier to move about. The killer would have a major advantage. I knew it. If that's the case, the killer was the person who tripped the breaker. The person in charge of the key to the breaker room is. It couldn't be. Deactivating the recreation. <clears throat> hmm? I'm first in the scene as always. It's okay. Good morning, Mr. DeBest. Oh, you! How did you get here before me? Greetings, Prosecutor Edgeworth. I see you have arrived early. Or maybe it is you who are late, Judge Courtney. I have many matters which require my attention. I have no time to waste. Unlike a certain prosecutor who has taken off the case, who was taken off the case. Mm -hmm. Oh, my apologies. I had forgotten that you were assisting the defense attorney. An assistant can never, an assistant can never be the best. You've fallen like the rest. You just say whatever you like, don't you? Let us begin our examination of the courtyard, Sebastian. All right, I'll call the men over. That will be unnecessary. What? We have already finished the investigation of the courtyard. You've been bested. Bested? Me? Judge Courtney. Your reasoning from yesterday. Watch me shatter it to pieces. I would advise you to choose your words more carefully. Have you forgotten that the fate of your badge rests in my hands? I have had enough of such coercion. Can you think of some other way to threaten me that does not involve my badge? Overruled! Despite my repeated warnings, you show no signs of reflection. It seems I must remind you once more. The Prosecutorial Investigation Committee can't leave someone such as yourself unchecked. Neither the fate of my badge nor the action of the committee. 
will impede my progress. Proving Mr. Key's innocence. That is all that concerns me. Your words are like those of a defense attorney. If you are willing to go that far, then I will show no leniency. In the name of the goddess of law, I shall turn your words against you. And at that moment, you will forfeit the title of prosecutor. You shall regret this. I shared my reasoning with you the day before. Since Mr. Elber did not see the body when he passed through the tunnel, it could only have been dropped down the well during the show. The only one who could have performed such an act is the suspect. Naturally, you have evidence to support your reasoning. Of course she does! Who do you think she is? Earlier, I received the official autopsy report. Oh, oh, is it gonna say bruises now? Babysitting that kid must be difficult. The time of death was the night before the body was discovered. In other words, the day before the show. The cause of death remains unchanged. A stab wound, four inches deep. And then no mentions of any, like, post-mortem stuff? Ma'am? Oh my god, you fucking dumbass bitch. Simon Keys was not present on the stage for a period of 15 minutes. There was sufficient time for him to drop the body down the well. She has not investigated the courtyard yet. That means... Hmm. It seems there is a hole in your argument. You seem quite confident. Can you present evidence to support your claim? Of course I can, and I will. Objection! Simon's device, let's go. Fortunately for you, Judge Courtney, your argument doesn't hold any water. Just like the well. There was a device set up around the well here. What is this device of which you speak? Are you aware of the stunt in which Mr. Keyes is blown away by the elephant during the show? I have heard of it. It would have been right before he exits the stage. You were the one who brought it up first! Oh my god. He tied one end of a length of rope to himself, and the other end to a set of weights. He was able to perform the stunt by dropping these weights down the well. Wouldn't he have spent the whole play suspended up in the air? That's why he had a stopper attached to the weighted end. The stopper was removed by pulling another rope. Around the well, we found evidence that the weights were switched with the victim's body. This was done by the real killer in order to shift suspicion away from them. Judging from the time of death, the murder was carried out in the early morning of the show. The true criminal had until the time of the show started. The, had until the time of the show started to set up the device. Didn't Simon Keys make that thing? And since he was also the one who used it, he is the best suspect. Don't you agree? If Mr. Keys were the murderer, he would not have needed to do that. Miss Barry? Yes? Was there anyone else who knew of the device set up? Well, let me see. <clears throat> Since we had to get everything about our show approved by the people here at the prison, I'd say there were others who knew about it. And there you have it. I see. You have indeed performed a thorough investigation. Which is why I am even further perplexed. Why don't- why do you not use your efforts for justice? My actions are not for just? My actions are not just? Who made that decision? You cannot understand even that? Even now? You know, it's so fascinating. This area, to me, it like seems like it's like inside of like a... Um, uh, like a gym or something. But once we're like... We, we see like... It as the background. You can actually tell that it's outside. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's supposed to be outside because it's the courtyard, right? But like, I don't know, it just... It just messes me up for some reason. I don't know why. You cannot understand even that? Even now? Providing support to a defense attorney despite being a prosecutor. 
It is quite unnatural. This goes against this goes against the rules. I am merely choosing to do what I think is right at this particular time. I travel down the road I have chosen. Your comprehension does not matter in the least. However, if anyone intends to interfere, I will show no mercy. Perhaps this is a calling from the goddess of law. If you intend to rebel, rebel, <laughs> rebel, rebel against her divine will, I will have no choice but to hand down my verdict. Pay heed to my words. I have one more reason to suspect Simon Keys of murder. If the body came from the courtyard, how was Mr. Knightley brought here from the detention center? Only Simon Keys could have provided such an opportunity. Because of this fact, I find it most difficult to suspect any other party of this crime. While Simon Keys was moving supplies for the show, he visited Mr. Knightley's cell. Does that not strike you as odd? Why else would he have brought a large covered cage with him? Oh, that does seem pretty suspicious. Mr. Keys was merely that kind of person. It is entirely possible that he carelessly brought, brought bleh, entirely possible that he carelessly brought it here. If that is possible, then it is also possible that he was assisting in the escape. Am I wrong? Hmm, I suppose I must refute her theory with evidence. Third statement. One, two. That was. That was. That was three. Three. Here we go. And then security footage. Mr. Keys wasn't the only one who had the. Who had the opportunity? Who else would have had the opportunity? The timestamp on the security camera is off by three hours. This means there was the three three hour gap in time. During that time, anyone could have done it. If that were the case, then a the murderer would have created the gap in time intentionally. Intentionally. It would not have been a simple camera failure. Are you saying that is possible? It's possible. If you had access to this. Circuit breaker. Yeah. In this courtyard, we found the circuit breaker for the security camera. And it was possible to access the breaker room both before and after the murder. <laughs> what? Unfortunately, it appears that you have fallen short of your intentions. Mr. Edgeworth hasn't fallen short of anything. Hmm. Mm hmm. So, can you explain how the murderer obtained the key to the breaker room? Oh yeah, that's right. It was locked, wasn't it? The warden hangs onto the key, right? The breaker room has great importance, even in, in a prison. There is no one who would be able to obtain the key so easily. Well, I can think of someone. What did you say? This person, the murderer, was able to get the key. They didn't even need to steal it. There can't be anyone like that! Besides, the breaker through the electrified fence is in that room too! Only one person could have done this. I didn't want to believe it myself, but I trust that my logic is sound. The person who used the key to enter the breaker room is... Patricia! Rolla! Yeah! The murderer is. Warden Roland. Oh my, what an energetic little puppy. It's because this dog is extremely fond of sweets. It seems to detect the sweet scent on you. Oh heavens no, I'm not even wearing perfume or anything of the sort. All the dog detects is the sweet scent of death. How poetic. However, does that not imply that I committed a murder? That's what I think. <laughs> what? The warden is the murderer. Mr. Edgeworth, are you serious about your statement? Oh, ho, ho, how amusing the very thought of a warden committing a murder. It sounds like something out of a mystery novel. Precisely. Your reasoning is in contempt. 
Nothing of the sort. I did not want to believe it myself. But, based on the evidence, I have no choice but to believe it. This evidence proves that Warden Roland is the murderer. Uh, crime scene notes? The smell gave you away. As you can plainly see, someone has taken notice. This police dog. He tracked the sweet smell that came from the body. And right now, he is telling us that the same scent is also on Warden Roland. <laughs> you were a cruel one to accuse me of murder based on something like that. Right, Justine, darling? It appears that Judge Courtney has reached the same conclusion as I have. Mr. Edgeworth, this couldn't have been just a coincidence, could it? The key to the breaker room and the same scent on the body. If there were only one, it could have been seen as such. It appears we have reached a conclusion. We should now listen to what the warden has to say. Indeed, until we do, we cannot close this case. Oh my goodness! Everyone with such scary faces. So I'm the only one who could have could have been the murderer? That just cannot be. Why is my stomach like still fucking going? I heard all about the case from Justine, darling, here. Had I committed the murder? It would have taken place inside the holding cell. But I couldn't have moved the body. I never went into the prison. I was caught up in my work up until the show. I was stuck in my office. Check up on it if you like. You'll find there's no record of me entering the prison. I don't know what reasoning you had, but I can say for sure. I cannot be the killer. The missile barked to you, pal. You gotta be the culprit. Oh, heavens. It's not possible. I already told you, I never went to the prison. If you think I'm lying, well, why don't you check the records? She wants us to check the records. She does seem confident. For now, all we can do is listen to her and try to draw up more information. I do hope you understand, Mr. Edgeworth. Okay, fifth statement. You did not enter the prison from the entrance. And what if there was another route? Oh my, are you suggesting something like a secret passage? I don't know if anything like that exists. It is my firm belief you did possess an alternate route. That route was neither the entrance nor a secret passage. The route you used was from here. The barbed wire fence? You would have moved nightly to your office first. This office leads directly to the garden side of the courtyard. If you had moved through here and passed the barbed wire fence, you would have arrived at the prison without passing through the entrance or tunnel. <laughs> I wonder what Mr. Edgeworth is saying. Haven't you noticed? There is a high voltage current running through the fence. Yeah, obviously she couldn't have passed through it, through it like that. The current of the fence could be switched off at the breaker room. And you were the only one who had the key, Warden Roland. Most amusing. However, the breaker room is located on the prison side of the court courtyard. How would the warden have accessed it from the, de the detention center? Ah, oh, quite right. Gotcha there, Miss Redworth. <laughs> That's... If there is no record of her passing through the prison entrance, it would not have been possible for her to turn off the fence's breaker. <laughs> but when Roland was the only one who had access. I'll let this phase you, Miles. But if I don't have a solution for this, she'll get away. Now, Uncle Ray never said don't think, you know. It's just not good to be so stubborn about it, that's all. No matter how you think about it, Warden Roland couldn't have done this alone. Hmm. 
Prosecutor Edgeworth, if you have failed to come up with a new pos- I am not amused, interrupting my judgment or only to be silent. Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. I have to answer. I won't let this end here. My reasoning is not over yet. So how did she use the breaker without leaving the detention center? It's perfectly possible. With this method. What made it possible to turn off the breaker? She had an accomplice. It was indeed pos impossible for one person. What if there were two? Exactly. Just what I expected from you, Miles. Yes, you had an accomplice on the prison side. Enough. I am disappointed in you, Prosecutor Redgeworth. What's up, pal? You making fun of Miss Redgeworth? The inmates at this prison all wear bracelets. If they try and go where they please, they will set off the alarm. Huh? So you've noticed, this is a prison after all. Not only the prisoners, but the guards too are under constant scrutiny. So why didn't anyone notice Albert? The only ones allowed to move around freely are the animals. And they certainly could not have used the breaker. But it's still possible that a person did it. Excluding the inmates and the guards, just what kind of person would you say it was? We can't exclude the- we can't exclude the inmates and guards just yet. There was only one person, one whose movements was not restricted. This evidence shows that there was someone in the prison who could move around freely. That is, it looks like the bracelet worn by the prisoner- prisoners. This belongs to a certain model inmate, and it's broken. What? Just who on earth does this belong to? Frank saw it, the warden's favorite inmate. Don't you think it's strange? He managed to keep his, this hidden while he moved around freely in his daily prison life. Golly, when you think about it, it shouldn't be possible. I'd hazard a guess that this was because he, he was a special case. Just like Sir Han Dogen, in the special cell. The prosecutor's statement is mere conjecture. Hmm. You could find out by simply asking Sawit himself. It is my firm belief that Mr. Sawit and Warden Roland were partners in crime. Due to their collaboration, another route surfaces. The real route by which Knightley's body was moved to the prison. There were two obstacles that needed to be dealt with. Security camera in front of Knightley's cell. And the electric fence in the courtyard. Both these problems could have been solved with a single stroke. By having Sawit switch off the breakers in the breaker room. Mr. Edgeworth, could you wait one moment? Do you still intend to deny it, Warden Roland? Huh, I give in. I confess. Warden Roland! No, this can't be! Yes, it's just as he says. Frank Sowit and I were partners in crime. No way! You did it, Mr. Edgeworth! Well done, Miles. At least, uh, at last, we... We have the real culprit cornered. God, I struggled with his voice for some reason. I don't know why. Like Mr. Edgeworth said, Frankie operated the breaker. But we were not responsible for Knightley's murder. What? Warden Roland. Whatever do you mean? Judge Courtney, would the goddess of law hear my confession? The goddess of law is merciful. She will absolve you. I was being threatened. That's why I had no choice but to do as I was told. So who was threatening you? Sir Han Dorgan, that assassin. Dorgan. It's been going on since that man came to the prison. I will never forget that day.
When we were both alone, he suddenly said to me, There are many dogs outside the prison. D dogs Loyal dogs who obey my every command. I soon realized that Dogen referred to what Dogen referred to was not really dogs, but his human henchmen. And that's not all he said. You'd better watch how you treat me. If you don't want you and your family to become dog food. I had no choice. I gave him the special cell. I gave him anything he desired. Anything he desired. I don't mean the supplier. That's right. Anything he ordered, I would deliver to him. An underground dealership. I was the one who won over Frankie. It was simple. I just offered him special privileges within the prison. And these underground dealings... Once a week, in the middle of the night, Frankie would shut off two of the breakers. So I could move from my office to the courtyard without being seen by the security camera. I would go past the fence and drop the goods down the well near the prison. And then I'd sprinkle this perfume over it. So that the true identity of the sweet so that's the true identity of the sweet scent. The scent of perfume was a signal for Dogen's dog. After picking up the scent, it would carry the goods to Dogen. Of course, this has to be done while Elbert was away from his cell. Surprised he never found out about it, pal. We have a strict timetable here at the prison. Meal time, exercise time. It's easy to know when he's away from his cell. And since little Rocky is afraid of Dogen's dog, I didn't have to worry about him making noise. So having full knowledge of the prison's inner workings, she made the deliveries herself. This would have ensured there were no slip-ups. Frankie would turn the breakers back on in the early morning, and the, and the delivery was complete. I then modified the timestamp on the security camera. You have told us a great deal. The goddess of law accepts your pen penitent confession. As the warden of the prison, how could I have done such a foolish thing? The day Knightley was killed was also a delivery day. It seems Frankie was working the breakers as usual. But that day I had nothing to send, so I did not go to the courtyard at all. The secret of the supply system. So then Warden Rowland was... The police have been searching for Dogen's henchmen for ages. I've also been helping them, but... I've been interrogating him personally in my office, but... No matter how much evidence we have on him, we can't get a single word out of him. So the reason you kept, an inter kept on interrogating him? Yes, it was to find his henchmen. I borrowed all the evidence from the police and carried out the interrogation system. I kept an eye on all his actions and examined all of his mail. Mail? Like his correspondence chest, correspondence chest letters. But I could never uncover the true identity of his henchmen. This fear, it's something you could never understand. Prosecutor Edgeworth, you were listening, right? I'd say this confession clears the warden of all suspicion. It's really necessary. Is it really necessary to press her further than this? Is it necessary to press her further? Press further. <laughs> Judge Courtney, my questioning isn't over yet. I'm sure the goddess of law is, isn't satisfied yet either. Oh my god, there's still two more. Uh, uh. You mean to badger this woman further? Even if she was threatened by Dogen. This does not prove she was the, not the culprit in this case. She was able to use a supply route to transport Knightley's body. Do you have ev any evidence to support this? The body gave up a, gave up a sweet scent. The scent of perfume that was used to signify a delivery. Can you explain this fact? Oh, of course. Since I have made so many deliveries, the scent would have lingered around the well. When the body was moved through the well, the scent would have transferred to it. Mr. Albert also testified to this fact. That's it. For some reason, that well gave off a nice scent. Nice scent. I don't know what it was, but it smelled sweet. Like candy. 
The lingering scent in the well would, of course, be picked up by anything passing through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the defense rests, I see. In that case, court adjourned. Mr. Edgeworth, isn't there anything we can do? What should I do? Is this as far as I can go? Is it over already? Yes, Sebastian, it is. And now, court is officially adjourned. Hold it. Yes, I knew it. Who, who was that? It's not nice of you to adjourn things just like that, Courtney Pie. Mr. Shields. Are you objecting to the court ad adjourning? <laughs> of course not. I ain't got no objection or anything like that. Go ahead and adjourn court. Do whatever you like. Hey, what are you doing, Mr. Shields? Oh, there. Calm down, Kay. Who wants some chocolate? Is this a joke? <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I just have one tiny request to make. Simon Keyes' attorney. That's right. You're the defense attorney in charge of this case, aren't you? Exactly. Did you all forget? That's so mean. You just left everything to Mr. Edgeworth and didn't do anything at all. This is right. That's why. I thought I'd do my job a bit. Do your job. That hardly sounds like you at all. It's to prepare for the trial. I'd like to ask the warden a few questions. Surely you jest. What more could you expect to hear from her? Well, Miss Warden, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the culprit. My thoughts? Uncle Ray believes that Simon is not the culprit. It seems that Miss Warden also suspects someone other than Simon. I'd like to hear you out. Mr. Redworth, what's Mr. Shields up to? He's trying to lure Warden Roland into testifying. Why was the supply route used to transport the body? I'd say it was to pin the crime on Dogen. Ah, oh, I see! If he committed a murder here, he would be transferred to another prison. One with tighter security. And that would get rid of the troublemaker. Exactly. She wouldn't pass up a chance pass, pass up a chance like that. Hey, hold on a sec. A culprit besides Simon. What do you mean? Simon was the one I was supposed to prosecute! Exactly, so wouldn't it be better if the best also listened to that, to what she has to say? Amazing, Mr. Shields! You managed to drag Mr. DeBest into this too! Warden Roland, is this acceptable? Oh, you! It's fine! It's fine! You understand a woman's heart! Thank you, mademoiselle. Actually, I've thought this over. I'd like to tell you my thoughts. You let me speak, won't you, Justine, darling? Of course, you may speak. Mr. Shields, awesome! Oh, that was a close shave. Thank you, Mr. Shields. No, no, I'm still leaving the rest to you. Remember what I said. A defense attorney never gives up. The fate of your client rests on our shoulders. The fate of our client rests on our shoulders, after all. It'd be uncool if Uncle Ray didn't put that into practice. God, I'm so cold. Now then, Miles, it's your turn to show you'll never give up. Right. Well then, will you listen to my story? I believe that the culprit in this case could only have been Dogen. I have no idea what transpired between Dogen and the victim. It simply could have been that Dogen was displaced with him. In any case, he was the one who stabbed the victim to death. He probably had a dog disposed of the body. This is the truth of the case. And the victim, Mr. Knightley, was it? I think it is a truly terrible thing. Taking a man's life, you mean. That's how you'd go about saying it, isn't it? If only I had been more vigilant, his death would have not have happened. That's why I want to clear up his regrets. Roland, how considerate. I'm sure Mr. Knightley in heaven is overflowing with gratitude. This gratitude really what Knightley feels. Oh, 
Okay, uh, press on the first st statement. As, uh, in any case, in any case, there we go. Press. I'd like to hear your thoughts about the circumstances surrounding the murder. Well, I suppose it was a simple job. During his booking, I learned that the victim had some kind of injury to his neck. He couldn't turn his neck to the right. I remember him saying something like that. Booking. That's the process one undergoes before being locked up in the detention center. Sounds like you don't really know a lot about Nightly. I only know a little. In any case, he would have been an easy target for Dogen. Perhaps he used a chisel hidden in the chessboard. The victim wouldn't even, ha even have had a chance to, ex to scream. I see. Your opinion will be a very valuable reference. Can you add those last statements to your testimony? Oh, you're making me blush. You're so cute. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll continue. Perhaps he used the chisel hidden in the chessboard. I'm sure it would have been a simple job. Okay, cool. It's in this chessboard. Warden Roland, you certainly are sharp-witted. Hey, enough of the titles. Call me Patty. P-A-T-T-Y. However, there's something you were a little too knowledgeable about. Uh-huh, huh? Embarrassed? You're such an inexperienced child, Edgeworth, dear. Hide <laughs> on, Mr. Edgeworth. Said you didn't really know much about Nightly. That's the case. How did you know about the chisel inside the chessboard? Oh, uh, oh, of course. The entrance check. Enough with the poor excuses. The entrance check. The chessboard wasn't something Nightly brought in with him. It was brought to him later by Mr. Keith. Keith, he didn't even have it. He didn't even have it when he arrived here. Uh, th that that's m my mistake. I meant the parcel check. Even if we assume that there are, even if we assume that there are still many suspicious points, why wasn't such a chisel immediately confiscated? <laughs> Judge Courtney, did you tell anyone about the trick to the chessboard? I did not. If no information about our investigation was leaked, then how did you find out? You could not have examined this during the entrance check or parcel check. Certainly, someone in the warden position should, would never have let, a, have let a chisel slip by. Exactly. So answer this, Warden Roland. When and how did you learn about the chessboard's secret? Hmm. In that case, I shall answer for you. It's because... I give up, Edgeworth, dear. It is as you say. I interrogated Nightly. That's how I learned about the chessboard. But please believe me, I didn't kill anyone. Enough. It would appear that we have uncovered some vital information. I'll ask you to testify once more if that's alright with you, Prosecutor Edgeworth. No objections here. Thank you, Edgeworth, dear. I'll do my best. Well then, Warden Roland, I trust there will be no lies from here on out. Her pool of lies is slowly running dry. Soon I will bring out her true nature. I wouldn't go so far as to call it an inter interrogation. I always make sure to talk to all the new arrivals. Mr. Knightley. Yes, we had a little chat. After our talk, he went right back to his cell, I assure you. She's piling lies on top of lies, not realizing that it only tightens the noose around her neck. You speak with the new prisoners, you say? That's right! I'm glad you understand! Your testimony is not solid evidence. It requires more than just understanding. Well then, Prosecutor Edgeworth, you may begin your cross-examination. Fourth statement again, after our talk. If he really returned to his cell, there is no way he would be a corpse now. I know you're 
suggesting that I killed him during the interrogation, but I couldn't possibly have had a motive to kill Knightley, could I? Dorgan was the only one I hated, and he had no connection with the victim. She only hated Dorgan. Please add that statement to your testimony. Dorgan was the one I hated, and he had no connection to with the victim. Where's the fucking memo? Judge Courtney, I'd like you to have a look at this. It looks like a record of a chess game. Is there something wrong with it? This was a, this was discovered in the victim's cell. It was Knightley's memo. More than Roland, you also discovered this note in the very same place. And not just in Knightley's cell, but in Dorgan's too, correct? What are you- Don't say that you don't know about the chessboard in the special cell. After all, you would have kept an eye on Dorgan's actions down to the smallest detail. No, to be more precise, it wasn't Dorgan that you needed to, to keep an eye on. The warden was searching for Mr. Dorgan's henchmen. From the start, I found it strange that the warden interrogated the prisoners personally, since he used his henchmen to threaten harm to her family. Warden Roland interrogated Dorgan to expose them. So, what are you saying? As you inspected Dorgan's mail, you must have known that he played correspondence chess. <laughs> and then Knightley appeared, with a chess memo in hand. We deduced that he and Dogen ha were connected. You must have arrived at the same conclusion as well. However, you went one step too far in your reasoning. You thought Knightley was one of Dogen's henchmen, who had come to kill you. So, that's why you interrogated Knightley. Knightley boy. If the boss won't crack, go after his henchmen. In addition, you discovered something when you were interrogating him. Inside his chessboard, you found a portable chisel. The murder weapon! To Warden Roland, the chisel was a symbol of Dorgan. That was the final straw. You believed Knightley was one of Dorgan's henchmen and you killed him. It seems there will be no rebuttal. Judge Courtney, your verdict? Though it is incredibly unfortunate, there seems to be no room for doubt. I shall announce my verdict. For the murder of Horace Knightley. Twice my sacred verdict has been interrupted. Who was that? <laughs> Warden Roland. Uh, 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 oh, how strange. You guys really don't understand anything. It would seem the one who doesn't understand is you. Me? Oh, I understand one thing very well. There is a huge contradiction in your logic, Miss Regworth. Huh. Once she's cornered, she starts spouting, spouting nonsense. Pay no heed, Judge Courtney. Your verdict. <laughs> I am interested in hearing what the warden has to say. What? I thought so. I just have one thing I want to say. One? Please take a good look at the autopsy report. The autopsy report? The one I brought with me? I heard exactly what you said earlier, Justine darling. You said the wound was four inches deep. Four inches? No way. Could that tiny chisel really have made a wound four inches deep? I impossible! How could I have made such an error? Oh, forgive me, goddess of law. Well, I believe that overturns your hypothesis. What will you do now, Mr. Edgeworth? What will, what will we do? It'll be alright, pal. Mr. Edgeworth always... Whoa, hey now, he's gone all white. You're a, de you're a defense attorney, aren't you? Isn't there something you can do, pal? Do that turnabout thing. Make some earth-shattering objection. Uncle Ray's a hard worker, but... Without decisive evidence, we're just whipping a dead horse here. Does that mean it's hopeless? 
I'm a true killer is Warden Rowland. If it's not her, then nothing that has happened fits. But the chisel isn't the murder weapon. Are there any other sharp objects here? There are still many mysteries remaining in this case. However, we do not have the evidence to solve them at this present time. We have no choice but to continue this battle in the courtroom. Objection. That would just give the killer a chance to destroy evidence. Are you mocking the court? No, no, no. I, I, don't, I didn't mean anything like that. You look perplexed, Miles. What of anything yet? The chisel is not the murder weapon. In that case, what is? It's no use. We're back where we started. No objections, Prosecutor Edgeworth. By the way, any baseless statement will be punished accordingly. It's no good. I can't think of anything. I need more time. I forgot to say, I have no... No, Mr. Edgeworth. Remember what Mr. Shields said. If we give up, Simon will... Have you forgotten that sad look on his face? He was the one who suffered most from Knightley's death. If we can't save him, who will? Besides, Simon believes in us, so we can't give up. Okay. Miles, looks like you've found a good partner. It's like little Kay says, whenever you are backed into a corner, think of your clients. Keep fighting until the very end. Isn't that what the feeling you're getting? Gregory, your old man. No matter what trouble he, had, he faced, he would always turn things around and save his clients. You got his blood in you, right? In that case, you're the only one who can turn this around. Judge Courtney. The look in your eyes has suddenly changed. If you do intend to speak, you'd better be prepared to face the consequences. Your logic thus far has been misplaced numerous times. If this were to happen again, I will consider you unfit to call yourself a prosecutor. And you will hand over your badge. That's right. My reasoning about this case has indeed been misplaced numerous times. Have I made a grave miscalculation? Wait. My logic is... Misplaced. Still silent. I cannot condone this waste of time. Well then... Mr. Edgeworth! Mr. Edgeworth! I will announce my verdict. That's it. We have to turn my logic around. Your logic isn't misplaced. It's been misled. This court finds the defendant, Simon Keyes... Isn't it a little early to hand down a verdict? I actually think it's rather late. But don't you agree, Justine, darling? Enlighten us. What? Try to remember the eyewitness ac account about his dog and his absence from the animal show. When I first heard that information, my suspicion immediately fell on Dogen. I'm amazed you take such pride in retelling your previous failings. But was that not the killer's aim? What if we assume that was her intention from the start? Of course, the chisels served the same purpose. Knightley's body was stabbed in the same spot with multiple sharp objects. This shows that he was stabbed with a chisel after the real murder weapon was removed. By soaking the chisel in Knightley's blood, the killer wanted to mislead us into thinking the chisel was the murder weapon. Why? That's because. Why did the killer want us to think the chisel was the murder weapon? To get Dogen expelled. Morden Roland, you made use of this chisel's image. Chisel's image? What are you trying to say? Mr. DeBest. When you see this chisel, what does it suggest to you? Eh? Something like, Dorgan is the killer, right? Now do you understand? That was the warden's aim. 
Ah, she wanted us to suspect the person with the chisels. Indeed, that was her plan from the very beginning. To make Sirhan Dogen out to be the killer. I understand your logic. It is true the warden did not think kindly of Dogen. But you understand, don't you? This alone does not prove she is the killer. As I thought, it's not enough. The remaining chance is for me to find the real murder weapon. If you have no more evidence, I believe this conversation is over. I could prove it if I found the real murder weapon. Doesn't matter what you say, we did a clean sweep of this place. It is as Sebastian says, in the end we could not find any weapons. In other words, such proof is impossible. No, the murder weapon must still be somewhere in this prison. As long as this exists. Security gate. Hmm. You remember its name after all. Are you mocking me? It's because of those things. You can't take metal objects in or out of this place. Huh. Right, as long as those security gates exist, the murder weapon should still be here. That also means no weapon could have been brought into the prison. In the end, we're back to that same mystery after all. Judge Courtney. Prosecutor Edgeworth, surely you realize. If the real murder weapon was still in the prison, one must also consider how it got there in the first place. And the chisel was concealed with the chessboard. But the chisel is not the real murder weapon. Which means that the real murder weapon must have been smuggled in somehow. The way it was smuggled in, can you prove that? Mm -hmm. How Warden Roland brought the weapon into the prison? You had evidence transferred from the precinct. Yes, we borrowed all the evidence concerning Dogen. I've been interrogating him personally in my office, but... That's it. She could have used that. This shows another way a weapon could be brought into the prison. Take that. Yesterday, Dogen said this. Yes, my bells. There are only two in the world. Only two? They're custom made, attached to my knife and Anubis's color. Even though I can only rely on my ears. I can easily identify them. Alas, one has been confiscated and is not in my possession. It's possible the murder weapon was brought in. As confiscated evidence. What? Dogen's knife was confiscated and stored on the premises. Furthermore, the bell was attached to the knife. B, the bell on that chisel. Exactly. Killer took it from the knife and reattached it to the chisel. But the, the only fingerprints on this chisel are knightly's. The killer probably wore gloves when they made the switch. She made the chisel out to be the murder weapon by attaching, attaching Dogen's bell. And in doing so, made Dogen appear to be the culprit. Furthermore, the handling of the set of evidence that this bell originally belonged to was only possible for someone with the proper authority. Who, sir? Who had that authority? Why don't we ask the warden what she thinks? I, you can find bells anywhere. Anyone could have attached it, right? Hmm. I see. So you don't know. These bells are Dogen's trademark. There are only two in the world. What? What? And so, attaching the bell would naturally make you the killer. Do you have evidence that I have the knife? You don't, do you? Of course, I understand. In that case, Mr. DeBest, I'd like to request an investigation immediately. Eh? <laughs> ah, but if you find it, it'll be problematic for me. It doesn't matter now. It is necessary that we reveal the truth. You are a prosecutor, are you not? Well, even if you say that... Curse this useless prosecutor! If only I still had investigative rights. 
Besides, we can't investigate without the warden's permission, right? There's no way she would approve. We have no choice but to investigate ourselves. If you don't have evidence, there's no use in continuing this conversation. The goddess of law does not smile upon those with no evidence. This will have to be continued in the courtroom. Now good. If we give the warden more time here, she'll definitely destroy the evidence. Seems like I have no choice but to raise an objection and stall for time. But I don't have anything definite. Is that really acceptable? Is it really like me to do something like reckless? No. Not good. Now is not the time for hesitation. Right now, I'm not a prosecutor, but an attorney's assistant. I need to protect my client. I am the only one who can save him now. In that case... Even if it's a one in a million chance, I have to take it. It's a sink or swim. Should I raise an objection? Raise an objection. It almost feels like I've turned into a certain bluffing defense attorney. You sneaky bitch. You sneaky bitch. I... I want to search up why they don't mention his name. It's fascinating. It's, it's also like really strange. Anyways, whatever. But right now, I can't come to a standstill here. Objection! Hold it! Prosecutor Edgeworth, what now? I just realized something. What would that be, pray tell? Naturally. The whereabouts of the real murder weapon. Dorgan's knife. Mr. Edgeworth! Is that really true? Yes, though it is a lie. I find that hard to believe. This isn't a bluff, is it? Hm. You underestimate me. The word bluff does not exist in my dictionary. Mm -hmm. This is bad for my heart! <laughs> oh my god. Th th there's no way you could know, because such a thing doesn't even exist! Well then, could you enlighten us? Where is the real murder weapon? Think. Think. Somewhere the police didn't look. Blind spot in this animal-filled prison. A hiding place the warden would have complete confidence in. Hmm. Hiding place. Come to think of it. It was inevitable. Anubis, show them your mouth. Huh? Same method. No. It couldn't be. Could it? But... There aren't that many ways to hide things from an investigator's eyes. Prosecutor Edgeworth, how long do you intend to keep us waiting? It's possible. I'm taking a big gamble here. The place where the real murder weapon is hidden is here. Here, in the courtyard? Indeed. That's not enough information. Please show us in more detail. Where is the real murder weapon hidden? Sit. Back then. Huh? What's the matter, detective? It looks like the metal detector is reacting to this alligator. Really? Why? Of course. That's why the metal detector reacted. Judge Courtney, I'd like you to take a look at this. The chisel. Isn't that just a fake murder weapon? I forget his voice all the time, I'm sorry. Dogen hid this chisel inside his dog's mouth, and the real murder weapon was hidden in very much the same way. The real murder weapon is in the pond, inside the alligator. What? Uh! We can confirm that the metal, that the metal detector reacted, reacted to the alligator. Judge Courtney, 
please have the insides of the alligator examined. I give my consent. We'll have to call a veterinarian. I can make that little girl open her mouth. Can I help? Yes, go ahead. Warden Roland, discovering this real, the real murder weapon will settle this matter once and for all. Why don't you do the honorable thing and confess now? I, I, uh, what would I have to confess? In that case, you can just wait for your fate to be sealed. <laughs> oh, we found it, sir. Just where you said it would be. It's over. Patricia Rowland, the real murder weapon is none other than Dogen's knife. And the one who murdered Horace Knightley can only be you. Dogen was the evil one. I didn't do anything wrong. It was completely reasonable. That guy was one of Dogen's henchmen. Him. If only he had never come to my home. I, I could at least still be happy. My special paradise. He ruined it. All of it. Him. That no good assassin. Him. Him. Mr. The Best of the Best. Mr. The Best of the Best. <laughs> we have the results. The Best of the Best. Looks like even the forensic officers have it tough. We found traces of Knightley's blood on Dogen's knife. It was just like you said. You're the best, Mr. The Best. Alright, good job. But don't stop there. Keep the praise coming. Yes, sir. You're so incredible. It brings tears to my eyes. From sorrow. Well done, Sebastian. Next comes the follow-up investigation. Huh? What are you talking about, Justine? Hasn't the case been solved already? We have not yet confirmed if Knightley truly was one, one of Dogen's henchmen. There is also a chance that Warden Roland jumped to conclusions. Oh. Oh. That is the remaining uncertainty in this case. Huh. Huh. Anyways, let's keep investigating. Hey, you there. Come with me. Since I'm the best, the truth will appear before me first. When that moment arrives, make sure you don't miss it. Yes, sir. I'm looking forward to witnessing your first raid ability. Let's go! We live in troubling times, wouldn't you agree? The would-be assassin of the president was found murdered in the prison. Knightley had not planned to assassinate the president. The truth is not as vital as you seem to believe it to be. Not to the world. And not to the law. I can't be right. Believe what you will. However, as long as Prosecutor Edgeworth remains a prosecutor, it is an inescapable reality. A prosecutor is not someone who demands a guilty verdict. That is what I believe. Those are merely your values. The law is not the plaything of any one person. If you will not submit to that, you will do well to prepare for the consequences. What's that supposed to mean, pal? Don't tell me you're gonna... Now then, this is where I must take my leave, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Judge Courtney is right. The law should not serve any one person's desires. However, if the truth is bent as a result of that, can that really be called justice? Ah, Simon! B boss! What happened? They said you could come out already? Well... Honestly, I don't know for sure. All of a sudden, they were like, You're free to go. 
I mean, you should thank Mr. Edgeworth. Well, that's because he found out who the real murderer was. Really? He did? Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, oh, no way, no way, no way. Even if you glare at me like that, it's useless. I'm innocent after all. You can't make me guilty. Simon, Simon, you should thank him, you know? Y you, you're right. Thank you very much. I want to thank you too. Good grief. Um, Mr. Defense Attorney, can I ask you just one more question? Yes, you may, but I'm not a defense attorney. I thought that Knightley and I were friends. No, I mean best friends. I always thought we were. You don't think so anymore. Well, I'm just wondering. There were some things I had no idea about. Like how he could hate someone enough to kill them. That's why maybe he never trusted me either. Simon, that's not true. You're lying. Because if I had known, I would have stopped him. I would have told him he had no need to be angry with anyone. Sir Keys, I don't think he disliked you either. Let's show him proof that Knightley trusted him. Uh... Just bird? I just just bird again. That's what I gave to... Knightley hid a chisel inside it. Most likely to aid in his escape. E e escape? He used me? He trusted in you. He knew you'd bring it to him without looking into it and without question. And in doing just that, you were caught up in everything. <laughs> oh, Nightly, you idiot! Looks like he gets it. Simon is not as dumb as he looks after all. I'm sure he'll be back to normal by tomorrow. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Oh, I'll be strong. I'll become a splendid wild animal tamer for Knightley's sake. Excellent. That's the spirit. Oh, I, I almost forgot. Um, if you'd like, please come to our next show. I'll also be performing in it. It's Max. The Berry Pig Circus is always fabulous and fun for all ages. Wow, that sounds like fun. Let's go, Miss Redworth. Hmm, well, I'll think about it. Well, we need to get back to practicing right away. He'll be with Regen today. What? The tiger? No way, no way, no way. He'll be fine. He's a good boy. No way. There's no way it'll be fine. Please cut me a break, boss! And there they go. Oh, man. Bravo! Bravo! You really put on a good show today, Miles. It's all thanks to you, Mr. Shields. Without your help, she might have gotten away. Not to mention allowing us to continue the investigation. Oh man, cut it out already. You're gonna make me blush. I never know when you are being serious. Uncle Ray is always serious. So how was it, Miles? How did it feel to be a defense attorney? To save people? A defense attorney? And that really took me back. It was just like being next to your old man again. <laughs> it's been a while since I felt this good. It was, well, it's somewhat difficult to say it was a good thing. Come on, Miles. Are you sure you don't want to be a defense attorney? What? You know, pick up where your father left off. Don't you want to save people like he did? What are you talking about, pal? Miss Redwards is a prosecutor. But is it really the un that unusual for a prosecutor to become a defense attorney these days? Unusual isn't a problem here. Hey, don't be so upset. It's normal, you know. Normal. It's not. Normal, pal. <laughs> It all make for a powerful defense team. Mr. Shields, I am a prosecutor. And Uncle Ray is a defense attorney. That's why. I am being serious about this. 
Well, that's just my opinion. Feel free to drop by anytime if you have a change of heart. I'll be waiting for you. Hmm, what time is it? Oh, 4 a.m. Lovely. Follow in my father's footsteps. Me. Become a defense attorney. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my dad. Should I become a defense attorney? Like my father. The end. Yes! Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Damn. Uh. Oh. Save, I guess. Huh. Oh my god. This is the next one, the inherited turnabout. It is the one I think it is. That one was kind of cool, not gonna lie. Also, just like, to like, may put a disclaimer at the end of the stream, just like, I've played this game, like, once before. I've played, like, all of the games before. Except for, like, the, uh, uh, Professor Layton and Ace Attorney crossover game. That's the only game. And also the Daigyak and Saibon games. But those haven't been released outside of Japan. Neither has this game. That, But <laughs> that's beside the point. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I, I have played this game before. And I actually finished playing it recently. So it's not something that's like very new to me, and I remember uh, some of the things still. Like, I knew the thing about the alligator, so <laughs> when Fleur earlier said that, like, hold on, let me just do this. When Fleur earlier said um, that Ali, is that an alligator? And I'm just like, what would it be an alligator? <laughs> you know? So I'm like trying my best, but also I know what happens further down the line. So, uh, and, uh, yeah, I can say as much as all of these cases are connected. And that's all I'm gonna say, though. Ugh. I'm not gonna say how, I'm not gonna say anything about that, just gonna say that they were connected. But so were the, the last, the cases in the last game, too, so... With that, I am going to go the fuck to bed and uh, maybe I'll start this one tomorrow. It's going to be a long one. It's nine parts. Hold on, let me actually just check like how long they are. But I'm not going to sit this long. This was just a miscalculation on my part. I didn't think that it would be so long, honestly. Let's see here. Uh, uh, the first part isn't that long. First part usually isn't. It's like an hour long or something. But it's still kind of long. Do I remember that this one went on forever? Obviously because it's nine parts. But I will I will start it and get as far as I get. I will like uh, see how far I get. And uh, depending on how far I, I am, like six hours into it. If I'm like in the middle of a, a chapter, I'm gonna finish that and uh, just pick it up again on Saturday. Yeah. So I guess either I'll come back tomorrow or I'll be back on Saturday. I don't know yet. But what I know, what I do know is that I'm gonna go the fuck to bed. So with that, I thank you for watching and I'll see you 